What's up? What's up, fellas? Space Hitch here. Welcome back to more Honkai Shoria. Alrighty. Oh, yeah, Taiga, thanks for letting me know. I, I legit didn't know that they released uh, a new trailer on the Honkai Shoria channel. I think, they, yeah, they released it because Adventure Reads banner is coming up. Yeah, literally a week from now. Literally one week until we get our, uh, our imaginary boy. <laughs> Baby girl, as most people are calling him. Uh, but yeah, we, I, I, yeah, I will watch that in a second here, and also, you know, talk, talk to Silver Wolf and Lynx, who are just staring at the wall for some reason. And then afterwards, we're gonna resume what we were doing before, which was, yeah, doing every single one of these companionship missions. So I think we're at the, the last two, um, companionship missions for Bellabog, I believe. Uh, yeah, last two, which will be Clara's and Luca and Sila's. And then afterwards, we can move on to the Sienjo and get started on those companionship quests as well. It seems like on average, we complete like a an average of like five to four like companionship missions. So here's hoping we can make some good progress in the yeah in this stream today. Also, I think uh yeah, Link just messaged me. Space, are you coming up to the next meetup? Uh, what could it be Tails? Could it be the legendary Tail of the Winterlands fan meetup? Yep, that's the one. Seems like you'll be coming, right? Uh, come and meet us at Payla's booth. Payla? Booth, but I'm not a fan. <laughs> wait, Payla's a booth? Oh, wait, she's a writer. Never mind. Hey, Alia, welcome to stream. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, sorry, I just muted for a second there. I just have to check if uh, everything's working fine. Uh, but Payla's... <laughs> Is Payla going too? Of course, she's the best fanfic writer in the community. <laughs> Just that nobody's aware of her real identity. Anyways, I prepare. Uh, I need to help you get prepared. I'm gonna put the, together the good stuff I bought in previous meetups and lend them to you. Oh, okay. Uh, be prepared to experience the power of the TLCs. <laughs> I like Lynx. <laughs> she's funny sometimes. Oh, so yeah, what are you two shorty quantums doing here? <laughs> eh? Sir Wolf? Sir Wolf didn't greet you as usual. Instead, he, uh, she raised her finger and clicked on something in the air. What are you doing? Shh, wait a minute. I'm busy. After all, you see a smile on a happy face. Got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't see the screen. Let me explain. I was just pulling for a gotcha capsule. You oh, know, my God. The kind you can't get in games. <laughs> As for the result, I got a five-star prize in one go. The top prize. Damn. Ugh, what a show-off. So that's why you came all the way here? All for a lucky gotcha pull spot? You <laughs> they fucking know. In games, skill is one thing. Luck is another. If you want to win all the time, you need to have both. <laughs> the former can be acquired through practice, but the latter depends on talent. The flow of luck in the parlor car is very favorable today. The best strategy is to pull for the desired target after confirming and canceling three times in a row. What? <laughs> confirming and then canceling three times in a row. 
Is that so? It's not Zubius. Really? I'm gonna give it a try right now. Let's be clear about one thing first. This is just my intuition. It may not work for you. And I am not responsible for any suboptimal results. Anyway, have a happy day. <laughs> Here's a little gift for you. I hope everything works out as well for you as it has for me. You know what? Fellas? <laughs> should we give that a try? <laughs> should, should we give that ritual a try? Hang on, I want to check my pity real quick. I want to see. Uh, I don't think my pity is really high. Yeah, it's only at like 26. <laughs> should we give the ritual a try? <laughs> okay, uh... But you cannot cancel if like you already have 10 bushes to begin with, right? Ah, shit. <laughs> Wait, can you? Wait, what did you say again? Stand hey, can you say that again? At a point equidistant from the seats on oh my gosh, she actually <laughs> repeats it to me. <laughs> window opposite the aisle. Align your eyes with the void cell okay. hologram near the ceiling and oh. open the interface. Oh. Then pull for the prize after confirming and canceling three times in a row. This is the best strategy for obtaining the desired prize. Okay. Stand at the edge of the board at a point... Okay, so where you are, facing the viewing window opposite the aisle, oh, no, facing the viewing window, align your eyes with the void song whales, near the hologram, near the ceiling, and then open the interface. Pull <laughs> What? Okay, this is, I have to write all this down. What the fuck? You can't cancel if you already have the tickets? Ah, damn, that's a bummer. Shit, so it may not work out for me then. Then pull for the price of the confirming and canceling uh, three times in a row. But this is the best strategy for obtaining the desired prize. <laughs> okay. I'm tempted to give this a try, honestly. I'm tempted to do this. Okay. Stand the edge of the board. The board. Okay, I guess right here. Uh, from the seats on either side. Facing the viewing window opposite the aisle. Uh, okay. I Let's be clear about oh. one thing first. This is just my intuition. It may not work for you. Hey. And I am not responsible for any suboptimal results. You know what? Silver Wolf, I trust you. I absolutely trust you. 100%. Alright, so... Stand at the board. Face the opposite window. Stare at the way on top. Go on the banner, and then like... Sure, we'll hit like, confirm and cancel three times. One, two, three, and then pull. I hope I did all that right. Come on, let's go. Lucha or Acheron's E1. Nope. <laughs> no, nope, it's a four star. Oh, we got a <laughs> we got hurt to slide going. Well, god damn it. Sorovia scammed me. <laughs> imagine though, e e fucking imagine. Near the chessboard? I am near the chessboard. It's right here. But yeah, I'm right next to the chessboard. And it still didn't work. Well, <laughs> don't listen to Silver Wolf, good folks. Do not listen to her. <laughs> hey, what's up, Lynx? The Express is a bit too warm. Oh, it makes my brain a little slow. Feels like I'm about to. <laughs> Uh, go wrestle on the wild sofa. Go wrestle for a while in March's room. Uh, oh, I don't want to cause her trouble. Hey, trust me, she won't have any problems. Uh, trust me, bro. <laughs> it hasn't been. Hasn't been. <laughs> <laughs> Holy uh, shit. Man, bell bogging is a thing for sleeping standing up, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Link says Link seems to have fallen asleep with her eyes wide open somehow. I was, I was hoping I would get Jade for that. <laughs> oh well. In what world would you think that work? I mean, Sir Wolf told me. You, you never know. You never know. It could have been the case. It could have been. Oh well. <laughs> well, there goes all my free wishes from the anniversary. <laughs> uh, and that's all I have left. 
It's still enough to try and get a Venturine, I'd say. <laughs> Only just barely enough, though. Okay, but, uh... Yeah, now that we're done with this... <laughs> now that we're done just fooling around the car... Uh, yes, I am aware that Aventurine's, uh, or there's a, yeah, there's a new Aventurine trailer on the Honkai Star Rail's YouTube channel, so let me just go ahead and, uh, hang on, turn on the volume for Star Rail here, and bring up good old YouTube, right here, there it is, I see it, uh, alright, okay, let me just bring it up here, window capture, there we go. Alright, so this is the brand new trailer that was released by Hoya just literally like an hour ago, I believe. Yeah, one hour ago, and it's like focused on Aventurine, I believe. Yeah, Moment Among the Stars, Inherently Unjust Destiny. Okay, sorry. Also, there's my live stream for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why he's recommending me my own live stream, but alright. But yeah, one minute trailer, and uh, I'm assuming this is meant to be a teaser before Akron. Akron, Aventurine comes out within like a week now. So we're just going to be watching it real quick and just seeing what it's all about. Maybe we'll get a glimpse of uh, Aventurine's past or something. Who knows, but uh, let's go ahead and have a look-see. One minute and 17 seconds. Okay, so not that long. Uh, let me just adjust the subtitle size just to make sure it's not too big. Yeah, 50%. All right. All right. Uh, that's if audio's on, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, so, all right. Watching uh, Aventurine's new trailer... In three, two, one, let us begin. Oh, triple faced soul, please oh, shit. sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron. Oh, shit. So that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. It's this moment from this fucking story. Question Are you an Avgen from Sigonia? <laughs> They're legit spoiling the story right now. <laughs> Are you your clan's sole survivor? Oh shit. <laughs> Perhaps. As Jesus. A servant, you should not resist your master. Yet, you went and killed that man anyway. Oh yeah, Perhaps Jade. Man, when is she gonna be playable? Yourself. Good lord, she used to be a foot sign. You won't send me to the gallows. Do you hate and wish to destroy this world with your own hands? Jesus. <laughs> Let's assume, just assume now, no, boy. <laughs> that every time I roll the dice, there's a possibility of achieving this particular outcome. Then I would be quite happy Good to make Lord. that wager. Your eyes are glowing a bit more than you two adventuring. Damn. <laughs> well, yeah, that's directly like the scene from the story, but given much more context, holy fuck. Good Lord. Yeah, I really, really do feel bad for Venturine. Yeah, 2.1 has made me love him tons, even though he's seemingly more of, see, He seems more of like a condescending douchebag. I still love him nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, Kakavish, our beloved. I'm gonna leave a like on that trailer. Man, <laughs> that, that was a pretty, pretty good short trailer. Okay, but yeah, that is the Venturine trailer I've done and watched. And now let's get back into Star Rail stuff. But yeah, that's really good, actually. But <laughs> I do, I do wonder at the fact like why he didn't answer like the last question directly. But alrighty, yeah, I know for a fact. That, yeah, um, Topazes and Clara's like English VAs are gonna go crazy over that trailer. <laughs> I know for a fact they're gonna be sipping hard for adventuring during that. I've, I've probably watched that clip like a million times. Have you guys seen it actually? Like, yeah, Topaz's English VA and also Klaus' English VA just simping over, like, a uh, Aventurine's, like, <laughs> his shirtless artwork that Hoya released on Twitter. It's really, really fucking funny. We all love our peacock boy gambler. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed we do. Honestly, I should put Ching Chui and uh, Aventurine in a team together and just call it the Gamba team. <laughs> that could be fun. But alrighty, now that we're done watching uh, the trailer and also just looking around here for a bit, it's about good time we began uh, doing the rest of the yeah Eurelo Six um, companionship missions and also probably getting started on uh, on yeah the Cienjo companionship missions. How many do we have left to go? Okay, so there's this one, there's Luca and Clara, which is not here yet. 
That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Jeez, we still have nine more to go. <laughs> yeah, we may need like more than uh more than one stream here to complete all of these, but eh, we'll see how much progress we make in today's stream. Sam's VOD is on it. He did go banana when the official art drops. Oh, yeah, even Adventure's own VA even simps for himself. It's it's really, really funny. I mean, to be fair, that artwork is uh, real spicy. I'm not gonna lie. No homo, but the man's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, Camden's reaction is so wholesome. Well, Emily's just down bad, yeah. <laughs> it's just a stark contrast between the two VAs. It's just insane. <laughs> Okay, but speaking of Clara, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be playing her companionship quest as of right now because I believe that's the next one on the timeline, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, so last stream we completed um, all of Hook's uh, quests and all of Natasha's quest, and we also managed to do all of uh, Serval and Jabard's and Lynx's quest as well. So now the only thing stuff is uh, Clara, I believe. Yeah, part one. I believe that's a part two. And then... Uh, Luke and Sila's quest, and then we can move on to the Cienjo quests. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what these quests have to have to show. I have it on my paper, my wallpaper on my phone. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people made that their wallpaper after Hoya posted it on Twitter. <laughs> but alrighty, folks. Let us go ahead and uh, meet up with Clara. And start her quest. I'm hoping we see Safarag again. <laughs> Honestly, I do really want Clara, like, on my team. Like, she would be, like, such a great fit for my follow-up team. You know, my ideal team is, like, Dr. Ratio, Topaz, Aventurine, and Clara. I don't know why, but, but yeah, I want all four of them on a team together. Just to be, like, a pure follow-up team. I, f I feel like that'd be, like, extremely fun. I'm with you. Yeah, for Lucas is like one of the best ones, and also Lorchus is like pretty funny. So yeah, we'll try and get through all that in today's stream. Okay, enough of my ramblings. Let's go ahead and begin Clara's uh, quest now. I went the wrong way. My bad. <laughs> I went the absolute wrong way. I'm stupid. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Hold on a minute here. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Alrighty. Can't even order the magazine, knowing when the official art became the cover on a Japanese magazine. Wait, did <laughs> that art became a cover of a Japanese magazine? Another good follow-up team is uh, Aventurine, Clara, March, and Topaz. I mean, is it really? I mean, isn't it kind of redundant to put March and Aventurine on the same team? Because uh, both Aventurine and March are shielders. Ain't it, yeah, ain't it kind of redundant to put them, like, both on the same team? Hmm. But either way, like, yeah, I just want more follow-up teams. They're, they're just, like, the funnest one, is my opinion. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Hey, uh, Big Daddy's Farog. The thief has stolen parts again? How am I going to track down this crook? Oh, wait, I think I started this quest on accident. Wait, no, I didn't. Uh, Clara, what's, what's wrong? Actually, yeah, let's oh. see. It's you. No, no, I didn't start an accident. Okay, this this is the start of it. There have been a few unusual thefts in the dwelling over the past few days. The vagrants say that the parts they worked so hard to obtain have completely vanished. They're worried that there's a thief in the dwelling. Oh, say, so, hey, uh, guys, can you check for me if like the audio is good? Is um, do you hear Clara well enough? Cause yeah, <laughs> just making sure before we uh, officially start here. Despite our investigations. No one has been able to track down the thief. What's even stranger is that the thief appears to be only interested in stealing parts and doesn't care about other valuable items. The vagrants had no choice but to ask Mr. Svarov to look into it, but he still hasn't found anything. Hmm. I investigated the matter myself, but I came up empty-handed. Jeez, I'm baffled. What a strange thief. Yeah, I don't know why he is. <laughs> Clara sounds really, really tired here. And also, how the hell does Svarag not know, like, the answers? I thought he, he's supposed to be, like, super advanced AI or something. 
Uh, don't worry, well, we can all go over the clues together. Why don't we go back to the crime scene and start from the start from there? Mmm, the smell of crime. How exciting. Uh, that look on your face is a bit scary. <laughs> but if you're willing to help look into this case, perhaps we can uncover some clues that I missed. Oh, I heard the vagrants on patrol last night ran across the thief again, but I haven't had time to look into it. Should we go ask them? Uh, witness uh, first-hand accounts are crucial. Genius, detective girl, move out! That sounds kind of weird. <laughs> but actually, I think it's cool too. <laughs> now, let's get started. Nope, oh, I, I was waiting for her to say the big sister part, but alright. <laughs> hey, barely affectionate part one. Hey, how you doing, Svarag? Stream four. Okay, you just gotta stand there and do nothing. All right, I I get you. I I get you. Much shield increases taunt with her woo ability, and her shield class cleanse, and it triggers a follow up. So it helps for every follow up, and more blind bet stacks comes. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yeah, I'm. I want to see tempted to build March because. People say that she's like the best out of the starting four stars that you get. Well, not not the best per se, but out of uh, Don Hung, um, Destruction, Trailblazer, and March, she's probably the best. At least that's what I've from what I've heard from other people. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Question the witnesses of the theft uh, involving mechanical parts. Hey, you. How are you? I heard you saw the thief who stole the parts last night. Can you tell us what happened? Ah, who, who's there? <laughs> Just a gray-haired gremlin and a white-haired, footless, shoeless child. Oh, Clara, it's you. I thought it was... You scared the living daylights out of me. Honestly, I, I know this argument has been back and forth ever, like, for since, since forever, but how the fuck does Clara not get frostbite <laughs> without wearing any shoes? Just how? I, I did see the thief last night, but who is this person next to you? I'm just a passionate trailblazer. The wildfire has inside me to solve this case. I'm the brilliant psychic of this genius detective. Uh, this nickname is a bit embarrassing. <laughs> Detective, I see. You're here to help catch the thief, right? No, I'm here to kill them. It's great that there are more people here to solve this case. Hold on, I'll explain what happened last night. Just let me gather my thoughts first. <sighs> okay, so last night I was on patrol when I bumped into the thief stealing the parts. Then, then I, I just <laughs> ran away. <laughs> Why do you sound so terrified? Relax, explain slowly. Don't panic, we're only just getting started. <laughs> I, you, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Last night was just so terrifying. I, I'll continue. Talk to me, talk to me. It just turns into a fucking Batman interrogation scene. <laughs> I was cold and hungry while on patrol last night, so I decided to return to the dwelling and heat up some leftover canned food for a snack. But when I entered the tent, the thief's silhouette scurried across my vision. Oh. What? So you didn't see the thief, you, you saw a silhouette. Oh great, and now we don't know what he looks like. I couldn't see the thief's face because the tent was so dark, but... I could tell he wasn't a nice guy. I could tell he was a bad, bad man. <laughs> because when he turned to flee, oh, he shit. swung a knife right across my face. In that moment, I really thought I was going to die. <laughs> I could feel the blades chill on my cheeks and smell its rusty scent. The weapon that fella had was <laughs> definitely a metal one. That's the only thing I'm certain of. Also, I saw the outline of him in the dark. The fella's head was absolutely square. What? Yes, you heard me. Square. <laughs> Can you believe that? Someone with a square head? Uh -huh. It was truly terrifying. 
Okay, uh, that could be a clue. A square, oh my gosh, please, I can't, I can't carry on, I'm too terrified. <laughs> okay, judging by that, it's certainly one of the robots, right? <laughs> it's gotta be. What does Clara in the English dub sound like a 17-year-old girl? Honestly, yeah, Clara does sound a bit older than she actually is. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of fitting though, right? Because she's a bit more mature than the other kids around camp. I gotta find Star in the standard and I got Clara's light cone? Oh, nice. I actually heard that light cone's actually somewhat decent on some destruction characters. I think I actually have the light cone myself, actually. <laughs> please, please, I can't carry on. I'm too terrified. Uh, I, I'm also <laughs> terrified, but I still have to jot down the important clues. Sir, please take a deep breath. So... The thief was armed with a metal weapon and had a, um, square head, correct? Yes! That's correct! Hmm. I'm struggling to make sense of these clues. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, not really. Is there anything you notice? Why are you being so evasive? Are you an accomplice? We cracked the case. The copper has a square head. Why being so evasive? Huh? Are you a are you an accomplice? Tell me. How can you just <laughs> me like that? I was terrified. How could I be an accomplice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. She was just joking. Please don't take her seriously. Nah, my instincts never fail me. This guy's a fucking criminal. I tell you, let's beat the shit out of him. Uh, yes, I remember something. While the oh. culprit was hurrying to escape, he knocked something over. He may have left some clues or something. This is a crucial clue. Let's go investigate the crime scene together. I think he ran that way. No one has touched the crime scene, so any traces he left behind should still be there. Please, catch the thief for us. <laughs> okay, no promises, dude. <laughs> and meanwhile, while you're at it, stop stressing. You're gonna lose. Uh, you're gonna get white hair real quick with that. But yeah, I do have a uh, Clara's light cone. I have no clue who to give it to though, because like it, it it relies on enemies being hit. I can only imagine that being good on like Clara herself or uh, Blade, who I don't have. <laughs> yeah, and that's like my first five star light cone I got from the Gacha. I have no idea what to do with it, honestly. Okay, uh, I investigate the square wall over here. <laughs> Some of the scratches left on the mountain, which seems to be done by a metal weapon. The end of the scratches point to a distant place. Take a look at these marks. These are very suspicious. Uh, could they have been left by the culprit? They point in that direction. Let's go take a look. Okay, Detective Clara's on the case. <laughs> What the? How, how do we specifically know the scratches point downwards? <laughs> what? Just pure intuition, baby. <laughs> Just pure, pure intuition. <laughs> oh, more scratches. Few people will come to this place, but you can see some scratches on the ground, uh, sneaking their way forward. And look at these. How unusual. They don't appear to have been left by a human. Yeah, definitely a robot. <laughs> Don't you think that uh, Clara and Svark are similar to Elia and Berserk from Fate Stay Night? They even chose the same English VAs? Or Japanese VAs, my bad. I haven't watched Fate Stay Night, so I wouldn't know. <sighs> hmm. I just remember that uh, David Jing is a big fan of the Fate series. I guess, yeah, I think there are some like Fate Stay references in this game after all. So what's surprising if that was intentional? Cause because it's if anything it's with this game, it loves referencing other media. I mean it like referenced Breaking Bad like three times already, I think. The tracks Holy shit! Here. I guess we'll have to look around for other clues. I didn't realize how fucking loud the robots exploding were. Oh my god. That kinda gave me a scare for a second there. Oh, uh, okay. This is where the mechanical waste <laughs> is disposed of, though. Could it be? Uh, be careful. We we don't want to alert the culprit. 
club for blah blah blah. <laughs> I didn't expect our thief to like waste heaps. Come out and face me now, thief. Hey, you're being too loud. If the cobra is nearby, he'll just run away. Let's split up. Uh. Wait. What's that noise? Uh oh. Uh. What is that noise? Wow, well, why'd you look over here if there's no noise here? <laughs> uh, giant robot? Yep. <laughs> Square head, that checks out. Tiny robot? Is it searching for something? But I don't remember Mr. Sparrow issuing an order like this recently. It looks like it's carrying the vagrant's missing parts and those tracks and metal scratches we noticed earlier. The thief doesn't appear to be human. Remove the controlling robot to steal parts. What an ingenious criminal. It does have a square head, but it doesn't look like a criminal. Hmm. That would be quite strange. Yet, such a scenario can't be ruled out. This small robot doesn't appear to be a Bellobob creation. It looks like it's been welded together from random scrap metal materials. Huh. It appears to have a small mechanical arm. <laughs> Where's this arm? I'm not seeing it. Uh, it's noticed us. Oh shit, we gotta kill it. I human uh. injured no hurt. Please don't. Uh Clara, do you speak robot? Hand over the stolen parts now. Don't hate me, I surrender. Please have mercy. <laughs> don't be scared. Look, it doesn't seem like it wants to hurt us. <laughs> It appears to be trying to say something. I... Human... Please... Don't hurt. Is it trying to say... Please don't hurt me, humans? Human... Parts... Rivets... Need... Repair... Need... Town... Uh... Parts... Need... 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 Okay, you need parts for Rivet Town. Got it, got it. <laughs> Don't. It appears to have a malfunction, but I think I can understand it. It seems that it needs these parts, and it's begging us not to hurt it. I... I've never seen a robot with this kind of malfunction before. What happened to it? Uh, we won't hurt this robot. We must return its parts. I... My patience is limited. Charge! Prepare to fight! Kill it! Run! Escape! Open! Fire! Workshop! Chase! Don't! Uh oh. Wait. Uh, it's running away! Ah, uh, shit, that I scared away? No, we can't let it escape. It still has the vagrant's parts. What should we do? We gotta stop it. But please don't be too rough on it. I'll figure out a way to repair it later. Well, okay, I guess we're finding it after all. Oh, <laughs> he's just alone. Pain. No hurt, don't pain, suffer. <laughs> I feel kind of bad now. Hurts. Sorry. Destiny isn't. Oh uh, well, sorry, nobody. Cut in the net. <laughs> yeah, let's not go overboard here. Sorry. Hurt. Suffer. Pain. No. Pain. No. So free. Pain. Oh, I feel bad now. Oh no. Sorry, sorry, pain. Sorry. Ouch. Pain. Sorry. Why? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go so hard. Pain. Suffer. Oh shoot. I I was was I supposed to hold back there? It's not my fault my characters are like over leveled for this. No. To have stopped working. I, I don't understand what just happened. Was it saying? Yes, but why? I feel bad about this. Yeah, I feel bad too. What the hell? <laughs> I guess we should return this little fella and the parts. I think I can. I'll repair it. Alrighty. And if I can't, I'll ask Mr. Sparrow for help. <laughs> he always knows what to do. Oh, okay, we're just up here and say I want to break the barrel, but alright. 
<laughs> hey, Mr. Farag. Initiating assessment of the robot's condition. Please wait, Clara. While Mr. Svarog is assessing this little fella, let's give it a quick checkup ourselves. Hmm? This paint job and these custom parts, and the way the parts are attached, it's all quite strange. But one thing is for certain. This little fella is not under remote control. He's operating entirely of his own accord. Its design is, well, unique. I've never seen a robot with a design like this before. It really seems like something that was thrown together rather quickly. Hmm. Its creator most likely didn't consider whether the system would function properly or not. Is it a failed robot pet creation that has been abandoned? Hmm. There's a lot of Jojo references in Honkai Impact as well when Rita introduced her, 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 her style change to Jojo style. Yeah, don't mind me, I'm just reading the chat right now. Yeah, it seems like the Honkai series just loves to reference like, all, like, a lot of media. Which I do appreciate, it makes the game a bit more funny. But if it's a pet, then... Why would it gather parts itself? Uh, what's a robot pet? I think I've heard the term robot pet before. This place has somewhat of a tax definition of pets. Uh, what's a robot pet? I've heard that some vagrants in the dwelling keep the little robots they find as pets. Some vagrants also make modifications to their pets, which they call pet upgrades. Pets like that are pretty rare. But some of the folks who have them hmm. have formed a small community to share ideas. Some are interested in nurturing robots. Others force them into battle. I mean, true. I, I, I don't see... Actually, do we, do we have any dogs or cats in Star Rail? Because I don't remember seeing any. Is there? Yeah, now I think about it. Have we seen a single, like, pet in this game? Except for, like, the, you know, the artificially created ones. Like, I get, yeah, um, uh, like, the D-Ting is one of them, and also, uh, Peppy is, yeah, Peppy's a dog, but he's, like, an artificially created dog. <laughs> yeah, have we actually seen any, like, real-life animals in this game before? Hmm. If my memory serves me right, the parts this little fella stole were originally designed for that kind of pet upgrade. Battle each other? That's awful. That's a pretty interesting. That's, I learned some unusual things. <laughs> this robot pet phenomenon really gets to me. Um... I'm sorry. I just suddenly felt some strong emotions. Let's get back to work on repairing the small robot. This Jack's placement is... odd. The chip is buried deep inside. If you don't look closely enough, you won't even find it. Hmm. Assessment of the robot's condition is complete. The shell damage is estimated to be 98.2%. Uh, whoops. I might have went a bit overboard. The assessment concludes that a total recovery is impossible. Ah, it shit. recommended that the robot's external shell be removed and replaced, while keeping the outer circuitry and related transmission devices. You can always rely on Mr. Sparg to come up with a brilliant idea. So... I guess we'll have to go find a new robot shell to fix it. Okay, right? it can still be salvaged. That, that's good. Where can we go buy one? I'll go strip them from other robots. Please don't use violent methods to solve this issue. <laughs> there are other options. There must be some robot shells lying around the machine graveyard. Everyone calls it a graveyard, but there are actually lots of useful parts buried there. I'm going to return the parts to the vagrants first. Then I'll check on the little fella. Can I trust you to find a shell in the machine graveyard, big sister? Uh, I'm an expert at scavenging. I can always go grab one from another robot if needed. Please. Please don't say things like that. You'll upset me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll stop. Then, I'll entrust this task to you, big sister. Look for Toby at the front entrance. Toby? <laughs> His appearance is crude, but he's the robot most familiar with the machine graveyard. Just follow Toby. <laughs> Out of all the names in this game, Toby's not what I expect to be one of them. 
<laughs> I don't know why, why, why Toby fucking makes me laugh of all things. Oh, right, the cat cakes. I guess, yeah, I guess you could count those as pets. Although I don't think they were in, they were created for the intention of being pets, so can you really count them? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm aware Peppy, like, is a pet, but he's like an artificial dog. So, you can't really consider him like an actual, like, dog, per se. I mean, he is a pet, but, you know, <laughs> not an organic one. Oh, you're Toby. <laughs> Hello, guests of Miss Clara. Please do as you wish. It's my honor to serve you. Be careful some choices can matter, so don't fool around too much. Oh yeah, I'm aware that some of the choices in the Comanche missions do have consequences, so I'll try to make sure, like, yeah, to not fool around too much. Uh, Toby, can you show me the way? Clara describes you as primitive. Miss Clara has assigned me the task of planning your sightseeing route in the machine graveyard. I will guide you down the path. Okay, let's go, Toby. Make a wish. Would you like to engage in super speed mode? If so, please confirm by spinning counterclockwise ten times. Then clockwise right to Can I actually do that? I mean, we're almost there anyway, so who cares? <laughs> I wonder if that's actually a thing. Okay, spin counterclockwise. Uh, nah, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> uh, hello? Can you move? Okay, there you go. We have arrived at our first destination. This model is known as the Dire Wolf, and was scrapped after it sustained piercing damage during a battle with another robot pet. Jeez. Which caused the chainsaw's fuel tank to burst. Robot pet battles sound a little frightening. Yeah, they're such a like Pokemon, aren't they? But a bit more deadly. The inside of the armor is a total mess due to being melted by the heat. Unfortunately, it appears to be useless. God damn it. We are on our way to the second destination. Please take a seat, buckle up, and hold tight. <laughs> why, why are you acting like a tour guide when I'm just literally just going around to get scrap? <laughs> you have exceeded the speed limit. What the fuck? Please obey Bellabog traffic laws. On the road, safety is the top priority. What traffic? Uh-oh. Hey. Green four. Sorry, I had to kill one of your friends there. They were they they were about to eat my ass. We have arrived at our second destination. This module is called the Beetle, which is the same as mine. This machine was scrapped because it accelerated erratically for 7.1 kilometers after it incorrectly interpreted a command. Holy shit! The engine to catch fire and the core module to melt down. <laughs> Jeez. That is such an odd reason to be scrapped. Yeah, I kind of feel bad for these robots, not gonna lie, they just seem to be just discarded for like zero, next to zero region. However, the shell appears to be in good condition, so I'll bring it with me. Your trip has concluded. <laughs> Please keep an eye out for vehicles approaching from the back or sides, as well as enemies and automatons. Who the fuck is driving in a place like this? <laughs> like the roads are so narrow, I don't think you can bring a car here. Your trip has concluded. Hey, and robot shell. Just the whole thing. I'm just taking it with me. You putting your trust in Toby. Thank the you, Toby. You for this trip has been automatically generated for you. Oh. You're welcome. What do you mean you're... Okay. <laughs> you generate that report yourself. What do you mean you're welcome? <laughs> hey, I never said I would give you five stars, but... You do you, I guess. <laughs> what? <laughs> Stream four. Wait, I'm going the wrong way. I keep, I keep, I keep forgetting this far base, like, south. Not upwards. Peppy can also talk too? Oh yeah, right. He can somewhat talk, although we haven't heard what he sounds like. But he can only, like, communicate, like, through the brain. <laughs> Alright, I'm back, Clara. Clara, it's time for a break. You shouldn't repair machines when you have negative emotions. It's bad for your physical and mental health. Don't worry, Mr. Svarog. I'm fine. Good lord. <laughs> oh, you're back already. How did it go? Did Toby help you find a shell? I say good lord because Svarog is tall as hell. I think I'm... 
If I'm not mistaken, didn't someone cosplay Sfarog within just one month of the game coming out? They've like already made a Sfarog cosplay and everything just within like one month of the game releasing. That's insane to me. I, I think that was the case. I think I saw like... Yeah, I think I saw like a video of that like roaming about like soon after the Star Wars release. Anyways, yep, got the shell. Here you go. Shell. Hmm. It doesn't appear to be the same design as this little fella's, but it shouldn't matter. The structures of these small robots are nearly identical. Thank you for bringing this to me. I finished extracting that chip from the small robot. Now, all that's left to do is move all this circuitry into the new shell. Plot transfer the robot's core module into the new robot shell. Although its appearance has changed a lot, I think we did a good job. Yay, now he's a more annoying robot <laughs> with the fucking shielding traffic lights. Hmm. But what I just did... Is it any different from those pet upgrades that the vagrants perform? Not compatible. Incompatible? Ah, shit. Huh? It's making a strange sound. Incompatible. In. Well, what's going on? Is it malfunctioning? Uh oh. Incompatible. In. Com. Incompatible. In. Compatible. Incompatible. 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 Oh shit! It's about to blow up. Risk level high. Clara, get away now. Uh oh. Big sister, watch out! It's out of control. Ah oh, shit! We have to kill him again. Oh shit! We do. <laughs> Hey, calm down. Calm down. Calm the hell down. Terminate. Terminate. God, I feel bad for the role. He like killed it twice now. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, and it's dead. You. That was close. Fortunately, Mr. Sparag and Big Sister acted fast. Why did the little fella was there a compatibility issue? I mean, it was screaming incompatible, so I assume so. Troubleshooting. Assessment. The system on the chip and the new hardware are incompatible, causing the robot to behave erratically. The current issue has been resolved. Risk level low. Alert lifted. It appears to have adjusted to its new shell after the battle. That's great, but I'd like to keep a closer eye on it for a while. Compatibility tests should take a few days. Hopefully, it'll be all back to normal by then. I'm also curious about where this little fella came from. Could you please come back later, big sister? I need to look into something. I may require your assistance. Alright, see you tomorrow, Clara. Thank you, big sister. I'll text you when this little fella is fixed. Mr. Sparog, I'd like to give this little fella a name. Any ideas for a good name? Accessing name database, <laughs> search results, Abby, Abigail, Ada, Addison. They do no, not all the names in the world. I should come back to Clara later. <laughs> he just keeps going. I'll just see on part one. Okay. Godfather. Hmm. I should listen to these soundtracks, honestly. They, yeah, I haven't listened to a single one of these since I uh, got them. I gone back to normal yet. I should come back later. Okay, uh, so I believe it's just like you teleport away and then plot should give you like uh, the next part or is it time gated? You yeah, maybe maybe if I leave Panaconi, not Panaconi, um, yeah, Bellabug entirely. Yep, there we go. The little guy we picked up a while ago has been fixed. Drop by to see us if you have time. <laughs> okay, I'll be right there. <laughs> Okay. Uh. <laughs> then I'll be waiting for you and Mr. Farogs. Okay, there's part two. I was kind of scared for a second that it'd be like time gated or whatever, but hey, luckily it isn't. All right, let's start part two then. Let's go. Screen four. Clean four. I'm here. You, Pascal, very like 
Clara. Pascal. <laughs> Good boy, Pascal. Oh, <laughs> this reminded me of the, like the the same robot named Pascal in uh near Automata. If you guys played that, I hope he doesn't end it with like that Pascal. <laughs> Based on the information gathered, it is recommended that Pascal's data be formatted and integrated into the base network so that he doesn't threaten the property or safety of the camp's residents. Hmm. Is it me or do most of the characters named Pascal that I know about always have a bad ending? I don't know why that's the case, but yeah, I've I've like know for like a few Pascals. I don't remember all of them, but the, the main one that sticks out to me is Pascal from Neo Tabano. The one with 2B in it. And yeah, uh, needs to say, uh, without spoiling anything, uh, they did not have a good ending. I know this is the most sensible option, but Pascal... How are the repairs going? Welcome, outsider. Thanks to Clara's hard work, the repairs were completed successfully. Yes. The little fella is alive and well again. It's just that some parts aren't completely back to normal yet. Pascal, is that his name? What about Pascal is it normal? I think you should give up. No, I'm not going to say that. Uh, what about Pascal is it normal? Well, how should I put it? Space don't jinx it. I'm just saying, I just have the feeling that things aren't going to end well for this robot. I'm just having the feeling. You, Pascal, good. I am called name. <laughs> oh, look, Pascal is greeting you. It's just his speech is still a little confusing. The examination conducted earlier revealed that the information stored in this robot's core module is incompatible with the new hardware. Furthermore, many defective networks were detected in the core module. A significant amount of muddled information with unknown content was discovered during a deep scan. Simply put, Pascal's brain is filled with junk information of unknown origin. This junk, along with hardware that's incompatible with his core, caused him to lose his ability to communicate. Okay. Apart from the language module, Pascal is still functioning properly. However, the robot still has a 44.7% chance of malfunctioning. It's recommended that Pascal's data be formatted and integrated into the base network. Mr. Sparog, I understand, but I think Pascal is different. He possesses a quality that other small robots don't have. In some ways, I believe he's similar to Mr. Sparog. I can't overlook this unique quality. Mr. Sparog, could you give me a little more time? I want to investigate this further. If we don't find anything, you can integrate Pascal into the network. Understood, Clara. I respect your wish. In the meantime, I'll make sure that this robot doesn't endanger other people or property. <laughs> if he does start to act up, I will shoot him on sight. So what do you do now? We should just format the robot and call it a day. Uh, what should we do now? I'd like to recap what I discussed with Mr. Sparog earlier. Let's begin by doing exactly what we did before. Find a new shell, put Pascal oh, God, again, and see if the hardware is compatible. Okay. According to the analysis, Pascal's original hardware was a dire wolf or grizzly model. If we can put its core into the appropriate shell, there's an 87.3% chance that its language module will return to normal. There are all kinds of abandoned robots in the machine graveyard. Let's go take a look. Rarely affection in part two. All right. Slice of life with the furnace. All right. Okay, we still don't know who even owns the robot. That's the one thing I do want to know. Like, who owns it? And who, like, programmed it to, like, steal materials and shit? That's the one thing I'm so puzzled about. All right, uh, back to machine grave. Here we go. All right, bring the elevator. All right, down to go. Uh, wait, is that it's one of the? Place. Uh. Everywhere you look, there are robots that have lost the ability to function. That guy looks new. Hey, big sister, take a look over there. He this looks is friendly. Automaton direwolf, but it appears to have been modified. It's most likely another abandoned robot pet. 
Although it doesn't seem to be functioning, you should still be cautious when approaching it. Who, who, who in their bright ideas would give their pet a chainsaw? That's just... I'm, I'm just questioning that. Like, why? Uh oh. Oh, oh I, I thought he was gonna actually gonna speak. Oh no, it's still active. Watch out! Ah shit, more killing. Intruder violate protocol. I killed your part. <laughs> Me hate civil <laughs> civil main guards. Okay, geez, calm down. All right, and by quiet him down, I mean silence him for good. Go, Akaron. Oh, damn, he survived that. Oh, not anymore. Stand still. Uh, <laughs> Space Edge, what the fuck? You reduce him to dust. <laughs> Here it is. This is the core. Okay, now we got it. I'll pack it up and take it with us. Hmm. Then all that's left is to drag the shelf back. Leave it to me. You should take a break. You're taking its core too? Judging from how active the robot was, its core isn't just scrap metal. It should be repairable. I can't let any robot go to waste if it can be repaired. So, I'm going to try to fix them all. Okay, I understand. Should we fix Pascal or this one first? Oh my god, we're gonna like be raising like a robot zoo at this point. <laughs> well, let's start with Pascal. We found him first, after all. Also, like Mr. Sparrow warned, if he's not supervised, he might cause trouble. You know, I have a large safe full of core modules that I've gathered around the underworld. Every day, I try to figure out how to repair some of them and return the robots to normal. Except, there are a lot more than Mr. Sparg and I can handle on our own. But, I'm sure I can fix them all one day. We can't relax yet. We must work harder. You're good, Cl uh, Cl Clid. You're good, kid, Clara. Uh, that's a great gene, but a difficult one to realize. I can get Sarah to help us. She's an excellent mechanic. Really? I can't wait. Ah, uh, I was talking so much that I totally lost track of time. Let's head back. Otherwise, Mr. Sparrow and Pascal will get worried. Uh, back already. <laughs> Another robot shell that looks slightly different. Okay. Stream four. Back again. We're back. Welcome back. Return. Clara. Rivet. Fail. You're... Yep. Welcome back, Clara. I've completed my further analysis of this robot. Uh, what did you discover? Pascal didn't cause any trouble, did he? Wait a minute, let me take a quick break. <laughs> I'm tired. Okay. Then you can tell me first, Mr. Sparag. Conclusion. It is impossible to determine the time of manufacture, purpose, and ownership of this robot. During my analysis, I extracted the robot's serial number and searched for it in the Underworld's automaton database. According to my search, there are 32 automatons with the same serial number as this one. Huh. Even after eliminating the scrapped ones, three automatons still match the keyword description. Failure. Three. Back. Rivet one. Fail. Uh, is it possible to narrow down the search results? Is Pascal trying to say something? Who's beyond this plot? I'm not sure, but <laughs> if we can narrow it down to the three automatons, then maybe there's still a chance. Tempering. Tempering. Back. Back. Back to Rivet. Fire. Fire. I think it's trying to tell us to go back to Rivet Town. Pascal is becoming increasingly unstable. We should change his shell. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it needs right now. All right, <laughs> let's give it a chainsaw. I'm going to change your shell. Don't worry, it won't hurt. Cloud transferred the rope. Oh, oh no, just a core into the new robot shell. Back. Never mind. Back. No, 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 no. We're changing the shell entirely. Back. Back to rivet. 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 Yeah, it's a good idea to give this unstable robot a chainsaw. That's really a, a good idea. Return. Waiting. Continue. Repair. 
Waiting. Failure. Waiting. Still not functioning properly? What's wrong, Pascal? Watch out, Clara. Uh, he wants to kill us again. Failure. 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 <laughs> Pascal? No. He's running away. Oh, I thought we had to fight him again. Clara. Oh. Where's he going? Pascal. Did he run off towards Rivet Town? Let's follow him. No, Clara. Yep. Just leave it to me. I'll order the robots to pursue this one. No, Mr. Svarog. Please, don't. Oh. <laughs> Please leave Pascal to me. It was my decision to keep him in the first place, so I must take full responsibility. Dog? <laughs> Who could say no to that kind of face? <laughs> Come on. I'm certain Pascal won't do anything to harm anyone. But if something goes wrong... I'll beat him up again. <laughs> please let me handle this myself. Please, Mr. Svarog. Can you endure the thought of erasing uh, his data yourself? Let Clara handle it. Let Clara handle it. That's right. This all started with me and can only end with me. I'm certain Pascal would never do anything to harm anyone. Clara, please tell me how you came to this conclusion. Pascal possesses a quality that other small robots lack. It's kind of similar to the emotions we humans have. I've only ever seen this quality in Mr. Svara. Aww. <laughs> I feel a warmth from these emotions. I feel drawn to this quality and try to respond back in my own way. But I'm also aware that not all emotions in this world are positive. If there are too many negative emotions that go unchecked, then someone needs to step in and stop them. The only things that can stop such negative emotions are rationality and responsibility. This is a valuable lesson I've learned from Mr. Svarov. Mr. Svarov, I want to help Pascal overcome those negative emotions. I want to take on this responsibility. That way... I won't have to hide behind Mr. Svarag anymore. Oh. Listen to your daughter, Svarag. <laughs> I understand, Clara. I support your decision. I won't intervene unless the situation risks spinning out of control. Thank you, Mr. Svarag. Thank you, Roa Daddy. <laughs> so, let's go. Hey, right, let's go. And you're... <laughs> let's go, she says, and she's just staring at the snow for some reason. Okay, let's let's go get him. Oh boy, something... I don't know, I just feel like something... My gut's telling me we may have to kill... <laughs> we may have to kill uh, Pascal here, uh, Clara. Just saying. Also, Look, what the fuck? Pascal's over there. Who's standing next to it? The heck? Isn't that a grizzly robot? Let's go take a look. They friends? Pascal, who did this to you? Pain. Uh oh. Hurt. Pain. Hurt. Pain. Hurt. Hurt. Pain. Clara, get away. This is a fragmentum creature. It's extremely dangerous. Oh shit. A fragmentum creature? What are you talking about? Uh, this is clearly a robot like just like you. Have the fragmentum creatures evolved this level? This frog said you spit it out. <laughs> Request approved. Reanalyzing. Reanalysis complete. The original assessment stands. This is a fragmentum creature and is thus extremely dangerous. What? Could it have malfunctioned? It appears to be normal. Please step back. I shall eliminate this fragmentum creature. Wait. Wait, huh? Wait, is Pascal fragment? What? No, it's going to attack Pascal. We have to stop it. We have to kill him. <laughs> we have to kill him, Clara. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm fighting like every single robot in this quest. I swear to God. <laughs> Man, this quest is really making me go through the entire robot gallery. <laughs> Oh god, not the self destruct bots. I we die. Part. Bam. 
free will. I mean, it makes sense. It's Claw's quest after all. Uh. Oh no, we didn't leave him alive. We just actually killed him. He's. Luckily, oh no, he's alive. The robot and Pascal's cores are still intact. The big fella shell is only slightly dented. Thank you for your help. The only thing that puzzles me is why the big fella mistook Pascal for a fragmentum creature. Hmm. I can't figure it out. Hmm. Well, let's not worry about that now. Anyway, I'll take this core back and examine it. Now, let's insert Pascal's core into the big fella's shell. I'm not sure that's a great idea, but all right. Clash into the Pascal's core module into the Scrapped Aruaton Grizzly. Language module. Holy shit. Connect. Oh my god, <laughs> he's sounding so much taller. <laughs> Connection complete. Uh. Testing, verifying. Hey. All modules working. Connected. Welcome back, everyone. Finally, Pascal has been waiting. <laughs> you can finally talk normal again. Hey. Pascal, you're back to normal. A happy ending. We should work out our rewards. Ask him why he's singing parts. Um, uh, what's next? <laughs> Give me our rewards. Uh, thing we still need to find out why pascal was stealing parts in the first place pascal could you please uh explain why you were stealing parts was it trying to like repair itself collecting parts returning to workshop 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 oh do you mean the tempering workshop in rivet town been waiting repair oh repair somebody else oh, please Pascal! Okay, follow the big man. Oh, Pascal ran off. He went in that direction. I think he wants us to follow him. Oh, okay. Holy, how, how does a big robot fit into a place like this? Also, I'm aware that thing's just been there for ages, but, uh... Yeah, I'll probably do some other time. Oh. Enemy! Oh, never mind. I think this place used to be a restaurant. One time... I found a bunch of canned food here. <laughs> the vagrants in the camp were so happy. However, I've always wondered, the light here, why is it still on? Hmm. This place has clearly been abandoned for a long time. Also, there's dust all over the place, but none of the equipment appears to be deteriorating. Uh, maybe every town is haunted. <laughs> is it possible that someone lives here? I've been wondering about that too. Uh alone yes no 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 ghosts don't exist <laughs> anyway tell that to the fucking cnjo after this place but who and why ghosts don't exist and then do you have to fucking heal your my quest holy shit that guy almost attacked me oh <laughs> jeez that was close Okay, Pascal, where are you? Okay, here. Where's Fog gave his big speech? Okay. Holy shit, is it me or does he look a bit larger than the normal, like, grizzly, like, bots? Like, holy moly, that that's a big boy right there. Yeah. Huh. I was kind of hoping I can hit that one down there. Oh, well. Give me a techie points first, though. I'm going the wrong way. Okay. Shiny? Uh. Job, Pascal, done, nice. Why is its stomach doing that? The heck, is that its mouth? Yeah, well, why is it doing that? <laughs> hmm. Uh, it looks like some weird texture issue or something. Huh? Could it be? Pascal has been repairing this abandoned town. Pascal. Repair. Indeed. What the whole town? Jeez. Vin, everyone. Uh, is this why you've been seeing the parts? Parts. Pascal. Collect. Nonstop. Rivet Town. Repair. Nonstop. It seems that Pascal was stealing parts because he wants to repair the town. Hmm. Have you been waiting for us? Waiting. Everyone. Pascal. Nonstop. Leave. Everyone. Come back. One day, 
Has Pascal been waiting for Rivet Town's evacuated residents to return? Aww. Uh, how have you been repairing the town? Repair? Been every day. Pascal, use, can, everyone return. Pascal has been looking after the town so that everyone can go back to their previous lives when they return. Aww, so why'd you bring us here? Workshop, tempering, here, base, Pascal, secret, parts. Store enemies not here. <laughs> Place safe. Scared. No need, everybody. Ah, this appears to be the secret base where Pascal keeps the parts. Although we now know why he took them, there are still many unanswered questions. For example, uh, why does he want to repair the town? Why is Pascal tr being treated as a fragmentum creature? How should we punish this part, Stephen? Yeah, this one I'm curious about. Right. That bigger robot said that. How strange. Hmm. I wonder if we can find any clues here. Rivet Town, live, Clara. Tour, feel free, please. <laughs> Investigate the tempering workshop. Hmm. <laughs> maybe it's a yeah. Maybe it's a fragmental monster that thinks it's like has consciousness, or thinks it's a robot or something, and wants to repair the town. Just a theory. Let's have a look see. Books and letters all carefully cut and put aside, whose content varies from tales for children to outdated political news. These pages are so neatly cut out. Huh. Oh, and they smell like geomero fuel. Is there someone here in Rivet Town doing this? Or could Pascal have collected the pages and put them together? <laughs> There's no way <laughs> with those gigantic hands of his that he, he can lift these freaking pieces of paper. I refuse to believe that. Holy, how do you do that? And also, like, what's here? A Wheel Mountain CRT display device. Though covered by some dust, it still functions. This must be the result of Pascal's meticulous repairs. But the little fella doesn't really need the monitor, does he? Hmm. Hey, there's oh. big handprints on the side of the cabinet. Human handprints. Ooh. Could this monitor have been recently used by someone? Hmm. Okay, no, so there was a person here. Um, oh, tools. What are these? Huh? What's this? A diary? Wow. Such neat handwriting. No, wait a uh. minute. I think this was printed onto the cover. Could it be Pascal's? Oh, part one. This place displays a neatly printed typeface, not handwritten, and appears to have been bound in later. Or ladder. Whatever. Um, date, whatever. Airframe damage log, backup failure, manual record log, daily rescue progress 25%. Estimated good time of completion 2 days. Discovered number of survivors null. Rivet town guard automaton online count 1. Determined as current unit. Daily rescue progress 75%. Estimated time of completion one day. Uh, discovered number of survivors null. Uh, Rivet Town Guard Automaton Online count one. Determined as current unit. Daily rescue progress 100%. Estimated completion uh, zero day. Summary. Discovery. Discovered number of survivors null. Possible reason retreated. Uh, Rivet Town Guard Automaton uh, count one. Possible uh, reason for online status backup power activated. Decision patrol continue town reparation anticipate return to residence. Hmm. Part two. Okay, more of the same thing. Daily reparation parts collection mission complete free time reading books left behind by others. I think books are fun. Daily reparation parts collection mission complete reconnected light circuitry light stays on feeling safe. Uh, found fairy lights and ruins, hung on wall, mansion, hilltop, colorful, very pretty. Read, uh, finish reading last book. Seems to be called fairy tale. Pa puppy waiting dead master home. A little sad, aww. Attacked by others like me, hurt, escape tempering workshop. Workshop safe wall roof, my home relieved. Today saw broken glass, me weathered, fixed before everyone returned, beautiful, 
again loved fairy lights broken other places search attacked again others like me explain no call me fragmentum creature not machine why oh geez part three attacked by others like me again almost dead hurt i not machine i do don't understand what am i core confused attack from others like me frequent what am i core noise generation reparation parts need collect core noise generating on Seizing. What am I? Am I? I don't understand. I what? Require parts collection. I, repair I. Oh, geez. This is where you start breaking down. Collect parts. Parts. No core bot. Oh, geez. Yeah, it just devolves into gibberish now. Jeez. Pascal. Oh. It all makes sense now. What, what should we do? I don't know. Let me think. Hmm... How about we go over Pascal's whole story again, from the start? Um... Yeah, let's try to start out the whole story. Hmm... Mm. Sorry, just drink some water. <clears throat> His backup power was activated after the incident in Vivid Town and it woke up to discover that River Town has been abandoned. He decides to collect parts and repair the town, and wait for everyone to return. Around that time, Pascal became sentient. We... you, you recapitulate your thoughts to Clara. That is correct. Mm -hmm. so, Pascal used to be a robot guardian of Rivet Town. So then, him developing consciousness, that's what made others think that he's a fragmented monster? Pascal's backup power was activated for some reason shortly after the residents were evacuated. It woke up to discover that the whole place had been abandoned. So it decided to collect parts, repair the town, and wait for everyone to return. However, for some reason, Pascal keeps getting attacked by his fellow robots because the automatons think he's a fragmentum creature. Right. Maybe Pascal's getting sentience. Could be possessed by a fragmentum creature. I'm guessing the Sanchez part. I'm not sure, but I suspect Pascal's tormented sense of self stems from him being constantly attacked by his fellow robots. Hmm. The module used to detect emotions was frequently damaged, eventually turning him into a small robot that did nothing but collect parts. That's probably what happened. Why is Pascal being treated as a fragmentum creature? I don't know. Hmm. I can't find the answer in Pascal's diary. Pascal... Why do your peers keep rejecting you? Big sister, Clara, tour, enjoyable, is it? Eh, uh, maybe. Pascal, collect parts, ready, continue. Or, wait, instruction, next. Pascal's consciousness does not appear to have returned to the level shown in the diary. Big sister, Clara, Rivet Town, resident. Uh, no, I'm not gonna live here. I, I belong on the express. Pascal, protect everybody. I see. Thank you so much, Pascal. I don't know why, but I'm I'm, I'm semi expecting the robot here to just try and keep us here in Rivet Town and not and not let us leave. Hmm. You can stop gathering parts for the time being. Just stay here and wait for us to return and give you your next orders. All right? Pascal, affirmative. Be good. Wait. Let's go back to Mr. Spark. Okay, never mind. He's not like that. <laughs> Okay. Can I talk to you? Oh my god, you're so fucking huge. I can't even walk past you. Okay, but uh, let's go discuss things with Mrs. Favrag. Stream four. Clean both hmm. Nah, actually, it might just be my imagination, or maybe it's a reflection or something, but... I don't know why, but I thought the textures with uh, Pascal there were a bit weird. In its grizzly bot form. Maybe that's just me, though. Hmm. Hey, Svarag. So, that's what happened, Mr. Svarag. But there's one thing I don't understand. Why is Pascal being treated as a fragmentum creature? This robot has been repairing itself using fragmentum contaminated components for. Oh, that makes time. sense. Yeesh. Therefore, automatons connected to the base network recognize it as a fragmentum creature. This is a minor issue that can be resolved by replacing components. 
Do not worry. Okay, I thought there was like a bigger twist involved there. I Never see. mind. Has Mr. Sparrow ever witnessed a similar incident anywhere in the network? No. Network connected automatons regularly clear out muddled information in their core modules. The likelihood of a robot gaining sentience beyond control is approximately 0.12%. Hmm. For those that aren't connected to the network, the chance climbs to 3.23%. Please keep in mind that these probabilities are only estimates. Over the past 700 years, this has never happened in the underworld. So you don't know what to do either, but the robots here appear quite intelligent. I can't believe such an improbable event has actually happened. <laughs> to make life easier for users, all of Billabog's automatons contain language simulation abilities. They generate appropriate responses by reading preset parameters and mimicking natural human conversations. Hmm. This, however, is only a simulation, and it does not mean that the automatons have actual emotional intelligence. But... Mr. Sparog is different. Given that automatons can still develop emotion modules using their own processing power, hmm. I have a backup plan in place. Mr. Sparog always takes all factors into account and handles problems logically. I can't do that myself yet. <laughs> so, what should we do with Pascal? It is recommended that Pascal's data be formatted and integrated into the base network. Really? After all that, we still have got to do this anyways? I will maintain the robot's core module and repair its hardware once it has been integrated into the base network. There is a greater than 97.2% chance that this robot will return to normal after the bad sectors and muddled information are removed. Hmm. However... That will remove his emotional intelligence, doesn't it? I know there has to be a catch. But once the formatting is complete, Pascal's emotional intelligence will vanish. Correct. Damn. <sighs> Is there no other option? This option minimizes both internal and external losses. Hmm. Although Clara's account indicates that the robot is relatively stable, the assessment based on the computations shows that both the risk of Pascal crashing and the amount of muddled information are increasing. When it approaches 100%. I understand, but I don't think I'm ready to give up on Pascal just yet. We've helped Pascal find compatible hardware. If we can eliminate the muddled information without damaging the sectors linked to his emotional intelligence. Oh, fuck. Don't tell me I get a choice here. Oh, do I get a choice of leaving it alive or. Oh. Oh shit. You know the chances of that are incredibly low. Oh no, don't tell me I get a choice here to format it or keep it the way it is. Fox calculations are extremely precise. How do you get how do you generally get rid of model information? On in all honesty, I just don't understand. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. There's only one way to completely remove muddled information. Overwriting. When the muddled information is removed, the base network will create a comprehensive backup ah, and overwrite the data stored in the corresponding sector. <sighs> Maybe there's another way. We can install a lock in Pascal's core, clear the redundant data, and locate the core sectors that are still intact. Then we can install a, a new suite of operational programs. This suite of programs can regulate Pascal's behavior and prevent him from hurting people. With this method, we might be able to retain as much of Pascal's emotional intelligence as possible while keeping him out of trouble. If we can keep Pascal's emotional intelligence, I might be able to teach him to treat people with kindness. What do you think, Mr. Sparag? This procedure is theoretically viable, but there are risks. It will not eliminate the muddled information. Additionally, the newly installed programs may be later contaminated by it. In other words, because we cannot monitor the robot outside of the network, this approach can only guarantee Pascal's stability for a brief period of time. The probability of the robot crashing again is around. And if that happens, I'll do it again. And if it happens again, I'll go through the exact same steps. I'll guide him and fix him. No matter how many times it Aww. happens, I'll be there to help Pascal. But 
He will forget about you, Clara. He will repeatedly forget you, as well as all the emotions and memories he has previously accumulated. His limited storage capacity will eventually become completely overwritten by infinite copies of muddled information in an everlasting cycle. Ah, shoot. Clara, the challenge will be tougher than you can possibly imagine. Are you sure this is the path you want to take? Aw, don't cry. There, there, Clara. There's no need to rush to a conclusion. The variable in Bellabog's fate is still here. <laughs> Perhaps she can suggest the best solution. Eh, fuck, it is a choice. Oh, no. Okay. I... I trust your judgment. We trust your decision. Uh, choice time. Oh, boy. Both have provided their solutions. Svarog thinks that formatting Pascal's data and integrating him into the base's network is necessary. But doing so will deprive Pascal of his special emotional intelligence. Although it may sound cruel, this approach best prevents Pascal from posing a threat. Clara thinks she can use programming to control Pascal's behavior hmm. and prevent him from causing harm while keeping his emotional intelligence intact. However, this doesn't address the root of the issue, and it also requires Clara to devote much time and effort to Pascal. Although Clara will use Pascal's emotional intelligence to help guide him in the right direction, uh. Pascal could still go out of control in the future. In addition, Pascal has a history of stealing, even though he never caused any harm to anyone. This is also a major concern. What is most important here? Ah, uh, shoot. Here. I hate when it goes. Uh, hmm. And then persuade the other person. It's tough, actually. It sounds too inhumane. Would you rather keep it alive? Do it over and over again? And continuously yanking its humanity? True. Uh, do I pick? Oh, I need to. Hmm. Convince Clara or Svarg to take up on the other's plan and decide on Pascal's fates. Okay, so I need to convince the other. So, if I, if I want to go with Clara's plan, I talk to Svarg. If I want to, if I want to go with Svarg's plan, I talk to Clara. Shit. Hmm. Think carefully and decide on Pascal's fates. Ah, fuck, I hate it when it gives me a choice like this. Oh, boy. Hmm. So, right, if I want to... Yeah, if I want to go with Clara's plan, I talk to Sfarag, correct? Because I've got time to go her route. But then Sfarag also has a point. Yeah, I'm, I'm, making, I'm just making sure I'm reading this right, so... Convince, yeah, convince one to take up the other's plan. Uh, shit, boys. Hmm. Uh, hmm. You want know boys? I, I think. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's much easier as compared to like the, yeah, the thing in Panicani. Yeah, I think I'm. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Clara's plan. Like, here. Okay, so yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go with Clara's plan. Uh, yeah, I'm reading this right, right? So, if I wanna side with Clara, I talk to Svarog. Right? <sighs> I really hope I'm not misreading this. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, shoot myself in the foot. <laughs> Alright. I propose that you should choose Outsider. I respect her wish. Have you made a decision about how to handle Pascal? Uh, can you give Clara's idea some thought? Hmm, I want to talk to Clara first, though. So see what she says. You can make a decision after you've thought about it more. Yeah, I'm not gonna do Sarek's plan. Uh, what should we do with Pascal? Give some thought. Okay, I'll think about it some more, too. Yeah, I think... Yep, this is my final choice. I'm gonna go Clara's plan. Have you decided? My choice will have a direct impact on the outcome. I should mull it over. 
I've already mulled it over. We'll go with Clara's idea. Wait, I should persuade Clara out of Vincent. No, we'll go with Clara's idea. Decision made! Oh, There's no going yeah. back. Oh boy. Pascal, good. Waiting. Waiting. Further instructions. Now, please be a good boy and don't move. As much as the hard decisions are, I do appreciate Star Rail incorporating like different endings to and like having your choices be a direct impact on the story. That's something that's not really present in Genshin. But it's like yeah, more prevalent here in Saria, which I do appreciate. Uh, it was a tough choice, though. Pascal, we've got Mr. Spark to help treat your illness. He'll help you recover. Illness? What is illness? But Pascal, not move, mm. recover, health. What's your thought on this reasoning? Okay, my reason for choosing Clara's route is because one. <laughs> Probably the, the most important reason it make Cla it make Clara happy, and number two, I think if like yeah, if he's allowed to have emotions, I think we, he should keep them for a while until like he actually turns into a problem. Like he may turn into a problem and like cause problem for people, but yeah, I think it's just not humane to like just take away their emotions. Hmm. I, I hope I explained that right, but yeah, that that is my thought process. I think, I think yeah, I would rather like take the gamble that that they may hurt somebody to you know give them enjoyment of their own emotions instead of you know just turning them back into like a basic robot again. I mean, yeah, even though Clara would have to like reformat them over and over again, I think she would still be happy to do so. Yeah, <laughs> mainly the reason is that you see a Clara's decision. It's, it's because of, you know, Clara's emotions and whatnot, yeah. Okay, decision made. Mr. Sparov, let's get started. Understood. The protective programs are ready for installation. I hope I made the right decision. Is it done? The programs were successfully installed. The robot will require offline maintenance and will be unable to communicate for some time. We can return to it later. I see. In that case, let's go back to the base. I think it's over. I'll check in with Clara later to see what's up. Well, hopefully it ends up with a good ending. Uh, really affectionate part two complete. Uh Oh wait, that's it? Oh, Clara's become a visitor on the express. You might come across Clara. All right, yeah. Clara and the sun. Uh, complete companionship mission, really affectionate. That's it, we don't get like an ending or like we get to see what happens afterwards. Or or, or do I got a TP somewhere and then she'll let me know. Uh, Sure, let's like leave Bellabog entirely. I want to see the ending of this. There she is. Haven of memories. Every touch, every moment is like a thorned rose. Big sister, are you free now? I want to talk about Pascal. Uh, are you still sad? Okay, what do you want to talk about? Hmm. Actually, I thought a lot about it. I just don't understand. I don't understand. What is Pascal? Other robots think Pascal is a fragmental creation. Mrs. Farg thinks Pascal's a normal robot. Pascal doesn't even know what itself is. I think Pascal could even be a human. Mrs. Sister, what do you think? Uh... I mean, to me, if they have emotional intelligence, they are human. Pascal's a living human being. You think so, Big Sister? I think so too, but... Bring it to creature, robot, human... What's the difference between these? Some fragmented creatures can speak and behave like humans. While Mrs. Farg uh, is like a robot, he can also speak, think, and express emotions like us. So, how do we tell what is us and what is them? Through empathy, through biology, there is no difference. Through empathy. 
So that's how it is. Hmm. So maybe Pascal and Mrs. Farag, maybe they're all living, breathing human beings too. I mean, I don't feel so lost anymore. Thank you, Miss Sister. Aw. Okay. Yeah, and now because of that, I feel like I've made the right decision. I feel like I made the right choice there. I kind of want to go back and see if, like, the Pascal's actually there or not. Yeah, where is it again? Yeah, um, Rivet Town, Rivet Town. There it is. Yeah, just want to go back and check if, uh, she's still there. Nope, okay, she, she's gone after the quest is finished. I'm not sure where she'll appear, but there you go. The ending to Kara's quest. I kind of like that quest, actually. I kind of like that it's like two different endings. Now I'm kind of curious. I'll probably like watch this on YouTube later, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious as to like what happens if you choose the Farag ending. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for some reason, I thought I'd be able to, like, find, um, Pascal somewhere around here. Clara Mission Part 2, or Part 3 after Server Reset. Oh, really now? Oh, so I actually gotta wait an in-game day to, like, do Part 3? Wait, is there Part 3? I thought there was only two parts. Hmm. Wait, let me see here. Hmm. Hang on, let me look this up just to make sure. Uh, yeah, let me, I'm just gonna, I'm just scrolling through, like, a guide or so to see if, like, if there's a part three. Uh, hmm, the wiki's saying nothing about a part three. Hmm. Are you sure there's a part three to this quest? It's just for the achievement, you get to see what happens to Pascal. Oh, okay, so it's not like a, a full-on quest, it's just like the aftermath of the quest. Okay, gotcha. I'll be sure to check it out in like the next uh, Star Rail stream we do. Hey, but they're, they're still here though. Can I? Yeah, I want to talk to them, see if they uh, comment anything about it. Uh, We should talk to Svarog. Oh, is Pascal still acting weird lately? According to calculations under the effect of protection program, the probability of this machine at normality activity has been reduced to approximately 2.1%. However, this metric will inevitably increase again with the passage of time. Due to the inability to effectively monitor the machines outside the base network, I must regularly perform risk assessments according to Clara's maintenance results so as to facilitate timely intervention at a suitable moment. Uh, does this mean the pro protection program isn't effective? Inconclusive. The protection program cannot remove constantly generated information noises, so the newly installed program runs risk of being contaminated by stated by the stated noises. Once the noise reaches a threshold value, this machine will be able to will be unable to avoid malfunction. When that time comes, you must all take identical or you must all make the identical decision. The Clara has already decided. I will accompany her and seek a breakthrough in this endless cycle that does not involve complete reformatting. Will Cloud be able to handle it? I perform repeat calculations regarding this problem, of which their results lie outside the area of confidence, the confidence bracket. I cannot convey irregular calculated results to you, but I will keep verifying my formulae and calculations until I obtain a, pro a, pro a proximate answer. I understand. Regardless, the choice has respected Clara's resolve and determination. I, and on behalf of Clara, convey our gratitude, Space Edge. Hey, hey. at least that's nice. Hi there. I'm listening. Uh, Miss Space Edge, you need anything from me? Uh... Oh, I, I, okay, I can't talk to her regarding 
Pascal. Uh, okay. Uh, nope. Looks like there's nothing regarding Pascal. Oh, oh well. Damn, though, that was a pretty... That's a pretty thought-provoking quest, honestly. I wouldn't say it's, like, emotional, per se. I, I think it's, like, more thought-provoking than anything else. At least to me. That's a really, really good quest, though. And, yeah, I will, like... Check it out in the next uh, Star Rail stream to see what happens uh, to Pascal afterwards. Hopefully they don't die or anything like that, but... Eh, who knows? This is Star Rail. This is Honkai. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. But okay, now that we're done with uh, Clara's quest, let's move on to probably the last Bellabog. Um, yeah, uh, Capanchin mission, which is Luca and Sila's, which you guys have told me is... Yep, probably one of the best ones uh, out of Bellabog. This haven of memories. Every touch, every moment is like a thorn rose. Uh, wait, do I have enough? Oh yeah, I do have some shield, so uh, give me a second. I want to like buy some stuff with the shield I got to before we begin officially. But yeah, you guys have hyped it up. <laughs> I've, I've seen a lot of people say good things about um the Luca and Sila quest, so I really, really wonder what it's all about. So, yeah, we'll be starting hit in here in a bit once I uh, <laughs> buy my stuff here. Ah, so, so close to getting my one standard ticket. Eh, we should probably have enough doing uh, after doing the Luca and Sila quest anyways. It's more like an afterthought than actual stuff. True, like we didn't really do much in the story, if you think about it. We just kind of repaired robots and just fought them. But yeah, I guess it just really, yeah, just, add, just ask a thought provoking question. Like, is it okay to take, take away like a robot sentience if it becomes sentience? Hmm. Okay, let me just drink some water first before we begin, which is uh, probably the quest I'm most looking forward to do in uh, today's stream. Yep, there they are. Luca and... Well, it's just Sila there, but Luca's gonna be involved too. Howard, i.e. Mr. E6 Luca and E2 Kafka. Oh, really? I've Yeah, I think Howard is... um. Uh, Luca's English VA. <laughs> yeah, I've heard he's like gone to beef a lot with like Sila's English VA. I think I see, yeah, I've seen a few clips where they're just arguing. I wonder if that's gonna be the dynamic here. <laughs> I wonder if they just absolutely fucking hate each other or something, but... Here's, uh, here's a seeing it. Alright, let us begin. Aren't you going to watch the fight, Zila? He's defending his championship title. Yep. <laughs> nah, I'll pass. It's not like anyone else has a chance with him around. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. I get it if you don't want to join in the fun. I'll just the way she, just the way she fucking said that. It's, it sounds like she fucking just hates Luca. <laughs> ah, what a rare moment of rest. Maybe I should find a spot to stretch my legs a bit too. Zila and Oleg. I wonder what they're talking about. I'll go ask them. Hey. Hey, isn't that the trailblazer? It's been a while since I've seen you around. How you doing? How have your travels been? Thanks to you, things are pretty peaceful around here. The chief and I are getting restless. <laughs> Silly girl. Just a few days of hard-earned rest, and you're already making it sound like jail time. <laughs> uh, what are you two chatting about? I kind of miss seeing Bowler Town's homie feel. Uh, a homie? Oh, sheesh. You must have gone through a lot since leaving here. Oh, don't even remind me. <laughs> I've been through trauma. <laughs> Just hardcore trauma through and through with Panicotti. <laughs> mm, sounds like our rustic and friendly community left a good impression on the visitors. <laughs> uh, what are you two chatting about? Oh, you heard us. We were talking about my student, Luca. Uh, of course. Honestly, to me, it feels like Bellowog is like the Mondstadt of like Star Rail. It's just, I don't know, always have to revisit it. I mean, I know Herd of Space Station is like technically the first place you go to, but I don't know why. I, I, I still feel like Bellowog is like, yeah, the Mondstadt. It's like always have to revisit it after a while. You probably met him before, right? 
Yep, it's that boy with the mechanical arm. Uh -huh. He's also doing work for Wildfire before, just not in this town. Oh, right. She hasn't seen Luca defend his championship title before, right? Zila, why don't you take our hero <laughs> and swing by the fight club to show her the match? Uh... Please do it for me. <laughs> Please see that red haired fuck for once. <laughs> what? You don't want to? No, it's just. I'm worried Luca might do something stupid again. Again? Come on, take me. I want to go, please. Oh, I remember now. <laughs> ah, shit. Luca I did. I picked the wrong option. No. I actually shifted my mouse. God damn it. Oh, oh well. Damn it. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh well. I, wa I almost want to reload and change my option, but nah, I don't think it's worth it. His title once, or is Zilla it? Was watching in the audience. It? The opponent for that fight was too weak. They went down with just a few punches. I don't know what got into Luca after that. But he said out loud that he wanted Zila to come up and fight him right <laughs> there and then. <laughs> Zila, come up here right now. Let's let's fucking throw down. You and me, right now, baby. <laughs> uh, why don't we stop there, Chief? I'd rather not relive the moment. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Anyway, that's what Luca's like. He forgets about himself once he's in the mood. But I trust Luca not to make the same mistake again. So, back to the original suggestion. Are you good to take her to the fight club, Zila? Just exit and leave before the scene ends? I mean, I guess I could. Not sure if it's worth it per se, but... I, yeah, I'm gonna go back and make the, the choice I wanna make. Hope you guys don't mind it too much. I, I wanna make the choice uh, that I... yeah. Man, my stupid fat freaking fingers had to choose the wrong choice. Uh, damn it. First space station is more of a tutorial zone than uh, the first destination. That's what I feel like too. Like, remember, like, like, let's say, like, yeah, yeah, I feel like Heart of Space Station is like the cliffs of, a uh, Mondstadt. Oops, I didn't mean that. It's like the cliffs of Mondstadt. It's like the place you go to, to, like, for the tutorial, but then you never visit again. Are you going to watch the fight, Z <laughs> Okay, we'll just skip ahead. Hey! Is hey! <laughs> Not to say Heart of Space Station is bad or anything, it's just that... I know, but yeah, Bellabock has more of a homey feel. Oh, we were talking. You probably. Oh, right. Uh, what? No. All right, <laughs> come on, take me. I want to go, please. Uh, how old are you again? Like a few months old. <laughs> oh, I remember now. Luca was defending his title once, and Zila was watching in the. There we go. Uh, what? <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Anyway, that's what Luca's like. He forgets about himself once he's in the mood. <laughs> All right. But I trust Luca not to make the same mistake again. So back to the original. Back to suggestion. where we were. Are you good to take her to the fight club, Zila? I don't know why, just Zila, Zila groaning. <laughs> He's just so entertaining to me for some reason. Ugh, fine. <laughs> I'll take you there. That's more like it. The more friends, the merrier. I hope you can get along with my favorite student. Why does Luca always come sneaking back into the <laughs> More. Like this? Quishil. I haven't seen him for a while. Hope he's grown up a bit since then. I hope I'm saying that right. Huh? Hurry and run to the club now. Otherwise, the fight will be over when you get there. Luca's opponents usually don't last long. Yeah. <laughs> Go. Last long in what way? Hmm? In what way? Anyway, see, so yeah, I got Sila here for the mission. Um, Yeah, upgraded Sila. So, yeah, I'm just well and ready to go for this mission. Let's do this. That's it. I give up. <laughs> friends of the under... I mean, I mean, friends of Bellabog. <laughs> the champion of the 1,761st Fighting King Challenge. 30 tournaments, 28 victories. The Boulder King of Fists. Yeah. Luca. Luca. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm well aware. Like, yeah, all the shit we went through in in Benagani, yeah. Uh, you want to know what Mo Quichel means? Yeah, I would like to know. Like, what does that mean? That's like French or something, I think. Yeah, I would like to know what that means. But anyways, yeah. <sighs> Looks like it's over already. Damn, we were too late. Uh oh 
Uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> oh no, he sees us. <laughs> Another title defended. Congrats, Luca. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. She sounds always so annoyed when he's around. Thanks, Sila. And who am I? Oh, it's Trailblazer. I remember you. Yeah. Were you here just to see my fight? <laughs> I'm flattered. I just want a little fight in the cage. What you did was much bigger than that. We. Luca! 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 <laughs> Ugh, the crowd never gets tired, do they? Do you want it outside? It's a bit loud for talking in here. See you next time, everyone. There are sparks yet to fly. Yeah, isn't that what he says in his ultimate? <laughs> Ugh, finally, I think we lost them. Let's chat here. You're popular as ever, champion. <laughs> oh, are you still angry at me over that one time, Zila? I just got a bit carried away. It means Mo Quichelle means my pulse, or in some instances, my darling or sweetheart. Oh, what the fuck? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, wonder what that's insinuating then. Hmm. I adore Hot Wheels, man. Oh yeah, didn't uh, Molly Seeless English VA say like Lucas like sponsored by Hot Wheels or something? <laughs> Honestly, I can I can kind of see it. I can kind of see it. Like, yeah, he's Hot Wheels, man. Uh, so you two had to fight. What are you two talking about? Nothing. Just that thing Chief Oleg mentioned before. It's not like we actually fought two senior members of wildfire duking it out in the fight club that would be bad form the mood was on fire that day yes. but the final match was over in just a few swings everyone wanted more so in the heat of the moment i just <laughs> come on don't hold that against me zila i've always been impressed by you i've wanted to spar with you for ages Ugh, i don't fight for fun stop getting your hopes up anyway now that you've dragged us out here what did you want to talk about? Oh, yes. Uh, so I'm trying to get a plan going. <laughs> a plan going. Man, I really like Luca's VA voice. Like, or yeah, his, his voice performance. It just sounds so fun. Uh, plan? Anything new with me? Mm, not really. It's my personal training plan. I want you to join me in witnessing the next steps in the development of Luca, the Boulder Town fighting champion. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, hold your horses. Chief Oleg wanted us to come and cheer for you. He didn't say anything about becoming your sparring partners. Wait, how, did I read that right? Yeah, I did read that right. <laughs> we haven't got the time. <laughs> you can't hide anything on that face of yours. Oleg already told me that things in the underworld are pretty peaceful now. And even wildfires running out of things to do. Besides, look at this gal. You want in, right? <laughs> this gal. Uh, you got me. Uh, I do have plenty of time. Protagonist at your service. <laughs> uh, that might be the weirdest thing you've ever said. Uh, definitely not the weirdest thing I've ever said. <laughs> so that's a yes, right? <laughs> I knew it. Ugh, there's no stopping you once you've made up your mind. Fine. Since she agreed, count me in too. Great. That's settled then. The training is on Svarog's turf. I heard about your achievements. You probably know that place like the back of your hand, right? Just let me know when you're ready and we can head over together. Okay, why are you fighting there? Seems like an odd sparring location, but all right. Uh, all right. I have a bad feeling about this. Luca always does things on the spur of the moment. He does seem very excited. He does seem very passionate. Too passionate. Either way, it's classic Luca. I'm used to it by now. Hey, yeah, I like a guy with a lot of passion. Still, I mean, so you have a lot of energy as well. Front lines, you can put your life in his hands. There's a dozen of us in Wildfire who are still in his debt, not to mention ordinary underworlders. Ugh, that's a story for another day. I have no idea what he's up to this time. Ugh, we'll just have to wait and see. How about it? Are you ready to head out for the special training? Uh, I might need some prep time. <laughs> Don't stress. I promise this trip will be relaxing and fun. Take your time. Come back when you're ready. 
Hang on, I just want, I just kind of want to take a, <laughs> wait. Uh, actually, nah, I was going to take a, like a, a picture of these two, but I don't think they're like willing to face me. Are they? No, they are. Nah, sure, why not? <laughs> quick picture, quick selfie before we go, just to show the March 7th. Hang on a minute. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just like... <laughs> like, it's like Daniel. The cooler Daniel. <laughs> I don't know why I'm just getting the vibes from this kind of picture. But alright, we're ready to go. Let's do it. How about it? Are you ready to head out for the special training? He kind of reminds me of like Akiko from P3R. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I've seen like the Overcooked stream of like yeah, uh, Molly and uh and uh, Lucas VA. <laughs> it was really really funny. <laughs> Lucas is uh, VA is also quite lucky as well. He got three Kafkas while trying to get an E6 Luca. Really now? Oh my god, that is some <laughs> next level bad luck. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> but okay, let's uh, let's go do some special training, Luca. Fast. Let's do it. Keep up, Zila. Don't fall behind. I don't need you to remind me. Let's go. I'm actually gonna fight. All right. I mean, I got my uh, <laughs> my Nihili team here, so let's go. Oh, I have to use uh, Luca. Okay. You want? You know what? Um. Hmm. Sure, we'll bring in we'll bring in quad nihility. Why, why don't we? We'll bring in the full nihility team here. Yeah, <laughs> Luca and the yeah nihility women. Let's go. Everybody in. This is Svarag's turf. Where to now? Don't worry, just follow me. We need to find a mechanic called Casty first. I fit him up before. This way. Yoki dokes. Oh, I can't change out of him. Okay. Luca, you're finally here. I've been waiting for you for ages. Relax, bro. I'm a man of my word. Mm -hmm. I need to stress out. And these two are... Oh! Miss Sila! Oh. <clears throat> to, to think that two senior wildfire members are uh, concerned with my trivial problems. They just came along to help. Don't mind them. Just tell us exactly what happened. Came along to help, huh? <laughs> oh, okay. This may sound strange, but I'm an amateur mechanic. I, I like collecting scrap in my free time, doing odd jobs, like putting robots together, that sort of thing. B but a few days ago, two of my robots suddenly disappeared. They were my pride and joy. I, I usually leave them in the tent when I head out. E everyone in the settlement knows each other. This has never happened before. S someone must have set their sights on my robots and stolen them while I was gone. I, I just don't know how they managed it. Did they change the programming? Oh, but that's not possible. Oh god, it's wait, are you the same like paranoid person as the in as the one in Clara's quest? Bruh. <laughs> Maybe just they just went for a walk together. Why isn't that possible? Hey, stop kidding around. Can't you tell I have a serious problem on my hands? I see. Two robots. Do you have any clues? Any reasonable guesses? We need to have an opening to start the investigation. Not really. But here's the most mysterious part of all this. One of the machines they stole was a drone. Yeah. I call it Little Fay. Little Fay has an alarm that buzzes nonstop as soon as any unauthorized people get close. It's guaranteed to wake up the entire settlement. But I didn't hear Little Fay's alarm at all. I still can't figure out how that happened. Maybe it stopped working. Maybe it's a true robotics master at the settlement. Trust me, I know the people oh. here. It's extremely unlikely. Huh. <sighs> drone that was supposed to sound an alarm suddenly went silent worth remembering anything else let me think oh there is one other thing but i don't know if it's useful uh, little Fay also has a tracker if it gets too far from big ben big oh, ben uh, big ben is the name of the other robot if there's too much distance between them little Fay will automatically start routing and fly to big ben's location uh, that's all, I suppose. I tried to find clues myself, but I don't know where to start. Mm. This job needs real professionals. Mm-hmm. Cool. We've got this. Don't worry, bro. <laughs> we promise we'll find your robots. Don't you worry, bro. Hey, how can you trust me, Zila? No, oh, I, I didn't mean to skip that. My bad. Hey, how can you be so sure? Right. 
Don't worry, Cassidy. Wildfire's on the case. Yeah. You just rest up here and don't let this ruin your day. What was that all about? You're 100% certain we're gonna find those robots for him? <laughs> no. We're fucked. Slow down, Zila. Listen to my analysis first. It's a big job to steal two robots without anyone noticing, especially when one of them has an alarm. I'm guessing that our thief friend never even took little Faye. Hmm. You mean... I think the thief knew that little Faye had an alarm, so they decided to break it. Uh. But they also knew that Cassidy could fix little Faye and use its tracker function to find Big Ben. The thief must have tossed the broken drone somewhere and only made off with Big Ben. Uh, and you're basing this off of what now? <laughs> hey, why are you both looking at me like that? Say something. <laughs> um, hold on, that sounds sus. You didn't do it, did you? <laughs> sus? Among Us? Dun dun dun. That mean. It does make sense. Uh, what do you think, Zila? <laughs> hold on, that sounds sus. <laughs> so, you agree with my reasoning, right? That's not what I said, no. <laughs> so... You do have a brain somewhere in all that muscle. <laughs> I'm not just biceps and steel, you know. <laughs> well, if you all agree with what I said, let's go prove it. Missing drones are a bit of a regular occurrence down here. Come on, move those legs. Luca, do you often find stuff for other people? Seems like it. Kids always come to me when they lose stuff. <laughs> no wonder. God. Man, this area is so run down. Yep. I don't want to live here. The people living here don't want to either. They've got no other choice. Yeah, I don't think they would live in the cold. They're just they out of their own choice, life, right? right? Yeah. Okay, just a side note. I'm just a real big fan of like the punching characters. That's why I really like Hazo and um, Risley in Genshin. I don't know why. The punching playstyle is just so satisfying for me. I do kind of want to build Luca myself once I do get the materials to do so. so. Even though I have a full array of Nihilated characters, I still want to build Luca. My god. Like, at this point, I'm going to be like a Nihilated only account. Look, look, look at the amount of Nihilated characters I've built. <laughs> I have like freaking four, four of them, which are five stars. And then these guys who are also built. And Luca's like the only one that's not built right now. Yeah, one of these days are gonna run like mono Nihility, <laughs> and it'll be glorious. <laughs> okay, but uh, let's go find Nim robots. Uh, hey, you! Did you? Okay, no, <laughs> that's not it. I thought it would be. Um. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's a drone bot, right? There it oh, is. Look, there's a drone over there. But how can we tell if it's the one Cassidy lost? No, bring it to him. Here, look. Someone deliberately scratched off the paintwork. Didn't even do a good job of it. Oh, you're right. You've got a good eye, Zila. Whoever did it must have been in a hurry. We need to fix this little guy up. Can you lend a hand? Hey, trust me, I'm great at mini games. All right, uh, you go here, you go. Hold on, let me cook. I think I can do this. You go here. Uh, okay, how do I get you to you, though? Okay, that's that, but I need, like, a three-pointer. Hmm. Actually. Ah, there we go. Done! <laughs> the little one can fly again. Uh, I forgot- I forgot these drone bots actually exist until now. Little A, reinitialization complete! Okay, wow, head up. It's a high pitched voice, so I didn't expect that. <laughs> we really found it. Pretty lucky if you ask me. <laughs> Scanning for signal from Big Ben. Oh, listen. That must be the tracking system Cassidy mentioned. Signal not found. Uh. Big Ben is currently too far away from this unit. Tracking function must be enabled. It really does have a tracking function. Let's see how useful it is. Oh, do I gotta... Okay. Uh, activate the tracking function. Hey, it's flying away! Follow it! Follow it! 
It's not flying that fast, honestly. <laughs> it's like it's like flying at running speed. Look, that fellow over there is acting pretty shifty. <gasps> let's kill him. He's got to be the thief we're looking for. Let's go. All right, hey, let's go have a chat hey, with him. Friend. <laughs> hey, ya bud. What? Who's there? Uh. A red ribbon. What? Wildfire. Huh? Uh, how did you? I'm doing just fine. <laughs> Good. No monsters around here. Why don't you uh go bother someone else? Uh, really, really real soft behavior, buddy. <laughs> Shying away from honest work, indulging in petty crime. Of course, you're doing just fine. Uh, I'm not sure this falls under petty crime, Zila. <laughs> that whole robot he's got next to him. Yeah, it's Big Ben, all right. Yeah, see, I told you this guy was the culprit. I, oh, oh, hold on a second. Who told you the name of this robot? Don't tell me it's... That's right, Cassidy sent us here. Hand over what you stole or be prepared to face the fist of a champion. Don't let me fist you, bro. F -f -f Fists of a champion, huh? <sighs> I've come this far. I won't be able to show my face around here if news gets out. Do your worst. Big Ben, let's get him. I don't know why, but this guy sounds like Xander Mobus. <laughs> Going all the way, huh? Enough talk then. Luca, let's get him. <laughs> let's kill his ass. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Here, let me punch some sense into you. Get his ass. All right. Out of it. Bam. All right, then we do this. Manifest. Give it up. You're no match for us. Yeah, you, you're clearly dying there. I can't turn back now. Guts. <laughs> you got guts, oh, and now they're gone. <laughs> Please, all of you, I, I shouldn't have stolen anything. I, I admit. Give me a second chance. <laughs> <laughs> You're admitting defeat. What happened to all that bravado you had a few moments ago? The Multamerville warrior, oh. <laughs> the peerless Boulder champion, upholding justice and peace once again. <laughs> Man, is he always this energetic? <laughs> nice. Our thieving friend surrendered, and Big Ben looks to be in one piece. The first step of the champion's training is complete. All right. Next one of business, we dump this guy's body over the cliff. All right. Goodbye, buddy. <laughs> huh? Why are you two so straight-faced? Can't you look a little happy? <laughs> <laughs> say nothing. The Multum. I, I don't know how to say that. Warrior. Yeah, I was going to ask. What was all that supposed to be? No, oh, that? Nothing, just a slogan. Don't take it too seriously. A slogan? Let's get Big Ben back to Cassidy. <sighs> Fine. Let's finish up here. But I'm gonna put it out there. We're not gonna forget those lines of yours anytime soon. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, please. I've learned my lesson. I I've reset its systems. It won't attack you anymore. Just... Get it out of here. Take it back to its owner. Oh, it can't stay here anymore. What am I going to do? <laughs> well, there's one thing you can do is get out of here <laughs> once and for all. <laughs> I'll just fling you over the cliff. That'll make things everything better. Okay, let's take you back, Big Ben. Can I? There you go. Beep, Holy shit, that's a deep voice. <laughs> Big Ben, this is Big Ben wants to talk with Little Faye. Big Ben wants to play with Cassidy. Big, <laughs> Big Ben is actually corpse. <laughs> Come on, let's go home. Go home. Go home. Nope. Oh, there you. There he goes. Hey, let's let's go, buddy. Can you walk any faster, please? There we are. Oh, God damn it! It's, it's one of those trailing missions I see. Big Ben! Oh, you're back! <laughs> Beep boop. Cassidy. Little Faye. Cassidy. Cassidy. <laughs> I don't know how I can ever thank you, Luca, Sila, and Miss Outsider. I have a name, you know. I can God damn it. Get back on track now. See? I kept my word, right? Wildfire senior members always deliver what we promise. 
I've never doubted you, Luca. I'll remember this forever. <laughs> right? Time to take little Faye and Big Ben for a systems check. Until next time. Yeah, go ahead. We'll catch up later. Ah, oh, that felt great. Such a wholesome feeling to help other people, don't you think? To be honest, I think you could have handled it yourself. Yeah, do, do we really need to be here? You said this was the first step, right? So just how many steps does your training have exactly? Three. Just three steps. Trust me, it won't take too much of your time. Okie dokie. Uh, <laughs> where to next? I thirst for battle! Oh, I care about uh, what I can get, uh... I care more about what I can get as rewards. Ah, uh, the battle! I thirst! <laughs> I like your spirit! Shame I didn't run into you sooner. Let's go! Next, we're gonna clear up all the Fragmentum cronies still left in the settlement. Huh? Fragmentum? Uh. But the settlement... Wasn't affected by Fragmentum, right? You're not wrong. The fissure here only recently opened up. Master Oleg got the intel from our network just yesterday. I asked him to leave this case to me. Perfect for the second step of our training, right? <sighs> like master, like student. <laughs> I admire your attitude. In any case, if this concerns the Fragmentum, then there's no time to lose. Where are the monsters? Lead the way. Where are the monsters? Let me kill them all. <laughs> Follow me. All right. <laughs> Uh, Big Ben sounds like Albert's uh, doing a deep voice, don't you think? I guess it does sound somewhat like Albert, actually. I think so, but it doesn't sound exactly like him, though. But maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe that was uh, Albert's VA doing like Luca, a deep voice. Come clean with me. It. Are you here for some other reason? It's just training for real. For it's real? Like you to be so suspicious, Zila. <laughs> How'd you sell your beef with Svarog? Tell me the juicy details. Well, Ugh, it's a long story. I'll tell you later. I beat the shit out of him. <laughs> story over. Up oh, there, there's our victims. Uh, I can't just switch to Acheron. There's so many of them. Are you sure the fissure only recently opened up? Oh, big boy at the, at the back. Our intel should have been accurate. Seems like Boss Svarog must have let his guard down. These guys are messing up his turf. Enough talk. Let's clean up this area. All right, let's. Can I switch? No, I can't. <laughs> Damn it. It won't let me cheese the on. Oh, God, they see me. Strike first. All right. Let's do this then. Give up. Don't get cocky. Bam. Ill tidings manifest. Man. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm Free coughing. Or what? I'm kind of hoping I could <laughs> cheese this Vacaron, honestly. Well, it appears my cheesing oh, days God. are, uh. have come Destiny to an end. Well Alright, go get him, Vacaron. It too shall fall. Yeah, they purposely did not let me switch to C Lug, because otherwise it's beefed. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be uh, too easy for me. All right, come, come and get me. I didn't mean that like that. God damn it! I meant to dodge this attack. Now. Step out of it. Bam. Destiny is apparent. Ill tidings manifest. Another journey begins. Uh, you want? Yeah, burst time. here. Time to say bye. Don't want to take any more damage here. Boom. With his Lycone, will still count as a debuff for Akron. Yeah, I'm well aware of that. Oh, come on, I was winding up my technique. God damn it. Now we're talking. Alright. You fools Where's that for it. Where's the applause? Let's see some sparks fly. Bam! I really like that fucking ultimate, by the way. It's just. Stand still. Really cool looking. <laughs> Boom. Alright. Deceased. Okay, okay. Uh, anything this way? Nope, just a dead robot and you. All right, big boss time. Oh, no wonder these minions are so active. There's a big fella hiding behind them. <laughs> so this guy is the source of it all, right? If we take him out, the fragmentum activity in this area should subside for a while. And trial two will be complete. <laughs> That's right. What's up? 
Starting to get into it, Zila. <laughs> it's been too long since I had a good workout. This will be a nice warm up. Hey, see, Zila, you, now you're enjoying it. All right. We'll charge in once you're ready. Well, up uh, he said once I'm ready. You <laughs> just went in immediately, but all right. <laughs> Memories are okay. I have like zero sustains here, so I really got a perfect miss. <laughs> so let's hopefully I don't get too wrecked here. Say bye to breathing. Nice. Go, Akron. Bam, bam, ha, bam. Nearly there. It's not gonna last much longer. I'll deal the final blow. Nope, the DOTs will. <laughs> That was a tough one. Good teamwork, guys. Luca, is that everything? Uh. The Multamerville Warrior. Oh god, not again. The peerless boulder champion. No. <laughs> Defeater of evil throughout the world. Oh, that's a new line. <laughs> you <laughs> are you okay? Is this some kind of performance art? Defeater of evil throughout the world. Ugh, don't copy him. <laughs> Seriously, why are you so hyped up today? <laughs> it's just a normal victory celebration. Don't need to be so alarmed. You call that normal? I might have let it slide if it was in the cage. On second thought, no. That was cringe even by Fight Club standards. <laughs> Damn, Luca, you got called cringe by Sila. <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't get so worked up, Zila. I'm thinking clearly. Plus, didn't we just get rid of another major threat to the underworld? Like, come on, man. Let the man have to have his fun. True, but quit changing the subject. This new routine of yours is just... <laughs> <laughs> ah, don't worry. I promise you, it'll only last till the end of my training. Actually, have I been making too many promises today? That's not a good habit. Anyway... There's only one more step in my training plan. Come on, guys, help me wrap it up. Ugh, I guess we're in too deep. Better let it run its course. So tell us, what else is on the schedule? The final step in this training what? is to challenge Boss Svalrog. Are you fucking good, Luca? Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> so I've, I've been going along with this for, for quite a while because I quite like you, Luca, but what the fuck? <laughs> Fighting Svalrog? Are you shitting me? Oh boy. Noise, come in! <laughs> Let's do it! Are you sure you're thinking clearly? Whoa, whoa, stay cool, Zila. <laughs> like I said, I'm thinking clearly. Every word I said is serious. <laughs> Why do I feel like among the three of us, we just share like five brain cells? <laughs> I set this as the final goal of my training a few days ago. Think about it. Is there any underworld opponent worth challenging more than Boss Sparog? Oh no, I can't agree to this. You're asking for trouble. Forget about winning or losing. The relationship between Wildfire and Svarog only just got patched up. I'm not gonna rile him up. Don't make this more complicated than it is. I'm just inviting him to have a fair fight with me. <laughs> like how you'd have in the cage. Are you mad? Svarog is a robot. He doesn't understand the rules of the cage. He's different from us. His fists are made of steel. Oh, but so is mine. <laughs> nah, that means we're evenly matched, right? Yeah, I fucking knew it. <laughs> you know what I mean. Don't act smart with me. You don't make any sense. Yeah, I feel like Luca and Seal have like a brother sister relationship. <laughs> I feel like Luca's the annoying brother, and Seal's like the older sister who has to like clean up his shit. <laughs> I understand what you're saying, Zila. But you know, I'm a fighter. It's my duty to keep training and get stronger. I'm a fighter. That means I gotta fucking beat people up. <laughs> I, I can't I can't stay away from it. It's a terrible feeling to have a powerful opponent in your head, but never be able to get close to him. It's all thanks to your patching things up with Svarog that I'm able to have this opportunity now. <laughs> I'm not gonna miss it for the world. It's all thanks to you making things up with Svarog that I finally get the chance to beat the shit out of him. Let's go! <sighs> Let him do it, Zila. Svarog might go easy because we're here. Hey, let him cook, Zila. Let him cook. All right, fine. We'll go find Svarog and have a nice chat with him. Let me say this first. If he doesn't want to deal with you as a challenger, then we're getting out of there ASAP. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll convince him. But you're right. 
If he's not in the mood for it, then I won't force him. I haven't really worked with Boss Falrog before, so please, lead the way. Let's go. Okay, day. I still think this is a bad idea, but you do you, Luca. Oh, I can't teleport to these. Never mind. I thought they would teleport points. Okay, find Spadog per Luca's wishes. I am going the wrong way. Luca, you. <laughs> hmm? What's up? Never mind. I get the feeling I'm wasting my breath. <laughs> Luca, you're an absolute dumbass. <laughs> I just I just want to make sure you know that. <laughs> Have you talked to Oleg about going to see Svarog? <laughs> That's all you want to ask? I don't necessarily tell Master Oleg everything, you know. <sighs> <laughs> I can feel the annoyance from here. I can feel the annoyance to the screen that Sila has right now. <laughs> Wait, why am I going this way? Right, Svarg is here. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Thank God Clara's not around, because we're about to beat your ass, big man. The Trailblazer, Zila of Wildfire, and... Hey! In honor to meet you, Boss Svarg, I'm Luca, a senior member of Wildfire, just like Zila. Also, yeah, how's Clara going to feel about this? I don't think Clara wants to see Svarg fight. <laughs> Accessing backend database. Querying. Query complete. Luca, born in Maltamerville, winner of the 28th Boulder Town Fight King Challenge, beloved <laughs> student of Oleg, Holy and shit. chief of wildfire. <laughs> Here's his address. <laughs> he just DDoSes him. <laughs> oh, wow, impressive. <laughs> Thank you for saving me the self introduction. Luca of Wildfire, what is the purpose of your visit? Straight to the point, just the way I like it. I'm here to challenge you, Boss Svarog. Oh, boy. <laughs> challenge. Yep. Intent unclear. Outsider, Zila of Wildfire, can you provide an explanation? Uh, not really. I think he might have hit his head. Just accept. <laughs> yeah, just, just accept. Hey, why are you fanning the flames? <laughs> He's the one who came up with this idea. It's up to you to accept it or not, Svarog. Yep, it's not that complicated. I just want to go a few rounds with the one everyone agrees is the most powerful in the underworld and see where I stand. What do you say? Are you interested? <laughs> no, go away. <laughs> mm. Evaluating. Oh boy. Intention unclear. Enmity level zero. Lie detection passed. Evaluation completed. The opposing party only came to spar. Uh, yeah. I agree to fight you. What? Luca of Wildfire. Uh, what? Why? Huh? Uh huh? Hold oh. On. You agree? If weapons and gun barrels are unused for prolonged periods of oh, time, shit. <laughs> the risk of rust damages increases. Periodic use will reduce such risk and extend the life of these components. Y you okay this, Luca? He's gonna fucking shoot us. <laughs> I don't have bullet holes in my fucking chest, please. <laughs> what? That's the worst excuse I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you I could convince him. You could be a referee, Zila. You know the rules of the club, inside out. I... <laughs> See, let's just so fucking dumbfounded. <laughs> like, that was surprisingly easy for fucking a guy like Svarog. <laughs> Once again, like, there's like only five brain cells between these three, and I feel like all five of them go to Sila. <laughs> we just have zero. Fine, I get it. If you insist. Competitors, take up positions. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, shit, let's do this. Oh, actually, um, I'm here. <laughs> Yay, go Luca! I really can't tell whose side you're on. Hang on, I wanna, I wanna read what Sila says. Wait, go Svar- wait, what? Stell, who the fuck are you cheering for? Go Luca! Go Svarag! Hey, you're supposed to be on my side, come on now. I mean, you're me. Oh wait, yeah, I'm gonna ro go run for the duel. Sorry Svarag, got an errand to run, see ya! <laughs> on second thoughts, I prefer not to get shot. Okay, nah. Let's do this. I'm ready, Svalrog. We can start any time. <laughs> I, too, have a question, Luca of Wildfire. 
How did you acquire your mechanical arm? Oh yeah, I do want to know about that. <laughs> I'm honored to be one of the things in the underworld that even you don't know about. This arm? Well, it's not that exciting. It's all because I got distracted in a defense campaign. I can't even remember the date of that fight. More importantly, it was only after losing my arm that I found the meaning of life. Hmm. What it really feels like to be alive. That's why I'm standing here right now, to feel alive. And also for everyone who put their hope and faith in me. Excellent answer. <laughs> I will treat this challenge seriously. Luca of Wildfire. In the blue corner, Svarog from the Robot Settlement. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Prepare to feel my missile bombardments. You know, maybe this was a bad idea, Luca. <laughs> ready. In the red corner, Luca from Multamerville. Are you ready? <laughs> Whenever you are. Okay. This is a no holds barred contest. Oh boy. One round only. Victory will be declared when one contestant submits, or the fight is stopped by the referee. All right. Fight. Let's do this. Let's see some sparks fly. Oh god. Ah shit. Wait, it's actually a one on one. Wait, fuck! I don't get to bring my characters. Ah shit. Oh shit. Getting started. Hey, but at least we get to hear fucking Sparg's fucking battle theme again. Oh, Hoyo, you gotta put these fucking tracks in the Simi universe or something. I miss hearing this track. Alright, let's do this, Sparg. Finally, an opponent that can take the punch's head on. Uh, <laughs> I might fail this. Oh god. <laughs> Luca. How about this? I think you're in way over your head here. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, not sure I'm gonna survive this. Where's the applause? Alright. An opponent worth their salt. <laughs> Let's see Go Luke, I believe in you! Uh, 90% and <laughs> I think Luke is gonna lose this one. <laughs> Need a hand? My Bam! Uh, okay, good damage. Good bleed damage. Oh shit. Uh, it's not fair, buddy. Get two turns. Nah. <laughs> not bad. Red contestant down. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Uh. No way. Oh shit. Way from tapping out. Let's go. Revive through sheer will. <laughs> Luca, man too angry to die. Let's fucking go. Sixty percent. Fifty percent. Hey, that's not fair. Hey. It's fine. This is supposed to be a one on one, buddy. That, that, that ain't fair. Yo, hey. Executing operation. Hey, it's fine. We can still talk about this, right? We can still talk about this. Ah, shit. I don't want this thing exploding on me. Get cocky now. Duh. Where's the applause? Uh, shit. Both these things can kill me. I'm getting rid of the hand. An opponent worth their salt. <laughs> Let's see some sparks fly. Boom. It did fucking nothing. Ah, shit. The winner has been decided. No! Let's end it here. No. It's not over. <laughs> I must show you. Oh, he's powering up. Back in the Revive through sheer will again. Oh god. Not again. <laughs> I could take you one arm only. Okay, you want uh shoot, should I go? I think I should go off as far only. I don't think hitting the hand really matters. Sure. Worth their Let's go. <laughs> Let's see some sparks fly. Boom! 90k! Holy shit! Luca of Wildfire. I will remember this fight. Okay. I will remember you when you die. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. But it's not over. Oh, he has a shield up. Uh oh. Ah, shit. Uh, it is over, I think. Uh, yeah, there's no way I was gonna win that one on one. I'm sorry, Luca. Luca of Wildfire. 
It does not matter why you came here. I acknowledge your strength. <laughs> your performance was enough to make me reevaluate the limits of humanity. Yeah, holy fuck. Luca was the whole last anime protagonist there. Like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be his so lost, but still. Fucking revive through sheer will. <laughs> <laughs> That's really. Yeah. Uh, oh god. And that's how Luca died. <laughs> hey, Luca. Oh boy. Luca, can you hear me? Yep, I, I fucking knew we would end up in Natasha's. <laughs> oh, what's this guitar right now? Well, oh, this is a nice this is a nice track. <laughs> yeah, boom, hospitalized. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Up. Man, this guitar though. It's very calming. I... You're finally awake. You've been out for the whole day. <laughs> we were really worried. How the fuck did you survive a fucking bombardment? Holy shit. Don't worry, Zila. Like I said, it was just the exhaustion. Svarog was deliberately holding back. Zila... <laughs> and... Nat? I'm in... the clinic? Where else? You think we'd leave you on Svarog's turf? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you all. I feel much better now. Sorry, Nat. I must have wasted your time. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Luca. Still, whatever your motivation was, <laughs> I hope you can find a different outlet for it. Yeah, maybe don't challenge the robot one-on-one. -on -one. That's just a bit unfair. He gets two turns and you only get one. It's really unfair. Uh, I'm not going to let you off the hook that easy. There's more to this story. You need to explain what the heck got into you today. Sparg hit pretty hard. That victory slogan of yours. Why do you insist on fighting Sparg? <sighs> That's on me too. I should have refused him straight away. I had a bad feeling from the start. <laughs> the, power, the power of Hot Wheels protected this man. <laughs> <laughs> You're always so serious. I've said it before. This is my trip. <laughs> oh god, he's coughing blood. Oh. <laughs> oh, slow down. You haven't completely recovered. Zila, don't pressure him. Let him rest. <sighs> Thanks, Nat. But I'm almost recovered. <laughs> Luca, you're internally bleeding from the fucking shots Far gave you. You're not. You need to rest. <laughs> I have some things to do. <laughs> man, too fucking man, too passionate to fucking die. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, where do you think you're? Let him go, Zila. I really don't get him. <laughs> Bro's just being a bit of a wee. <laughs> I don't get it, the whole thing either. Maybe he has his reasons. Yeah, bro's just being a bit of a weeb. <laughs> Why? Is, how is this an actual line in the game? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> if his other armor was blown off, he probably could have walked it off. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe bro was just looking for a second robotic arm. Who knows? <laughs> Bro is just being a bit of a weeb. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, you'll understand our lingo one day says. If he never intended to explain anything to us, why did he drag us along? No, this is too weird. I'm gonna follow him and see what he's up to. Is that really necessary? Keep me updated. Of course. You're not too busy these days, right? I'll give you a shout if I need help. Luca didn't used to be like this. I, I just can't let it go. If you must, Zila, try not to worry. Mm. I don't want to see you two fighting. Don't worry, Nat. Now that they've left, I have a favor to ask you. <laughs> go, go find Luca's bitch ass and bring him back here. It's easy for Luca to get ahead of himself sometimes, but I've never seen him this headstrong. <sighs> it does make me wonder. Could you ask Oleg how Luca's been recently? 
I haven't seen much of him lately. It's hard for me to get the full picture. Since you asked, I was just planning on doing that. Thank you. Regardless of what's really going on, I hope none of you let small things get in the way of your friendship. See you. <laughs> uh, I really do get the whole, like, childhood friend vibes from, like, Luca and Cielo. It really does, like, feel like they, yeah, they've been, like, friends for a good, good while. Wouldn't surprise me if they were, like, childhood friends. Okay, let's go ask uh, Granddaddy of Oleg here to, <laughs> for, uh, yeah, see what fucking Svara, that Svara, uh, Luca's up to. Where you find people. Uh, I want to ask you some things about Luca. Oh, my student. Did something happen recently? I was wondering why he didn't come to see me after the championship match ended. Come, tell me about it. Yeah, see, so he almost died to Svarag. <laughs> it's all everything that's happened with Luke and Sila. Hmm, that does sound a little strange. Hmm. Luca usually doesn't push himself so far. Huh, he may be a tough guy on the surface, but he's got his secrets. Did he tell you about the origins of his mechanical arm? Not specifically? He mentioned something before he fought Svarog. Ah, then he probably didn't describe the scene in detail. Yeah. That was six, seven years ago. I was patrolling with some comrades in the neighboring town of Multamerville. We passed an ordinary mechanics shop. There was a serious looking fella looking after the shop. He was probably a few years younger than me, but his hair and beard were white as snow. Hmm. There was a young lad doing odd jobs. He looked pretty exhausted. Anyway, I convinced the shopkeeper to let him come with me. Luca was a fast learner. At first, I couldn't figure out if he liked what I was teaching him. Fighting, weapons, strategy, etc. He didn't talk a lot, just kept his head down. Hmm. Wait, hang on. Oh. Wait, no. I, no, Luke, Luca would have had a beer and, and no, no, that's not it. Was a young lad doing odd jobs look pretty exhausted? Okay. Then, about a year after I took him in, Luca lost one of his arms while rescuing townsfolk from the Fragmentum in Multamerville. Oh. He almost didn't make it. He was unconscious for two or three days. I sat next to his bed, anxious and guilty. Guess what he said to me after he woke up? Go on. Master, I feel great. Uh. He had bandages all over his body. Most of his wounds hadn't healed yet. But it was the first time he'd ever smiled at me. I still remember that expression. And the moral of the story is? I guess that kind of sums him up, huh? <laughs> Can't tell from looking at him, right? What I'm trying to say is Luca views other people's lives as more important than his own. That's how he's always been. So when he says stuff like, this is for training, that's probably a lie. Hmm. He's hiding something from you, all right? Anyway, I'm too old to be getting involved in this stuff. <laughs> I'm sure you and Zila can sort this by yourselves. One thing I will ask, please try not to embarrass him too much, okay? He's the fighting champion of Boulder Town, after all. An idol for all the children. He needs to keep up that image. <laughs> Will do. Hey, speaking of Sila. <laughs> you there? I found Luca. He's on his way to Rave Town alone. Want to go together? I'm coming. We'll make it if we run. I'm waiting for you at the intersection. Come quick. You gotcha. The wind blew you this way. Okay, I thought you would say something else. All right, let's go. Hmm. So, man f said he felt great after losing an arm. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? Or, yeah, why? He, like, why is he saying that shit like that? Hmm. Have you heard their team voice lines together? Oh, yeah, Luke and Sela? Yeah, I have. <laughs> like, Sela goes, ugh, him? And meanwhile, like, Luca goes like, oh, yeah, Sela, <laughs> we're gonna win for sure. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah, I, I have heard, I've heard their, like, voice lines with each other before. 
Oh, you're here. Come on. He wasn't in a hurry, so we should be able to catch up easy enough. All right, let's go. Hmm. Look, there he is. Yep. Oh, sneaking mission. Let's follow him. Stay quiet. Oh shit, we are we are on a self mission. Uh the gameplay pop will appear on the top of the screen. Uh please select the target or keep the target you're trailing within your line of sight. After your target has left your screen for a certain amount of time, you have lost the target. The mission will be considered fail when the prompt count reach zero. Okay. Uh, performing actions will make it easy for the target to discover you, such as running, sprinting, will increase the alert value. The louder your actions are, the faster the alert value will increase. When the alert gauge is full, the mission will be considered as a failure. Okay. Uh, okay, then these are like the hiding spots. So it's, like, it's kind of like the judgment style of like trailing. If for any of you that played like the judgment games. Uh, alert gauge will decrease once you maneuver out of the target's line of sight. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, actual oh, self mission. Let's go. Goodness, we didn't lose him. Quick, let's keep up the chase. This doesn't Do feel right. Hide. Hey, let's hide for a bit. <laughs> he definitely saw me. There's no way he didn't. Da -da. He he can totally see me through between the fucking trash cans. If he just turned around right now, there's no way he wouldn't notice. Going. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, was that me? Nope. Okay. I'm assuming. Hmm. I wonder if there's a different ending if, like, if you do get caught. This doesn't feel right. Oh. Hey, let's hide for a bit. Hide it. Good. Oh God, is he onto me? Uh, fuck! What the fuck? What are you doing here? <laughs> Wait, that's a hook. What's she doing here? The heck? And we're done with requests. The moles are everywhere. So Hook was a mastermind behind all of this. Ugh, I can't tell if you're joking. <laughs> Lucas should tell her to go back to town. He's always worrying after the kid's safety. I'll see. What the fuck is is Hook doing here? This is a dangerous place. We've come this far. We can't let this kid ruin everything. She's coming this way. Uh oh. Oh no. Uh. 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 Oh, she knows. Uh. <laughs> wow, honorary member, Miss Zibel. <laughs> Be quiet. You almost exposed us. Up, oh, Shadow Kid. Um, why are you sneaking around like this? <laughs> quiet. What's your hiding? We're looking for you. We're stuck. <laughs> We're stuck. Hey! <laughs> We're gonna lose him if we don't hurry. Hook, run back to town. Stop hanging around here. Uh, okay. That's what Lucas said, too. <laughs> I hope you two find the treasure. Yeah, sure, treasure. That's what we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> None of my hook was here. Ah. Quick, let's keep up the chase. Nope. No, 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 no. You, you don't see it. How do you see down these stairs? You don't see nothing, Luca. You don't see anything. Hide. Nope. Nobody's trailing you, Luca. You're... Oh, God. He's on alert. <gasps> he's running. Get his ass. This doesn't <gasps> feel right. Hey, let's hide for a bit. Luca, my boy, where are you going? Uh... Dun, 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 dun. This doesn't feel right. Hey, let's hide for a bit. I know, I know. Don't worry, see, I got this. He's headed for the orphanage. Hmm. Hide. All right, he goes. He's got nowhere to go. Ah. Right. Hey, let's hide for a bit. Nope, you don't see a thing. You don't hear footsteps at all. <gasps> no, 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 no. Hey, I still see him, game. You don't need to fucking worry about a ting. Oh, there we go. Oh, he fucking knows. Wait, what's that box? <laughs> we're not being, we're not hiding at all. This is just, 
<laughs> We're fucking sticking out like a sore thumb right now. Did he put something down? Let's go have a look. Toki Doki. Where'd he go anyways? Where, where is Luca? Where'd he, where'd he go off to? Hmm. What just in you? A case? I... For some reason, I feel like... We shouldn't open it? We come this far, let's open it up. Yeah, you're right. I wonder what's in there. Here, let me open it. Is this a... notebook? Oh. It looks like a kid's handwriting and some scribbled art. Have a look. Hmm. Mr. Luca. Hello. Aw. <laughs> Who drew this? This looks adorable. See the little crown sticker and everything. My name is Marge, and I'm from Wolf's Hammerville, too. I'm a big fan of yours. I've been sick since I was a baby, but I still dream of becoming a big star in the cage one day. Just like you. It's a bit embarrassing, but I wanted my dad to give you this notebook. I wanted to tell you that you've inspired me to keep working hard and achieve my goals. Uh -huh. If it's hard to reach, when I become a fighter as awesome as you, I'm going to do my best to help people in the underworld. I want to team up with my friends and help everyone together so they can smile again. I'll listen to their thanks and then yell out my winning slogan. Oh. The most terrible warrior, the peerless boulder champion. Oh, that's why he's been screaming that out. Upholding justice and peace once again. Oh. Then I want to chase away all the bad things hurting everyone. I'll go with my friends and clear out all the scary monsters. I'll make the underworld safe, and then yell out my other winning slogan. <laughs> the Molt Hammerville Warrior, the Peerless Boulder Champion, <laughs> Defeater of Evil Throughout the World. <sighs> Lastly, I want to make my better Oh, underworld. what? Oh, it's, it was her dream to fight Sparag one-on-one. -on -one. No wonder. Who keeps stopping us from going back to the overworld. So I'm gonna challenge that big robot <laughs> and show him what I can do as a champion fighter. But Sparog is too strong. We'll never win. My friends are gonna all wanna back out when they hear about this. But I know I have to be an example for everyone. <laughs> I need to stick my neck out and go challenge Sparog on my own. Bam! Crap! Boom! It's gonna be such an epic fight. <laughs> and then we'll reach a draw. And neither of us will be able to win. I gotta appreciate the way the, the kid also drew Sparag here. <laughs> just one giant red dot and a, just a giant code. <laughs> but Sparag will acknowledge my strength and be willing to listen to the Underworlders. So, it'll be a happy ending. My friends will clap and all the people suffering will be free. Aww. But all that is just my dream. I don't know how long it's gonna be till it becomes reality. I'm lying in bed sick right now. Nah. Uh. But as long as Mr. Luca is around, I won't be scared. I remember everything you said to encourage me. Before becoming a champion, I want to defeat this illness first. Then I need to learn how to stand, walk, and exercise again. Until I achieve all my dreams, I hope. Uh, no, I believe Mr. Luca will support me till the end. Right? Oh, so that's why. I hope this kid's still alive. Uh. Oh, Luca. I think I get it now. Yep. Maybe we should 
forget about all this. What do you say? I agree. I kind of want to talk to him about it, though. Hmm. Hmm. Me too. But maybe we should give him some time. Let's head back to town for today. Good night, Margie. Oh, no, they... Oh. Damn. This haven of memories. Mall Kushil. Every touch. Every moment. Hey, Luke can get Visitor Express now. <laughs> All that remains is pure white ash. Damn. Okay, you guys, you guys aren't wrong. God, yeah, this quest is really sad. I, I, yeah, I just only have to assume that the kid passed away. Damn. And then Luca wants to, right, like live out, uh, her dreams for her. Ah, look at such a sweetheart, man. If anything, yeah, it just makes makes me appreciate him all the more. Uh, goddamn. Anyway, <laughs> Oleg's still here though. I, I kind of wish we could talk to Luca about it though. Actually, maybe this like a post, um, like post text uh, after we complete the quest here. Hang on, let me like TP somewhere and then maybe, maybe uh, we'll get text here. Nope, nothing. Back to Polycar. Oh, because there's usually like post text, like after you do a quest. I, I guess it's none of that this time. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm aware why. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's called my sweetheart. That is, that is, yeah. Uh, yep, it's official, guys. I'm gonna go build Luca. <laughs> I'm gonna build Luca as the last member of my Nia League team. Yep, don't you worry about that. I'll complete the Nia League collection. <laughs> I'll raise him all the way to the highest, and I'll probably get a light cone for him as well. <laughs> it's official. I'm gonna build him now after that quest. You can talk to him about it at the Fight Club. Oh, right, right, because he does appear there. I almost forgot about that. Uh, you want... Uh, yeah, let's go talk to him, actually. I mean, I know he's right there in the car, but I want to talk to him in the fight club first. This haven of yeah, let's l let's go to him. Every touch, every moment is like a thorn. Uh, there he is. Hey, hey. No matter how busy one is, there's always time to train. Uh, I don't fight for free, and I have no interest in bullying someone who's injured. <laughs> Huh, there's some scratches. I'll be alive and kicking again in a few minutes. It's a shame you're not in the news bar. Fine, let's fight next time. No excuses. We can have a chat. Chat? Sure thing. You can get to chat with a great hero every day. Uh, your trial was special. I think that's it. Ah, you mean the match between me and Sfarag? It was special indeed. That match had a lot of meaning to me. It's such a shame I didn't win the fight. Or at least... Tied. I promised Margie that... Nah, never mind. Sparks is an awesome fighter, indeed. I guess I have to work hard if I want to best him. The strongest fighter. Ah. Uh. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about it. Hmm. I mean, fair enough. Oh yeah, Celos here too. I wonder if I can talk to her about it. Yeah, there she is. The underworld yearns for freedom. Uh, can chat, Sila? Uh, you know what, Branya? Okay, no, it's just the same thing as Branya. <laughs> Nothing about Luca, it seems. I can totally see him being a good boxer in a modern AU, inspiring the kids. Yeah, I can only, I can totally see that too. Coincidentally, his Japanese VA is also a singer for Unstars. I someone made an AMV of him being an idol. Oh God, <laughs> I gotta check that out after the stream. Man, that sounds like a fun video. <laughs> okay, but with that, we are officially done with, uh, yeah, Luca and Sila's quests. Oh my god, that, that might be the saddest one we played so far. Man. If that's how that one is, I can only imagine how emotional the other ones are gonna be. Like the ones on the, on the Law of Foo. And yep, and I believe that we are officially done with every single of the Yurilo 6, um, companionship missions. 
I believe so. I mean, yeah, there is the epilogue of Clara's to look forward to, but uh, we have to tackle that in a different stream. And now it's the beginning of yeah, the, the La Fu quests. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next one we're gonna do is uh, Lorcha's, and from what you guys told me, it's a very funny one. And I, I know for sure I need some, <laughs> I need some funniness after, man, that sadness I just experienced. Uh, so yeah, which one is uh, Lorcha's? Hang on. Uh, Sage of Lafu. A Night Stranger. There we go. Yeah, we'll navigate this one. Okay, but yeah, we will begin Watch Us in a bit here after we go talk to Luca in the car here. Um, where is he? Wait, Clara? Wait, what? Oh, shoot. Did I miss my chance to talk to Luca? Damn. The Express really does fly up in the sky. We must be really high up here, Oh, right. right? Hmm. Much higher than Mr. Sparrow's shoulders. I forgot to... Yeah, that's one thing I forgot to do. I forgot to talk to Clara in the Express before doing the next quest. I feel like I'm dreaming. It's not dream. Pretty awesome, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like a movie. Uh, actually, I've never seen a movie with views like this before. Next time, I'll have to convince Mr. Sparrow to come along. Can a big robot like that even fit through the doors? <laughs> Seems like the express very much. I love it. Thank you for bringing me along. <laughs> nah, no problem, Clara. Uh, you want? Yeah, let me back out of here and go back in to see if uh, Luca spawns. Uh, nope. So Clara. Okay, shit. I guess I may have to wait for a different opportunity for Luca to appear. Then, what if I change planets? Uh, nope, so Clara. Okay, well, I guess I missed my chance to talk to Luca in that case. Damn it. Oh, well. But alrighty. I guess, yeah, I'll talk to him the, the, the next opportunity I get. Damn, though. <laughs> yep, this guest book is uh, getting really filled out. Holy shit, 19 visitors now. And with Lorchas, uh, we should probably get up to 20. Okay, how long do we have now? Uh, two hours. Okay, I think two hours is enough to knock out maybe like two more companionship quests. I don't know, but yeah, we'll, we'll see you with uh, Lorchas here in a second. But alrighty, guys. Next up, yeah, we're gonna do Lorchas' uh, story quests. You guys told me it's absolutely hilarious, and I <laughs> can't wait to see why, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and begin that now, and begin the star of the uh, the Sienjo Lafu quests. Uh, so okay, what's the order here? I just want to check real quick before we. So it's Lochas, Yanchings, uh, Bailus. That's it for Act One. It's okay. This is after we beat the deer. Can I go back? Game, game. Uh. What the fuck? Uh, okay. Honkai Sarai just crashed on me. Why? How? Huh? What the hell? Uh, fellas, is everything alright? Um, the, the game crashed for some reason. After I tried to look at the quests. What the heck? Man, I... What? How the heck did that happen? You know haven of what the What in the actual heck? Every touch okay, let me go check the freaking um, like quest again. So yeah, this attribute to the deer, so it's like... Okay, yeah, I don't know what happened. The game just randomly crashed, but oh well. Uh, so yeah, Lorcha, Yanching, Bai Lu. I, I've heard you guys said uh, doing Yanching's quest also involves Jing Liu, which I'm kind of looking forward to because I basically know nothing about her. Uh, okay, Yukong and Welts, which I believe I've kind of started a bit. Kafka's as well, which I read the text message for. And then also, yeah, uh, in Bible Lune, uh, March and... Uh, Fushuan, and then the High Clock Quintet, which is like the last one we have to do. Okay, so not that many left. Not that uh, many left, so... Yeah, let's go and get started with the Sienjo quest once and for all here. Beginning with uh, Lorchos. 
Okay. I really wonder how funny this quest is going to be. Yeah, since you guys keep keep hyping it up, <laughs> I'm really excited to see what's uh, going to happen here. Let us begin. Okay, let me read the description just to see here. After the Celeron Crisis outbreak, the six commissions were busy as a bee trying to find the perpetrator in vain. Officer Dao Ho... Uh, Dahao uh, of the Realm Keeping Commission requested support from the Astro Express to identify suspects. Sounds like another bottom case. However, as a nameless, you should lend a helping hand as much as you can. Go talk to him. Okay. Right, and yeah, L Lorcha did appear with Jing Liu in the like the post credit scene of a. Uh, <laughs> at the Lafu quest, so I'm guessing it's like the aftermath or like the, the beforehand, the, pre the precursor to that. Okay, so let's begin. Oh, well, <laughs> March here. I'm here to help with the investigation. Oh, so you are. And these would be Miss March 7th and Mr. Yang, I presume. <laughs> That's right. I'm the first one. He's the second. We're here to help. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm kind of glad we get a quest with these guys now. <laughs> because basically all the Trailblazer missions so far, we've just been alone, haven't we? March, try not to sound too excited. <laughs> We're here for work, remember? Oh, you're the one getting excited. Oh, my first detective case. Finally, my intelligence and wisdom have a chance to shine. <laughs> what intelligence and wisdom? <laughs> Where? What? What intelligence and wisdom do you speak of, March? Miss March, Mr. Yang, I've been looking forward to meeting you. Make yourselves comfortable. It, one moment, please. Jing Yan, give me the photos. I thought that's Jing Yuan. That's Jing Yan. So many completely different. Coming, coming. Stop yelling. Who the fuck? After all, Jing Yan hurries over with a scroll. Thanks for waiting. Oh, it's These a girl. Are the outworld uh, travelers who were sighted in the location specified by the general and the master diviner. This was two days before the Ambrosial Arbor came back to life. We'd like you to take a look. Do you recognize any of them as a threat? Let me take a look. Hmm, so these are the suspects. Uh huh. Hmm. <laughs> I see. I see. I don't get it at all. Hmm. Also, right, we haven't canonically met Lorcha yet, have we? Yeah, only Don Hung has met him. Uh, also, well, what's, what's that face? <gasps> Wait. What's wrong, Mr. Yang? See anything fishy? Wait. <laughs> what's that? Right. Because Lorcha is Otto's XP. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did you just get flashbacks to fucking Honkai 3rd? This man has PTSD. Holy shit. <laughs> Who's he? I'd like to see more information on him. Which one? L let me see. Uh, what's wrong, Miss Yang? See anything fishy? Is one of them a threat? Let's go kick some butt so we can get back to resting. Resting? <laughs> I don't have any concrete evidence, but I think he's worth checking out. Let's just say he reminds me of a, of a threat from my, y y just a hunch. Oh, him? I remember him. He's a traveling merchant. He trades throughout the universe. Knows a thing or two about remedial arts too. He registered himself on the Xianzhou as, uh, what was it again? Locha. His name is Locha. Locha. That's right, Locha. He came to the Sienjo with a huge box this time, so yeah. sort of funerary contraption. Yeah. A funny name, something to do with coughing. It was pretty conspicuous. I had to ask him about it. It is no one suspicious that this guy just lugs a coffin around. A coffin. It's a tool that certain non Sienjo travelers oh. seem to use in death rites. I'm guessing our guests here might recognize it. Right, because the fucking Sienjo people are basically immortal. <laughs> <laughs> I swear he said coughing. Anyway, we checked him out. His record on the Sienjo is squeaky clean. As for this caffeine thing... A fucking... It's coffin! It's not that horrible a word to say. Coffin. Yeah, yeah. Either way, it definitely had something to do with funerals. There are lots of travelers on the Lafu. Each with their own star system and death rites. 
I guess that must be Loach's line of work. Is there something up with him? Not necessarily. <laughs> but I have my reasons for wanting to investigate. What was he doing in the days leading up to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection? Hmm. That's complicated. Come with me to the four square mirror. It'll be easier to explain. Exalting <laughs> Sanctum is one of the Lafu's crucial central cities. The higher ups are very concerned about security issues here. Man, That's you. Why there are so many Psychrains stationed in the area. Man, you know they put those flashback in for like fan service for the Honkai Third fans. You just fucking know. <laughs> yep, Auto Apocalypse. Yeah, that's his name. And I'm pretty sure he's like one of the major antagonists of a uh, Honkai Third. If I'm right, correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, you, you know I basically know next to nothing about Honkai Third. <laughs> Lacha arrived on the Lafu a few days prior to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Up until the day before the resurrection, there was nothing suspicious about his. Uh, I figured it out. Oops. I, I didn't mean to skip that. Lacha arrived on the Lafu a few days prior to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Up until the day before the resurrection, there was nothing suspicious about his behavior. Day before the resurrection, he appeared near the Ambrosial Arbor with a Stellaron. The Rome Cube Commission would have arrested him by now. Eureka! That solves everything. If that were the case, <laughs> the Rome Keeping Commission would have arrested him by now. Why look to us for help? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is going to be a tough case to crack if even my instincts are off. <laughs> you lot are enthusiastic. I'll give you that. The reason I mentioned the day before the resurrection is because we have no idea what he did that day. The resurrection brought about unusual yin-yang phenomena that caused the entire Psycrane system to malfunction. Hmm. The image data from the day of the incident is beyond restoration. And the data from that day before was badly affected. Why don't you just ask him? We will, in due course. But we can't be too general. Specific questions are key. Not to mention, without a clear suspicion, it would involve multiple interrogations. So, if you feel this Lacha is suspicious in some way, make it known. Then I can arrange for his detention and interrogation. How should I put this? <laughs> he just looks kind of... He just looks kind of evil. Like I've seen his face before somewhere, and it's uh, really triggering me. <laughs> uh, Mr. Yang, you were going off of his appearance this whole time? I thought you had some super secret thing up your sleeve. <laughs> uh, didn't your mom ever tell you not to judge a book by its... <laughs> March, shut the fuck up. My instincts are right and not yours. <laughs> uh, cover? His appearance? He looks pretty handsome to me. <gasps> yeah, he just runs me the wrong way. Oh, no, he looks pretty handsome to me. Exactly. Huh? <laughs> Wait, that's not the point. <laughs> I love messing with March, dude. It's so fun. Sorry. What I mean is... Hmm, it's difficult to explain, but my instinct tells me this Law Cha is involved somehow. Apologies, uh, I realize this is personal speculation. That's all right. Instinct is an important part of any Realm Keeping Commission investigation. There are times when my gut tells me something's not right, and there's usually a reason for it. I'm with you on this one. Be that as it may, as an official, I can't go bringing someone in based on a villainous appearance. Because if a complaint led to his dismissal, it would leave a blemish on his resume, making it difficult for him to advance his career for the next few centuries. Precise- no! Yeah. What are you talking about? <sighs> <laughs> anyway, if you want to investigate, I can grant you access to the Foursquare Mirror. Jing Yan, you'll be assisting our esteemed guests in their investigation. Ugh, isn't it inappropriate for an officer of the Realm Keeping Commission to assist the public in investigating someone? Ah, not at all. Make sure you don't leave the commission. Just help them check the Psychrane footage. Keep me updated on progress. If you find hard evidence, I'll be there in a flash. One thing, though. Don't approach him. Uh. If you make a discovery, contact me first. We're thankful that you're entrusting this to us. We'll keep it by the book. We'll keep. We'll be sure to knock the shit out of him. Don't worry. The express crew keeps its promises. We won't disappoint you. 
Jing Yen, over to you. I need to get going. Understood. This might take you some time. Come and find me when you're ready. Okie dokie, I'm ready now. <laughs> A night stranger. Hmm. Okay, let me, let me talk to the fellows first. I owe you two an apology. My speculations have gotten us into a delicate situation. I'll treat you to some Sienjo delicacies later. Ooh, you better. I want a gourmet, I want a full garden of gourmet feasts. No big deal, we're on the same team after all. With March here, it's always a, a delicate situation. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, since when did investigators shy away from delicate situations? I did want to say something, though. Um, I don't think Mr. Yang is the kind of person to make a judgment based only on instinct. Uh, why do you say that? I think so, too. Mm, it's not something I need to conceal from you. Uh, is it going to spill? As you know, there are infinite worlds in this universe that can be similar yet different from each other in various ways. Yeah. The same is true of the people on those worlds. That's why it's possible for us to run into individuals on multiple worlds who share an appearance, but not a personality. For all we know, hmm. in some faraway world, March's adorable face might belong to an intergalactic pirate. <laughs> I knew she was suspicious. <laughs> uh, hey, I was just giving an example. I'm the nicest girl in the galaxy. However, in most cases, their fates will walk a similar course. I've seen two people who looked almost identical to this law cha. Hmm. They were not of the virtuous persuasion. Wait, two? T two people? I know this auto apocalypse, but who's the other one? Hmm. Can y'all Honkai third fans uh, fill me in? <laughs> That's why the moment I laid eyes on him, a chill ran down my spine. March is right. We shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But I can't overlook this. I don't want to force you into trusting my judgment, but... What are you talking about? Of course we trust your judgment, Mr. Yang. Right? Uh, that's right. We'll believe in you. If... It isn't our trust you need. On Express, we always trust our own. Of course. Crew members are always right. <laughs> I'm glad you believe in me, truly. But the problem remains. Will the Realm Keeping Commission trust a judgment based on this logic? <clears throat> From a Sienjo legal standpoint, the Realm Keeping Commission is unable to accept a judgment like this. <laughs> uh <laughs> we, we, we were just joking, right? It's not that we distrust you, Mr. Yang, but we cannot act on groundless accusations. I hope you understand. Of course, we raised the accusation. We will carry the burden of proof. Hmm. Records, research record, trying to persuade. Okay. Also, I see a book over there. I want to grab it real quick. Uh, auto and void archives. Oh, I thought void archives you are actually referring to archives. Is there an actual character named void archives or wait? Hmm. Oh, I gotta look this up. <laughs> uh, okay, void archives. Holy shit, yeah, this guy looks almost identical to Lotcha. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking at I'm looking it up right now. Hang on, but it, and it's saying right here. Uh, you want? Yeah, let me let me just bring up the image here. Sure, why not? Uh, let me just open up the the window. Uh, if I can here. Hang on, there we go. Yeah, I, I just looked up Honkai Void Archives, and holy shit, this guy looks exactly like Otto. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize these two were like separate characters. So, Lorcha, Auto Apocalypse, and Void Archives. That's actually his name. <laughs> Did not know. Huh. 
The more you know about Honkai lore. Wait, why is it not showing up here? Hold up. Uh, hello? Window capture? Are you... You drunk? There we go. There, there it is. I don't know why it took a while to, for it to show up. There it is. Holy shit. Yeah, okay. What's the deal with this guy? <laughs> what's the deal with Void Archives? Is he an antagonist too, or... I mean, judging by what Belt said, I'm assuming he's an antagonist of his own. Hmm. Yeah, I have no idea who this is, so maybe you guys can, like, fill me in on, like, what he's all about. Hmm. Okay, let's talk to March 2 as well. He's the same Japanese VA who did Ayato, Locha, and Autopocalypse. Yeah, I am aware Ayato's VA is the same as Locha's Japanese VA. to the Sienjo, but we're already investigating the mysterious disappearance of Luocha. <laughs> You're actually a little weird today. You're in high spirit today. <laughs> yep. I always dreamed of a head scratcher like this. A chance to showcase my detective genius. <laughs> I've been familiarizing or lack of it. myself with the angler mystery lately. I think it's safe to say I have the best investigative mind on the express at this point. The, the angler mystery. The fuck is that? You have good taste, Miss March. The angler mystery is a classic detective novel. Oh, it's a Sanjo. novel. <laughs> I read it when I was young and dreamed about working in the commission ever since. I didn't think it would be attracting new readers over two hundred years later. Oh, a fellow reader, but Miss Ching Yen, the author Su Fong, was the lead medical assistant in an apothecary. And the main character, the angler, is a healer. Why didn't you want to join the Alchemy Commission instead? Uh, a number of reasons. This job may be trivial, but I have my reasons for being here. <laughs> Plus, <laughs> the threshold for the Alchemy Commission was too difficult for me to reach. Oh, I see. But your lives are so long. Shouldn't career change be easy? Uh, I considered it once. That was a long time ago. The longer I stay in this job, the more I understand its purpose. Fighting crime, helping the weak, solving the problems no one wants to touch. It's a satisfying feeling. Wow. Good for you, Miss Ching Yen. <laughs> or maybe that the change is a bit too hard to handle. Sounds like you really care. Hmm. Records. Pretend to be an officer. <laughs> okay. Let's look at Jing Yen and check the voice recording cycling tool. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anybody else to talk to here. I can bring up the data any time from here. Are you ready? Uh, ready, let's do it. All right, follow me. Jingyan takes everyone on the four square mirror and begins to retrieve the footage. As official Da Hao mentioned, the arbor caused unusual yin yang phenomena, which affected the entire Cycrene system. We lost a lot of video footage. And for the image data we recovered, the timestamps are all jumbled up. Hmm. Look, this is Mr. Locha on the day prior to the resurrection. <sighs> so we have to clean up and reorder the footage ourselves? Exactly. Thank you again for your help. <laughs> uh, this is your forte. Over to you. What, wait, why do I have to do it? Isn't this you guys' job? <laughs> Roger that. My forte says who? Aren't you the genius detective? That's right. And you're the sidekick. Oh, sure. I'm the sidekick. <laughs> All right. Oh. oh, there he is. Lorja crossed the street and turned into a strange corner. Looks dangerous there, but he didn't seem to care at all. He paced in with nothing but a sword in hand. Oh. Lorja walked out of a small inn without any heavy luggage. Footage three. Lorja walked into the spare time bookshop and stepped out of a while. <laughs> he left with nothing in hand. Perhaps he didn't buy anything. And he also did pure fiction while he was there. <laughs> Lorcha is looking into the distance at the dock of Exalting Skanktum, uh, with his coffin at his side. Maybe he just left a star skiff. Maybe he's waiting for a new star skiff. He waited along the dock for a while and put aside his luggage, leaning on the railing and watching star skiffs passing by the dock. Okay. Well, what do you think? Any idea what the correct order is? Mm, maybe. I want to see the videos again. Oh, I actually have to choose. Sure. Which one do you want to watch? Uh, one. Okay, see, so he, he went into a strange corridor. 
He paced in nothing but with sword in hand. Walked off a small inn without any heavy luggage. Okay, so maybe he like dropped off his coffin there. He visited the bookshop, but didn't buy anything. I'm guess okay, I, I think four is first. I think four is first. I think he he did this first, dropped off his coffin at, at the small inn, and then one and th one and three are like jumbled around. Yeah, four, two, one, three, one. Uh, let me see if this order works. Yeah. Hmm. Wocha exits the star skiff, enters exalting sanctum, goes into an inn, and puts down his luggage, including the coffin. Right. Then he goes to spare time bookshop, but doesn't buy anything. Finally, he leaves and turns a corner into a dark alley. Yeah. The logic in this is sound. Looks like the correct order. Nice work. Yes, did it. I'm smart. Nice work indeed. Your sidekick to a genius detective after all. Yeah, man, fuck you. Let me be the, the detective on this one. <laughs> Where does this corner lead to? Hmm. I checked the map and found a gate in this open area. Look, there's a small dock on the other side. He may have left on a star skiff. Why would he leave Exalting Sanctum via a secluded dock? That's so suspicious. Hmm. I don't think Mr. Locha could have departed from there. The dock you're referring to is Yunshou Crag 999. 900 and what the fuck? <laughs> divine foresight. It's only used during invasions. That's why that gate is almost always locked. As far as I know, it's been locked for centuries and only gets opened for occasional inspections. The key question is, when did he leave? There's only one gate in this area, at least on the map. Miss Jingyan, does the remaining footage show anyone else entering or leaving this place? I can find out, but you'll have to wait a while. Most of the footage was lost, but at least there was a whole day of recording. There's a lot that needs checking and confirming first. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your hard work. When will you be done? Uh, hey, don't rush her! So sorry, Miss Chingyan. They can be a little impatient. Take your time. We can wait. Hey, come on, we're trying to catch a criminal here. We can't be patient. Not to worry, I understand. After all, you're taking time away from your own affairs to lend a helping hand. I'll get everything to you as soon as possible. Okay, talk to Jingyan and confirm a new finding. Alright. Wait, are you done already? I checked all of the Damn, that was quick. Have of the open area. I say all, a lot of it was lost. Are the corrupted parts recoverable? Can we use the same methods again? For some of them, maybe, but I can't guarantee anything. I'll do my best, of course. It'll take more time. I can't hand them over just now. Thank you. Did you find anything in the remaining footage worth paying attention to? Hmm. Uh, a oh, kid? No. Someone left the area through that exit around two hours after Locha's appearance here. Uh. Lord has nowhere to be seen though. Who are these two guys back here? What the heck? Huh. That that's really sauce that they're just following a kid. Hmm. Uh-huh. isn't this a scene from the Angler Mystery? Uh what? That novel's gone to your head. What are you talking about? Uh, shush, you're being annoying. I'm not kidding. <laughs> this is straight out of the book. Now that you mention it. Uh, I'm not sure I follow. Yeah, uh, neither I. Angler's origin story, of course. He's a healer from the Alchemy Commission who gets on the wrong side of a mysterious organization called the Tea Society. Two agents in dark clothing wait for him to be alone and then poison him. But it's, it's a kid, though. The drug has the same de-aging effect as the Vidyatara's hatching rebirth. The angler gets younger and turns back into a child. From there on oh. out, the angler pursues the tea society while solving all kinds of strange cases. Why would a tea society be so vicious? A drug that sounds like it would help people uh, stricken with Mara. It wouldn't. In the book, the drug only de-ages the body. It can't repair damage to the soul. In other words, it's like molting. Not a true rebirth. Hmm. Remember space kids uh, like this? They're probably like 50 years old. Oh, yeah, true. Everybody ages slower here. I forget about that. Patching rebirths are specific to the Vidyadara. 
Can humans also experience de-aging? Uh, it's just a novel. Who knows if something like that could happen in reality? <laughs> I thought of it as soon as I saw this footage, though. Su Fang, the author, was a medical assistant in the Alchemy Commission. The medical principles of the novel are strictly grounded in reality. True. If someone from the Alchemy Commission was suggesting it could be done, then there's always a possibility. So, March, what you mean is, the two people in dark clothing are <laughs> tea society agents, and the child is a de-aged lawcha? But it... Well, wasn't it a girl? Wasn't it a female child? <gasps> what if a crazy angler mystery fan decided to commit a copycat crime? Oh my god. Lawcha gets turned into a child, then follows a mysterious duel with <laughs> Flash. Oh, the plot thickens. This could be a kidnapping. <sighs> The child in the footage has black hair. Yeah. Lorcha's hair is blonde. Yeah. I thought Lorcha might look blonde, but maybe he's just going gray of age. <laughs> True. Uh, the hair color is completely different. Uh, yeah. Makes sense to me. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's only five brain cells in this whole room, and all of them go to welt. <laughs> Hold your horses, everyone. I recognize this child now. That's Yinshu. The young shopkeeper at Spare Time Bookshop. Oh. Too bad, March. No de-aging, no angler. Ha! <laughs> You're wrong. And the child is a girl. Remember Julian back in Bellabog? <laughs> uh, 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 detective's initial conjectures are bound to be wrong. <laughs> totally expected. <laughs> the Psycranes weren't able to get a clear look at the two people in dark clothing. Let's ask Inshu. Maybe she saw something. I'll keep trying to recover the lost footage. I'll contact you if there's a breakthrough. All right, let's go. Time to interview the witness. Time to go interrogate a child. Let's fucking go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> oh, hey, he has a pure fiction girl. All right. Uh, okay, real quick, fellas. I need to head to the bathroom real quick because uh, ooh, I've been holding it for a while now and it's uh, you know what? I'm not going to bore you with, with the disgusting details. <laughs> yeah, I'll be heading to the bathroom here for a bit, folks. I'll be right back with you fellows in a bit here. Don't you go anywhere. All right. I'll right, be back in like five minutes or so. Okay. Hmm. The things of days passed are shaped through the 
Hmm. All right, Aaron, for turn. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed staring at Akron eating peaches. Look, all right. Back to it. All right. Where in the heck? <laughs> okay, so what was Lorcha doing here? Let's go interrogate the girl and see. I don't oh. See the shopkeeper. Uh, let's look for her in the area. Never mind, she's not there. Business hours aren't over yet. She should be nearby. You two go ahead. I'll wait here in case she comes back. Okay. Let's go. All right. Uh, where? Oh, hey, Walt. You two go ahead. I'll wait here. The Sienjo has some interesting literature. I'd like to get better acquainted. Okay. We'll be back soon. Don't get too comfortable. <laughs> you, you girls just go like look up, look up for the shopkeep and do the job. Uh, I'll just go ahead and just read here. <laughs> also, there's a note here. Uh, we're in temporary business. Please come back uh, later. Looks like Yin Shu isn't here after all. Where could she be? Hmm. What's uh, what's that? Demonic, mysterious, treacherous. The Sienju masterpiece records as a supernatural on sale now. Huh? A supernatural tales anthology? Sounds like a good bedtime read. Might stop me daring to run to the bathroom at night, though. <laughs> uh, okay. Hey, what about you, pure fiction bird? Do you know anything? Of course you don't. Also, what's this here? After the 40 years, the latest addition to the Angler Mystery series, the, uh, the Hatchling Rebirth Conundrum, selling out everywhere. <gasps> A new addition after so many years? <laughs> Looks like I made the right choice coming to the Lafu. As soon as we've cracked this case, I'm getting myself a copy. Uh, Su Fong is the greatest. Uh, well, that has nothing to do with the situation at hand, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, what the heck? Um, okay, what else can I uh, investigate here? I'm not seeing anything else. Alright, Pure Fiction Birdie, do you know anything? Of course you don't. Well, uh... Yeah, where? Oh wait! Oh, this piece of paper on the ground. I, how did I not see that? <laughs> Hi, Yunshen. I have an errand to run. Please watch the store for me while I'm back soon, Yinshu. Uh, so she asked someone to look after the shop for her. But where are they? Looks like they must have left too. Hmm. You? Oh, Yunshen. Oh, you're watching out the shop. Uh, hey, Mister. Are you manning the counter for the young shopkeeper of Spare Time Bookshop? Huh? Young shopkeeper? You mean Young Shu? Yeah, I am. Something wrong? Um, can you please tell us where she is? <laughs> Why should I? Because we want to know? Uh, because we're asking nicely? What's with the attitude? <laughs> I can tell you. Oh, fuck you. If you pay me 500 strails. Fuck right off. You're not taking my money. <laughs> pay you? <laughs> what is this? You want paying for a simple favor? <laughs> Come on. No one ever tell you that information and intelligence are the most valuable commodity. Yeah, but this is like the most worthless piece of information I'm ever buying. Uh, this guy doesn't seem like the negotiable type. What should we do? I mean, we can always just wait for him to come back. We have no money, but can we pay you for beatdown? I'll pay you, but I don't even think about lying. Yeah, beat the shit out of him. Oh, you dare threaten me. <laughs> Do you know who I am? Yeah, you're a worthless NPC. The question is, do you know who we are? Okay, March, leave me to the trash talking. We are from the Tea Society. We're from the Express. <laughs> We're from the Tea Society. Oh, you mean like the one in that work of fiction? Who are you trying to kid? <laughs> huh. And who do you think were the inspiration for the Tea Society? Us. That's who. Yeah, if you don't do what we say, you're gonna go back to being a little puny little kid. We can just punt around all we can. <laughs> Sounds like a pack of lies. Still, they don't seem like pushovers. Dang it. Am I in trouble? Ugh, better to live and find another day. Ugh, forget it. I'm not stooping to your level. There you go. And she said she had a voucher for a food stall over an exalting sanctum. She wanted to use it before it expired. You know, she's not been gone long. Probably finishing up her food right now. Hmm. About time you saw the light. Come on, let's go. Also, is it me or is it does this guy sound like a 
a more annoyed Aventurine. Dang it. Am I in trouble? Ugh, better to live and find another day. I don't know why. That just sounds like a more nervous Aventurine. <laughs> yeah, let me get my lance and just fucking stab this guy. There we are. <laughs> Recent truck is intimidating. <laughs> Ever see a fist this big? It's all yours. It, ain't that like hurt us fucking alt life? <laughs> okay, but we got it, Yang. You two go ahead. I'll wait. We'll be back soon. Okay, you're still gonna read books. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Walt. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Uh, space. If you could wear any male character's outfits, who'd you pick? I'm guessing you mean the male characters in this game, right? Or do you mean like both Genshin and and this game? Hmm. I don't know why, but hmm. Honestly, if I were to wear like an outfit from any any character here, I feel like it'd be. Honestly, actually, who 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 had who has the most comfortable drip? Honestly, I would I would say Luca. His his outfit looks actually quite comfortable to to to, to wear. Although you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut my own arm off to fucking get his metal arm here. But his drip, I think, is actually pretty good. So is Gallagher's. Gallagher's is also like <laughs> looks like a pretty simple yet complex outfit. And surprisingly, Sampo as well. Like, if I were to cosplay anybody, I think it'd most likely be Sampo. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Don Hong also has, like, pretty comfortable drip as well. And all the, all the character, all the outfits and designs in Sario is so good. How about honestly not mind wearing them in real life? <laughs> oh, uh, whoop, there's, there she is. Are you Yinshu? The shopkeeper at Spare Time Bookshop? There's something we want to talk to you about. Yeah, that's me. Can I help you? You're heading back to the store, right? Let's walk and talk. I'll tell you all about it on the way. Oh, uh, okay. Let's go. I picked well her Don Hung, so if I feel daring, I'm maybe Sampo. <laughs> that footage. I remember that day. After I closed up the store, I walked around for a while. I was looking for a place to read. Oh, okay. Honestly, Well has also pretty good drip as well. Like it, it's it's also it's also does seem like 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 some of these outfits you can just wear in everyday life. Well, maybe not all of them, <laughs> but only like certain ones. But still, yeah, I really do like the male character designs in this game. I found that empty area. It seems like a good reading spot at first. But then I noticed two people dressed in dark clothing and a blonde uh. outworlder hanging around. Something didn't feel right. So I left. Those two people left the same way I did. Hmm. So you just happened to be going the same way. Did you see what the outworlder was doing? Mm, sorry. I was only trying to find a place to read. I didn't pay much attention to him. Or the two in dark clothing. All I remember is the two people in dark clothing. Uh, they smell pretty bad. <laughs> I guess that's not much of a clue. Sorry, I can't give you any useful information. <laughs> they smell like they haven't taken a shower in days, just like Genshin players. On the contrary, any information you can give is valuable. Thank you very much. Still, according to the Psy Crane recordings, Rocha's final stop before heading towards the open area was your store. My store? Spare time bookshop? You're sure he came to... Oh, that's right. I remember now he did pay a visit. Oh, how could I forget? He came in, looked at a few titles, and then handed one to me. Uh. An old paperback. Everything seemed normal, but after paying for it, he immediately tore off the title page. What the fuck? I was shocked, but he was grinning ear to ear, so... I didn't dare ask him about it. After that, he just left the book on the counter and went on his way. He, he just ripped what? Huh. I can't believe I'd forget something like that. I guess the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection the day after pushed everything else to the back of my mind. So, what was the book? 
The Angler Mystery. Oh, that book again. I'm wondering what to do about it. I can't sell a book without a title page. But uh, since you asked about it, here, you can have it. Uh, Mr. Hmm. Yang's instinct was right all along. Lo Cha is a villain. How could he do this? <laughs> Tearing up a book as well written as the Angler Mystery. Yeah, unacceptable. How dare he rip those books apart? Why well, don't share the title page, right? Outrageous. Calm down a moment, you two. I don't think Lo Cha has anything against the book. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> We're forgetting that the Realm Keeping Commission was initially investigating whether someone brought a dangerous object onto the Law Fu. The Hao and the others are probably not aware of what that dangerous object might be, but we know for a fact that it's the Stellaron. I think that by removing the page, Law Cha may have provided us with a key piece of the puzzle. I don't understand. Hmm. What does tearing out a page have to do with the Stellaron? Are you following Mr. Yang? Uh, I think so. I'm lost. No, honestly, I'm lost. That's all right. This is a bit of a conjectural leap. What I'm trying to say is, I think Law Cha may have friends on the Law Fu, and they're using the title page to communicate. Oh. God, that makes him even worse. How dare he use a book that praises justice for his evil plans? <laughs> I'm afraid evil plans are still within the realm of speculation at this stage. We have no way of knowing exactly what he did because the Psycrane data was lost. So, is this a dead end? Uh, speaking of... Uh, do you have some time? Please come back to the Realm Keeping Commission when you can. I fixed some of the recording and there's a section you might find interesting. That's good. Right on time. We'll head there immediately. Okay, please be careful on the way. Ah, that's more like it. New clues always turn up in the nick of time. Research records title page. Man, we're getting a lot of these. March 7 branches this imaginary title page and decisively declares. The paraphrase is maybe, probably, definitely written on it. <laughs> I like reading the flavor dialogue sometimes. Sometimes they can be pretty funny. Okay, but what's this new clue? Also, yeah, I'm still puzzled. What is what the heck is Lota even doing? Hmm. Oh, here we go. So we now know what time Locha left the open area. Uh, all right. Nice. You found footage of him leaving? <laughs> no. Yes. According to the Psycrane recordings. He left the area two hours after he entered. Okay. Okay, one thing. How about we just go directly to the place and see what he was doing? Are we just not allowed to enter there? Uh, strange. Why spend two hours in such a confined area? He must have been up to something. Hmm. Die. <laughs> 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 no, no. <laughs> That's disgusting. Why is that an option? <laughs> Diarrhea. Yeah, he just took a massive shit in the garden. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> fuck it. I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> elegant bearing. He may be a villain, but he doesn't look like someone you'd give up on finding a bathroom, even in an emergency. <laughs> Why can't I pick that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a shame no Psy cranes are installed in that area. We still have no idea what he was up to. This Wolcha is getting more suspicious by the minute. <laughs> I love how March was just gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna stop you right there. Don't go any further. <laughs> you disgusting. <laughs> I know Mr. Yang never wears his heart on his sleeve, but do you get the feeling he's a little... restless? <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, I wouldn't call it restless. A, a, a little concerned, maybe. I reckon he must have bad blood with the other Lorchas he mentioned. Remember, we're talking about different worlds here. However, I can't deny I'm a little worried that what happened to my home world could befall this place, too. Hmm. Uh, how does he always hear us? <laughs> well, I'm afraid I have some other business to attend to. Let me know if you need anything. You know how to reach me. Uh, thanks for the help, Miss Ching Yen. Okay, so the Astro Express is just fully aware that uh, was from a different universe. I thought he was just keeping that a secret, but okay. 
So, what did Law Cha get up to during those missing two hours? Hmm. Kind of reminds me of an anime using speeches and using books to create a book cipher to communicate to outsiders through speeches, which is clever and inconspicuous. I mean, true, there are some pretty clever ways of, like, relaying a message. That sounds like an interesting anime, actually. What's the title of it? Oh, again, I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> I think it's high time Detective March took the gloves off. No, please put the gloves back on. Oh? And what do you have in mind, Detective? Fieldwork? <laughs> that won't be necessary, Mr. Yang. As the angler once said, a true detective operates as effectively from their armchair as from the scene of the crime. Could you stop referencing the book? <laughs> or another or another way, I'm too lazy to explore the map. I think the wrong keeping office might disagree with you there. To start field work, we must wait until my deduction is complete. Duh. Then, when we arrive at the scene, you'll see that the facts match my theory to a T. Or how about we just go there immediately? <laughs> well, uh, seeing as you're so confident, let's give your idea a try. Uh, yay! <laughs> Mr. Yang is the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, collaborate with March seventh to put on her detective show. <laughs> 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 the boring evidence collection task has finally ended, and it's time for the mind-bending action-packed deduction section. Genius, Detective March 7 is confident to reveal the truth to the world as she gets to the bottom of the case. Luck be with her. <laughs> okay, well. Ready? I'm gonna start my reconstruction. Okay, sure. I'm good. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Explaining a theory in front of everyone is more nerve-wracking than I expected. <laughs> it's called Prince Princess Principal Crown Handler. It's a movie series. Hmm. Princess Principal is a good anime. I've never heard of that anime before. Hmm. Maybe we'll give it a check out after the stream ends. Okay. What? What? Huh? March? You're explaining a theory. Why do I need to fight some things? <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. I'm actually going to place Lorcha. Oh, that actually might be what's happening. Lorcha entered this hidden corner and stayed there for two hours. Genius Detective March 7 has concluded something's fishy. Oh, yep. He is here. Okay. Uh, who do I want to bring along? Hmm. I'm bringing in Viber Lune and also... Yeah, considering I'm dealing with those giant annoying bots, yeah, I think I will. Sure. <laughs> I mean, well, we're in the Sanjo anyway, so might as well bring Sanjo characters. Alright, I'll be using the angler's deductive method. Reconstruct what happened from the bad guy's perspective. <laughs> Why are you talking my left ear? March, that's really annoying. And now I'm Lodja. The fuck? <laughs> Is this deduction or necromancy? Mr. Yang, I'm scared. <laughs> uh, quit messing around. I'm thinking. <laughs> oh, almost forgot about that title page. He took it with him, so it must have had some significance. Ah, oh, right. Fuck. Why did I bring Fushuan with two sus with Lord as my sustain? My bad. Fuck. I should have brought Sparkle. <laughs> uh, next up, I need to have a look at oh, that well. Mr. Yang. Oh well. Extra survivability. <laughs> He must have gone through that gate up ahead. No way he would have stayed put in such a small area for two hours. But Miss Jingyan mentioned that gate is a military asset. It's locked all year round. Uh, you think that would stop the likes of Luocha? What kind of Stellaron smuggler would he be if he couldn't get past a door? <laughs> you think a lock like this can stop a girl like me? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I think I'm actually going insane. I'm losing the immersion. <gasps> Fine. I'll be me. You guys will have to imagine his lines instead. <laughs> Such a rudimentary lock. Easy pickings. Okay, there, there. That's much better. <laughs> much, much better. Even if Lodcha was able to unlock the door, what was his goal? His villain friends must have been waiting on the other side to buy the Stellaron. He went to meet them. Yeah, I have no clue why I brought March 7 when I when launch us in the team. My bad. I kind of want to re <laughs> restart. Yeah, let me uh, switch up my party here, actually. Ready? Don't worry, it's just me being a dumbass. Let me just uh, go ahead and change it out here. 
Um, Viper Lune, uh, Silver Wolf, and probably, yeah, we'll bring in Sparkle along. Where is she? Oh, she, she, she's low health for some reason. All right, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's try this again. All right, I'll be using the angler's deduction. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna skip all this through. <laughs> Such a rude. Even if Lord Shaw was able to unlock the door, what was his goal? Yeah, uh, and Fushwan, that's just. Yeah. Waiting on the other side to buy the Stellaron. He went to meet them. Yeah, honestly, uh, Fushuan has, be has become such a staple in my team that I just subconsciously pick her every time I'm building a team, no matter who else is on the team. <laughs> so, I think, yeah, it's just my subconscious is just picking her because I always use her. Where are you going? We're trying to trace Lord oh. movement. We shouldn't backtrack. Yeah, I'm too. I'm way too used to using Fushuan in every single one of my teams. <laughs> Probably gonna be the same thing with Aventurine, honestly. It's like, yeah, once they prevent on my team, I probably won't be able to remove them. Where are you going? We're trying to... Right, right. Okay, let's go to the door. Oh, shit. Puzzles. Uh, I'm aware how this puzzle works. Don't need to, uh... Oh, wait. Oh, fix... Oh. Oh, these ones stay in place. Okay. Uh, alrighty. Hmm. No, not that. Okay. Uh. Ah. Ta da! There we go. Lock picking completes. Now that I think about it, something's not right. Why would they rendezvous at a military airfield? Because. Uh. <laughs> well, we're too law abiding to understand bad guy logic. Hiding in plain sight, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Hold on. This would have been too quick a route. And what's wrong with a quick route? Hmm? <laughs> Shut up, imaginary locha. <gasps> what's wrong with a quick route, Mr. Yang? <laughs> We're trying to uncover what Locha did during those two hours. But even if he repeated this route 20 times, it wouldn't have taken him that long. Ah, oh, true. He must have had a tougher journey than I imagined. Oh, come on, let's start over. <laughs> I kind of like this. It's, just, it's, it's like a clever way of like letting us play as Locho. Without actually, you know, playing it as him. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> mm, you look like a tasty morsel. <laughs> Those who dare to enter here must face a delicious fate. <laughs> Your eyes are bigger than your stomach, <laughs> How about you? <laughs> this, this cracks me up, because Lorcha would never fucking talk like this. Why is the monster talking now? <laughs> uh, you know, just a little dramatic effect. <laughs> okay, well. And also, you know, <laughs> Silver Wolf, uh, Sparkle, and Don Hong just happen to be there too. Why not? <laughs> oh, wait, why am I in slow-mo? All right, let's do this. Break. Let's settle this. Oh, what do you know? We're done. <laughs> Can I have fun this time? Okay, we're finished now. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess Lorcha fought a bunch of enemies on the way there. It seems. Oh shit! Quarter camper, die. Awaken, yeah, for some reason, Bible Lune already awakened and is here in the story for some reason. <laughs> and what do you know? The Celeron Hunter Silver Wolf is here, even though she's not supposed to be here. Let's play. <laughs> she's like busy getting her game accounts back and everything. Rise. Honestly, I feel like, yeah, that's the way of most sustains. Like, continue my thought from earlier. It's like, whenever you put a sustain on your team, it's like hard to get rid of them. Uh, yeah. That's the same with, like, with me and Fushuan. It's like, yeah. I can't, it's like a force of habit for me to like, use them all the time, even though they have like, zero synergies with each other. All right, let's do this. <laughs> You chose the received divinity. Oh shit, I forgot Lorcha was faster. Heaven's search. Break. 
Oh, I forgot he revived. Not anymore. All right, I, I brought up two enemies. Sure, might as well. Ah, uh, boom. Get rid of your stupid fucking revive. Honestly, that's one of the reasons I do kind of want Mocha. That buff removal ability is so useful against these guys. Yeah, why the hell is the mass full in, in the Sien show? Who knows? Enemies doing on the Same question. March, explain yourself. It's because. Uh, because. 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 Because? March, you don't have to add in combat scenes while you're figuring out where to take the story. We can wait. <laughs> Let's wait and see. Oh yeah, I forgot the Lord's technique is like just activate his ring at the beginning, right? Okay, now we reach the, the tree. Monster layers in black market spaces. Uh, I doubt the law foo has any of that. <laughs> at least I doubt things of that nature existed before the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Uh, is it really so far fetched? We're already assuming that Luocha came here to sell the Stellaron to a bunch of cutthroats. May as well throw in some monsters here and there. Uh, does the story have to be this stimulating? Is this a detective story or an action movie? The angler is both a detective and a fighter. Anyway, it's not like we're gonna be able to conjure up exactly what Luocha ran into. <laughs> Why not use our own interpretation to bridge the gap? Hmm. I suppose that makes some kind of sense. Uh, clearly you're enjoying this, Mr. Yang. Makes sense how? <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I try to go with the flow. <laughs> I didn't expect this place to be so treacherous. I'll need to be on my guard going forward. I wonder, just who is the buyer interested in the Stellaron? Ah, uh, yes, because uh, this is the shitty exactly what he would say. <laughs> yeah, Lorcha cleanses and also removes buffs from the enemies, which I think makes him like a very valuable support. The buyer is waiting there. Time to head over. If not for Akron, I might try to pull for the watcher. This place is well hidden. <sighs> Finally, Mr. Yang approves Detective March's theory. Let's see where this leads first. Stop right there. State your business. The fuck? <laughs> is that Mr. Yang? The hell? Welch fake? <laughs> Okay. Isn't Puar a type of tea? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He's a member of the Tea Society, so naturally he chose a type of tea as his alias. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm talking to you. What's your business here? Oh yeah, I'm well aware Pela can also remove buffs from the enemy, but you know, she doesn't like also heal and also cleanse. So that's why like yeah, Lord's just like very valuable. Can you tell him to be less aggressive? <laughs> uh, oh, sure. Excuse me, sir. May I ask whether you're here on business or... Never mind. <laughs> I have a delivery for your boss. I need to give it to him in person. If you could let him know I'm here. God, March has some vocal range. How's he voicing everybody? <laughs> delivery? Ah, yes, the delivery. The boss is <laughs> waiting for you. I'm afraid I'll need to see some ID first. The fuck? When does this when does this turn into the Italian mafia? <laughs> I wonder if Locha has something prepared for this moment. Uh oh, I get to choose. Title page. That's right? The code. So you're the one. Wait here a moment. I'll call the boss right away. I, I probably should have picked the wrong options. I want to see what a <laughs> what March would have said if I got wrong. Take your time. Puar takes the page and goes to find the boss. Before long, Luocha sees an imposing figure walking towards him. Okay. And then... Boss, this is the one. He brought the delivery. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Why is it Bob? What the fuck? <laughs> Cutest boss I ever saw. <laughs> I couldn't think of anyone else to be Mr. Yang's boss. <laughs> the wrong options are funny. Yeah, I bet you're gonna see them. This is our boss, Startaro Bubble. 
Let's see this delivery. <laughs> Make it snappy. Okay, I'm getting. I'm understanding why you guys call this the funniest. A Tara bubble, the milk tea. So what? This is the tea society, remember? <laughs> Look at the shock on Lodger's face. Not before I see the money. I'm sure you understand the rules of such a transaction. Save it. Show us the goods first. <laughs> Easy now. The item in question is extremely dangerous. It's understandable that our friend here wants to take extra precautions. I'm not sure Pom Pom is the best casting choice for a gang boss. Yeah, I would have thought more like Don Hung or uh, Sampo. Who cares? <laughs> works right who are give him the money happy now ready to hand it over be careful dangerous is an understatement with this item i'll take my leave okay and yes, then will permanently who are get rid of him oh shit betrayal what the fuck? Oh, this was all going so swimmingly. Why did Mr. Yang turn into a robot? <laughs> Selling a dangerous item to me makes you my accomplice. And I've got too many of those. Oh no, Papa, please. Secret safe, I'm afraid I need to take special measures. No, don't kill me, Papa. You're quite sensible when you think about it. When it comes to minor details, March can be very logical. <laughs> for the rest of the story. Yeah, I'm not sure if I buy this. <laughs> Speaking of which, when did I turn into an Arumaton? Yeah, what the fuck? That's Puar's little secret. <laughs> he transforms into an Arumaton in dire situations. Oh, March, March, March. You you have a special imagination. You know that? <laughs> my my goodness. I got I got to drink some water. I'm laughing. I'm laughing too hard. <laughs> Okay, let, let me take a drink here first. I... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no use of pointing out the fucking flaws in this story anymore. <laughs> and there I was, thinking you gangsters still had some decorum. Alright, let's go kill him. Hey. Trickier to crack. Okay, here. Time for a bun. <laughs> what shirt? Sure, let's uh, get that up. Going right away. Yeah, for some reason, uh, his accomplices involve like a mass fool, a stellar hunter, and Don Hung. For some reason, yeah. Do not, don't question it. You chose the wrong. Nothing major. I'm sorry, Mr. Yang, but I'm going to have to kill you. Double speed. Awaken, dormant world cleansing dragon. Now perish. Die! Darn it! This isn't over. <laughs> Fights like these don't go unnoticed in Exalting Sanctum. Cloud Knights could show up at any minute. Better get going. <laughs> He's like monologuing to himself. <laughs> so Locha has to make a break for it. But where to? Let me have a look at the map. Aha, gotcha. Oh yeah, the elder of the Vidyara. Yeah, that's even odder. Like, why is he here? <laughs> oh, okay. So he retreated this way around. Why the Hello fuck are you? Huh? Proceed. Sure. With you. Let's go kill again. Let's go kill another one of Mr. Yang. Trickier to crack. Time for a buzz. <laughs> I'll see you off. Can you find the answer? Yeah, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Let's go kill more of the <laughs> of the people along the way there. Rise. Yeah, this feels like a dream bubble story, honestly. They should have made it this. Just so we could like replay it. Break. Let's settle this. Can I have that? And thus Lorcha massacred the entirety of the gang. For some god knows reason, he just decided to feel a little bloodthirsty today. Oh god, and the clown knights have finally showed up. We have to kill them too. Oh god. 
uh, Lotri was careless. He didn't see one coming around the corner. But what's this? World cleansing dragon. The water dragon just came out of nowhere and fucking saved him. Oh my god, what is going on? Let's play them. Yeah. You chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> the water dragon has come to save Lotra's life. As a raggade, the cloud knights for him. Why is the water dragon working with him? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> And then they two together went on the killing spree of all these Cloud Knights. Because fuck them. <laughs> and thus, not a single Cloud Knight went to report what happened. A riveting story from March 7th, yeah. And now we escape. Oh god, not more of you. Uh-oh. His only escape is... Uh. Climb aboard, Lodja. Time to get out of here. What the fuck? Wait, is that Himiko? <laughs> so Lodja hopped on a star skip and fled with the help of his accomplice. And that, ladies and gents, <laughs> is the truth behind Lodja's disappearance. With the <laughs> with the accomplices of the fucking Elder de Villara, the mass fools, and the Cellar Hunters, he got out safe and sound. This is, yeah, this sounds like a fanfiction. No, not gonna lie. <laughs> it's Stell? Oh, wait, that, yeah, that is Stell's voice. So, yeah. who was piloting the Star Skiff? Uh, me? I'm not sure either. The pilot didn't show themselves, so <laughs> uh, let's just assume it was her. <laughs> How come I got my face dragged into this? At least let the audience see my face. Uh, too many faces, too small a budget. <laughs> Maybe next time. Budget? It's all your imagination. What what budget? <laughs> what the, the Hoy Dev's budget? March, as much as I enjoyed your deduction, I do have a few questions. Yeah. Uh -huh. For example, if Law Cha took flight from the dock, how could he appear in side crane footage two hours later? <laughs> he came back, clearly. Also, the dock is a military installation. The Cloud Knights would be on the scene at the slightest disturbance. How did so many monsters show up without warning? <laughs> Last but not least, even if La Cha did encounter all of the troubles you described, it wouldn't have taken him two hours to escape. <laughs> I feel like, like, well, it's like cin cinema sins right now, except actually good. Oh, you're right, Mr. Yang. I guess I can't compete with the angler just yet. <laughs> you know what? Time for some field work. Maybe the answers to our questions are waiting for us at the scene. That might be the best approach. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> that might be what, sh what, what we should have done first. <laughs> Let's get a move on. <laughs> yeah, fucking plot holes galore. Uh, listen to Jing Yan and tell... Oh, okay. What What's happening here? Excuse me, officer. We're looking for someone. Can you help us? Your name is Fourth? <sighs> he's got blonde oh. hair, and judging by the way he's dressed, I'd wait. say he was an outworlder. Oh, wait, I encountered these guys before, right? Back and forth. That's literally their names. <laughs> A traveler with blonde hair? Could it be? May I ask why you're looking for him? He saved our life. Uh. Since when did we start sharing a life? Back in. We're not rehearsing. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would this blonde-haired, life-saving outworlder bear any resemblance to our suspect here? Yeah. Oh, that's him! Mr. Locha. He rescued both of us. Uh? Can I ask when this rescue occurred? And where'd he go? It was the day before the Ambrosial Arbor came back to life. Mm. We were planning to thank him properly, but in the aftermath of the Arbor incident, we never had the time. Are you two... No, the people in dark clothing? Uh. What's with the wardrobe change? Dark clothing? No, oh, I know what you're talking about. What a pair of clowns we are. Dark clothing. <laughs> Wait. We fell into a ditch. What? How? On the Sienjo? Wait, what? Uh-huh. There we were, looking for a spot to practice our new routine. We found a place, eventually. A little dilapidated, but nice and quiet. 
Shame about the giant ditch. Uh. <laughs> I lost my footing and slipped right in. My associate here, Forth, yelled after me, Don't panic! Forth's got your back! <laughs> Two seconds later, he landed on my back. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ditch was connected to a sewer outlet. Ew. We were covered head to toe in... Yeah. Anyway, I assume that's why you thought we had dark clothing on. A dignified story. I'm sure you'll agree. Okay, this story is much more disgusting than March's. <laughs> uh, no wonder Yinshu said she had to cover her nose. Ew. I was right. <laughs> I was right about the diarrhea then. <laughs> anyway, thankfully, Mr. Lorcha was passing by and dragged us back to dry land. It took all his strength, I'll wager. <laughs> and all his fucking... <laughs> and to cover his nose as well. What did Lorcha do exactly? Yeah. Thousand thanks, kind stranger. stranger. Uh. Without your bravery, we'd never have gotten out of that ditch alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. That if you ever need anything, and it's within our power to help, you can count on us. <laughs> okay, I need you two to take a shower. Get away from me, you smelly. Even it's beyond our power to help. That's too kind of you. It was nothing, really. <laughs> Nonsense! You went out of your way to... Don't worry about it. You should head back home now. Take care. No! Oh, we can't thank you enough! Fare thee well! Uh, one moment, both of you. That sewage could well contain harmful compounds. I'm something of a doctor. Let me give you a prescription. Make sure to use the medicine and get some good rest. There you go. I don't know what to say. Uh, sorry to trouble you. <laughs> uh, we'll take our leave now. Watch your step. Wouldn't want to find ourselves in another ditch now, would we? <laughs> Please don't do it again. I don't want to smell that shit ever again. Here. That's the prescription he gave us. Okay. That paper flower? Huh? It's beautiful. Did Locha make this? Wait, is this a page? That's right. The title page? He wrote down the prescription and folded it into shape. Huh. <laughs> okay, didn't know Lotto was into origami. <laughs> A man of romantic sensibilities, one might say. The paper looks familiar. Can I open it? <laughs> of course. We'd already opened it when we showed it to the pharmacy. Ah. <sighs> We were planning on handing it over to the Realm Keeping Commission. We suspect it's probably our best chance of tracing him. We can take it off you. We'll let you know when we find him. Let me see. Uh, of course! Uh, title page? It? It's the title page yep. of the Angler Mystery! Okay. The description's on this side, but on the back there's... Huh? So that's what this is all about? Uh, what's on the back? Is, is it a secret code? Uh, sadly not. Damn it. Take a look yourself. Uh, okay. Oh. The title of a detective novel torn off by Lorcha. The next, to the next reader. The killer is Chang Hong, nephew of Chang the Ninth. Your sincerely, best regards, the immortal spoiler. What? He did all that just to fucking spoil the fucking readers? Bro, what? Also, Chang'e Knight, isn't that a character, an NPC in Genshin? The one in St. Joe's Quest, I think. <laughs> what? Why, Lorcha? Why? Why do you gotta give him a spoiler? What the fuck? The immortal spoiler? <laughs> uh, some people just want to watch the world burn. Uh, hey, you're not wrong there, March. <laughs> I'm starting to think the Locha we envision doesn't square with a real one. Would a villain do a good deed like this? <laughs> a good deed? Now you just bought the story. <laughs> uh, so he paid for the book and tore off the title page to protect people from the spoiler. Uh, oh. <laughs> he must be a fan of this book, too. I knew Angler Mystery fans couldn't be bad. Oh, no. oh, he's hiding the spoiler. Never mind. I thought he wrote it himself. Never mind. Wait, that's it? <laughs> that's it? No. Oh, what the? Wait, he can visit me now? I haven't even met this man. 
<laughs> I've never seen this man in my life and he can visit me now. Okay. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> So no evil plot, nothing. He's just, <laughs> I can't let these these fans be spoiled. <laughs> just <laughs> tears off the page. Did a good deed today. <laughs> uh, so what are you guys thinking? Well, looks like the whole thing was just a big misunderstanding. You never mind. It <laughs> looks like uh, he wasn't scaring a sailor after all. Indeed. And I've learned not to judge a book by its cover. Anyway, that's enough reflection for one day. Let's get going. Uh, get going to where, Mr. Yang? Garden of Gourmet. You two deserve a treat. Hey, yay! Uh, yay! <laughs> and they went off without me. Sad. Since you finished Law Fu's story, he won't show up. Oh, really now? Ah, uh, so that means do I miss out on his conversations? Yep. I tried fixing some other relevant recordings in the cycle, and I found this part about Lorcha. I left it with the four square mirror. Please have a look uh, when you can. However, I still lean towards Miss Lorcha having nothing to do with this. I see, thank you. All right. You're welcome, I'm just doing my job. Wait a minute, no, he's right there. Wait, what? No, he's right here. What do you mean? Hi? <laughs> I've never met. I, I've never seen this man before in my life. I must thank Don Hong for his invitation. Oh, that makes sense. This journey upon the Astral Express has been well worth my while. Interstellar warp jumps with merchants are often dull and rarely ever feel like an actual journey. <laughs> the Astral Express. The Cloud Strider really was an eon of taste. Who are you? <laughs> oh, forgive me. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm an interstellar merchant. My Sienjo registered name is Lorcha. I met an acquaintance of yours several days ago named Dan Hung. Uh huh. He invited me to board the Express should I have the time, and so here I am. Astounding. The retro design of this locomotive, the comfort of its cabins. If only our own spacecraft could be modified in such a way. So, modify it. To, to be honest, it's not as good as you think. Uh, now that would be something. But on a merchant ship, load, security, and sterilization take precedence over creature comforts. What I mean to say is, comfort comes second to business. We generally use the company's mass-produced transport ships. Such a train can be likened to a solitary candle in the darkness <laughs> of night. One may peer upon civilizations where strife, hardship, desperation, and sorrow exist seemingly in a separate plane of existence. Okay, very enlightening, Lorcha. <laughs> Such a train can be likened to a solid. Okay, you're just saying the same things. Okay, yeah, he's here, so yeah, he's not. Yeah, he's not leaving. Oh, Lorcha's only after gone. You're gone after the High Clock Quid's head quest. Oh, okay, so. Oh, damn, so he'll be gone eventually then. Okay, in that case, maybe I should save... Actually, yeah, I'm gonna save the High Cloud Quintet for, like, the last quest to do. So, yeah, Lo uh, <laughs> Lojo will probably be here for a few days before he has to leave. Okay, thanks for letting me know, guys. Okay. Uh, let me see the time right now. Let's see here. Okay, I still have, like, 40 minutes left to stream. And, yeah, we have a like, Yanching's quest we can do right here, so... Should we do this one next? Hmm. Okay, yeah, so, okay. Lorcha will disappear after a certain quest. Gotcha. Well, it's probably good then that I won't be able to do all the all of these quests in today's stream. Because, yeah, we still have, like, a good amount left, and I only have, like, 40 minutes left to stream. Yeah, I'll do, like, one more. I'll do, like, Yanching's here as the last one for today's stream. And then we'll continue, like, the others in, like, uh, the next stream or something. On Monday, yeah. 
Uh, Yanchix is short. Okay, yeah, then we'll do his then. Okay, yeah, it's the one in front of the, um... The, yeah, the, the commission. I've been avoiding this for some time. It's, like, involving the D thing here. And I, yeah, just haven't been talking to him or trying to stay away from them. This haven of memory. But, yeah, I gotta say, <laughs> yeah, I really did enjoy the Lorcha quest. It was really funny. <laughs> I just love how it just... Just ended up being nothing at the very end. It's just, yeah, he wasn't doing anything evil. He's just, yeah, I just ripped out the book. <laughs> I just ripped out the, the spoilers from the book to protect other people. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean his quest. I don't think he's... <laughs> I know Yanching is short himself, but yeah, I knew he, you were referring to his quest. Okay. But all right, uh, yeah, this probably will be like the last quest I do before I like end it off for today, everybody. So yeah, okay, you guys said Yanqing's quest is where Jing Liu first appears, which I'm kind of excited for, honestly, because I haven't met Jing Liu yet, I, like at all. I basically know next to nothing about her except that she's like the best DPS next to Acheron. So yeah, let's go ahead and begin here and uh, see my boy Yanqing for the very first time. <laughs> Oh, please, please speaking human. <laughs> woof, 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 meow, 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 uh, the food cell's over there. Meow. <laughs> Clearly, you're meowing up the wrong tree. Uh, find someone who can understand. What if I leave it be? Uh, find someone who can understand. Speaking of someone who can understand D things, well, so you immediately think of March 7, a certain cute pink haired girl. Uh, nothing to think of. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I can't think of it. Uh, nah. <laughs> certain cute pink haired girl. The psychic bond between cute girls and cute puppies. Hey, isn't that what March 7 said? <laughs> Let's go, bring you to March 7th. Okay. Frosty Blades Trial. Hmm. Oh, and, and there she is. <laughs> Aw. Come with me. Find someone who can understand uh, D-Ting's bark. Uh, yep, there she is. Everything okay? Hmm. <laughs> Alrighty. All right, March. Can you help me translate something? Huh? Why is D Ting talking to you? <laughs> I've always been nice to cute little animals. This isn't a contest, uh, so you understand what it's saying, right? And why not me? Uh, I think I'm a better fit. That's all. Uh, never mind. No need to get offended. Hmm. <laughs> the first time we met D Ting was during the Kafka hunt. I could tell there was a mysterious connection between us. Whenever he barked, I understood what he wanted to say. For example, woof woof, woof 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 woof. Uh, that translates to... <laughs> Meaning, hello dear, I found a strange thing at the port of Cloudford. You may want to come and have a look for yourself. You got the, all that from a few wolves? It wouldn't happen to be related to eating. Hey, enough with the passive aggression. <laughs> the simple truth of the matter is that I can understand him. So, what did D-Ting find at the port? Come on, let's go check it out! Uh, okay. Not sure what this has to do with Yanching, but cool. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Hey, boy. Nyaw. Little D-Ting says he's been dutifully searching for clues all over the Sienjo. He notified us as soon as he found something strange. Yep. So what does he want us to take a look at? Uh. Yeah, what is it, boy? <laughs> the disc? You want me to do a puzzle? Oh, what the fuck? Wait, what is that? A band or a mark? The heck? Oh, what the? A J tracer lying on the ground. It's light green vein flashes out an image of a teenager in the air. What the? Huh? Okay, why is Yanqing here? This is Yang Xiang, retainer to General Jing Yuan. I'm in active pursuit of a fugitive. The situation is unpredictable and developing rapidly. So I planted this J Tracer to record my whereabouts in case I lose contact. Oh, this is where she he's um tracking up Blade, was it? Or or Kafka. Hmm. If anyone finds 
this tracer, please take it to the seat of divine foresight, so the Cloud Knights have the necessary intel to act swiftly. Ah, oh, so it's a recording device. Hmm. Teaching must have heard its signal and called us over here to investigate. Even the General Sertain is getting in on the action. They sent a shout to apprehend a major criminal. You can't disqualify him just for being a little baby. <laughs> little if baby. If he's the General Sertainer, there must be more to him than meets the eye. <laughs> he, he's like barely shorter than us, and then we're just calling him a little baby. <laughs> uh, we're not that old ourselves, right? And yet here we are. Express passengers on trailblazing expeditions. Yep, even the dogs can give up missions now. Nothing shocks me anymore. I don't think the two of us counts as widow babies. <laughs> uh, given everything that's been happening on the Cien Show recently, I reckon the only fugitive worthy of a retainer's attention would be a Stellaron hunter. I wonder how he's getting along. Check operation logs, okay. Oh, I actually get to play as him. <laughs> Finally, my first time using Yanching since forever. <laughs> I've long abandoned my Yanching, by the way. Like, yeah. <laughs> There's just too many problems with his kit. Hopefully, I don't know, maybe maybe eventually he may be able to solve them, but <laughs> don't have the highest hopes. Okay, uh, bring in Jeppy. Uh, we'll bring in Silver Wolf and also... Sparkle? Sure, why not? Actually, we'll switch the two around just so Yanching doesn't get hit. All right, let's go. Blade tracking entry. Traces run cold at Starskip Haven. I'll have to ask the Cloud Knights in the area if they saw anything. Hey, there's my boy. <laughs> my very first five star, and I end up abandoning him. Gotta feel bad for him, honestly. Captain, could you spare a moment? Yan Ching? Why are you all the way out here on the front lines? Shouldn't you be back at the seat of Divine Foresight? The General already has a lot on his plate. As his retainer, it's my duty to share the burden. Nothing new to report, I assume? Correct. After this blade escaped oh, yep. from Shackling Prison, he disappeared into thin air. I wonder if he's even still on the ship. Or perhaps he had no intention of escaping in the first place. <sighs> what foul demons found their way across the stars to wreak havoc on the Lofu? That's why I'm here. To help the General eliminate those demons. Is that so? I didn't receive any orders from the General. Um, uh, this is a covert operation. <laughs> sure. Then shall we dispatch a few knights for this operation of yours? I appreciate the gesture, but the fewer people who know about a covert operation, the better. Making a big show of it will only scare the snake deeper into the grass. A good hunter must operate alone. <laughs> sure. <Dispatch a> few knights. <laughs> How incapable does he think I am? I might be young now, but just you wait. Yep. Okay, look for clues at Cloudford. Hang on, let me get techniques points first. Uh, no, nothing up here. All right. Uh, okay, what is you? In a silent room in the middle of the fleet, a wolf head master broke from his meditation, opened his eyes, facing up at his fatal enemy. Oh, a novel. Okay. At the moment, a graceful young lady was standing at the end of the corridor, like a sharp sword unsheathing it from its sheath. Uh, countless spots of light encircled her, like stars breathing and dancing in cosmos. Uh, if you look closer, you may find that the light spots are sealed in a translucent jar, like shrines mirrored on walls. These core S's, the wolf head <laughs> master uttered, so they are what you obtain from the divine relic. Next page. Why is the Yanching here just reading? <laughs> the long light master only grants us power, but it cultivated the seed of sacred tree in you. How unfair. I put 30,000 people to death and had the Ant Antomis dissect their life. Uh, their li live? Uh, live core S's to build all these S's shrines so I can make further studies of them. My studies have proven me right. If the purpose of the heart is to sustain life, then the core essence transcend it life itself. It is to absorb power from the roots. It's an organ that is much more important than the heart. It should be viewed as the engine of the body. Now I'm using them to propel the fleet by using their organs to destroy their own alliance. Sure, let's keep going. 
The wolf head man lifted off the gorgeous mantle and that covered his chest and revealed a jellyfish like translucent armor, coning his bulging muscles. He inhaled deeply, as if he could consume all the air within this narrow space. In seconds, his hunch over body expanded muscle by muscle and turned into a huge giant iron tower of flesh. The cracking bones and warping flesh generate a sharp and painful noise during the deformation and quickly heal. The wolf head man has long been used to, this, uh, to these pains. What the fuck am I reading by, right now, by the way? <laughs> As he breathed, a weak glimmer of light overflowed from his mouth, nose, eyes, and ears. His core S's, or S-A, whatever, started to shine brightly. This armor fits my bod my blood and flesh. It is it is like were an organ to attach to my body. However, its prowess is yet to be tested. My bonus have all but turned into balls of flesh with just one blow. Maybe the high clock quintet can help me know its true limits. How long is this book? <laughs> The lady's eyes were as dark as cold as ice, as if the things happening in front of her were dull and uninteresting. 30,000 soldiers, 30,000 core S's, 30,000 kindles of life. She tried uh, not to get distracted by the cruelty of the miracle before her eyes. The small balance between the two sides is hard to maintain. One will take their advantage precisely when they get the chance. The wolf man soared forward as a mask of grey storm. In the next heartbeat, the lady disappeared. The spot uh, <laughs> the spot she stood before was only left with a sharp footprint. With a flicker of the sword flash comes a loud sonic boom. The following chapter requires payment to read. Uh, bad writing. <coughs> uh, terrible pacing. <laughs> uh, wait, uh, what was I supposed to be doing again? Damn. Uh, I... Focus, Yen Xiang. Can't let novels distract from your duty to the general. Especially not ones as crummy as this. I can't believe I read the entirety of that. Also, it fucking gave me like an EA fucking payment. You need to pay like 20 cents to fucking continue reading the book. Like, goddamn. Oh, well. Oh, guys, there's another novel. Summary of Starskiff's loss in the East Clifford Docks. Okay. Two stack planes. 22 beyond the dust. Huh. Okay, I did a lot of reading just now, so I'm not gonna read this. My, my mouth is so tired from reading all that. Hang on, let me drink some water real quick. I am not gonna read that. I, I, my, my mouth is tired. The Skyfaring Commission really made a mess of this. Who knows if we'll ever find all these missing ships. Well, not clues at all. Really? Wait, how's that only one out of three clues? Hmm. If the side crane hadn't been damaged, we could have extracted some footage. <sighs> That's no longer an option. Oh, well, damn. Uh, well, is there anything else here? Hmm. Oh, what's here? Uh, writing on the slip. A found divination slip. The heavens open for good fortune. The sun turns to a lucky spot. Receiving the slip is no small feat. Today, you're in good luck. Oh. The final sentence on this common divination slip was crossed out, and something else was scribbled here, uh, there. If guests arrive from afar, thou shalt rush to their service, fulfill their every wish, and respect them with the utmost care, so to turn good fortune into ill fate, from Rorye. The Master Diviner is always boasting about her foresight. <laughs> Didn't manage to foresee this disaster, did she? Hey, come now. Give Fushuan a break. Come on, you don't need to slander her. Come on, Yenchik, I thought you were better than this. Man, you, you changed. You changed, Yenching. You changed. Also, what's this on the floor? Uh, Cloud Night Patrol Unit Prosperity. Patrol Records. Uh, total 32 Cycrates were deactivated. Hmm. Received reports from evacuated persons that a suspected criminal has been sighted at the Yuan Shou docks. I've dispatched three members of my unit to assess the situation. Okay. Three team members dispatched have yet to return and can be contacted. Hmm. Recording ended. Hmm. Uh, and that strange tree. Ye and everyone else are staked onto the branches of that thing. That thing. That thing with growing all over his body. I read his dog tag. He's from the Tang Shao unit. 
How did he become like that? I cut him down, but he's climbing back up to his feet again. I need to report everything to see a divine foresight quickly. Why won't the comms connect? The in the logistics department probably all took bribes. Hmm. The perimeter is well guarded, but there are no traces of the fugitive passing through. It seems he has no intention of leaving the Lafu for the time being. Starskips are blocked from entering or exiting. There's no way the fugitive got through. But if he fled toward the interior of the ship, it'll be hard to track him down over such a vast area. Hmm, a fugitive would still have to rely on Starskips to travel between different delves. If we start by investigating the Starskip he stole, maybe we can get a lead. Guess it's back to the docks again. Oh, well. <laughs> Oh, hey, enemy. It's all right. Uh, yep. Cannot change out of Yanching. Oh, well. like the influence of the Stellaron spirits is growing. Die. Can I have fun this time? Also, yeah. Um, yeah, for some reason, Yanching brought along a uh, mass full of Stellaron hunter, even though they're hunting one. <laughs> and also uh, a Bellabogging in night. Yeah, don't worry about that. Is that all? A one time enemy. Blade and huh. More <laughs> yeah. All right, bam. How many can he strike with heart? Can I have? <laughs> okay, done and dusted. All right. Oh, oh, another thing. What is you? Oh, playing dead. What a childish trick. Poke. The stifle remains start trembling with a sudden anger out from its hollow eyes. Ah shit, I should've left that alone. Ah shit, I didn't realize you were still alive. A one -time enemy. Die! Let's play. Well, <laughs> okay, uh, he really was playing dead, alright. <laughs> Did not expect that, actually. Oh, I have to do puzzles, okay. Okie day. Um. Oh, wow, a lot of dead ones here. What's this? Holy shit! This kind of wound is not the work of a cloud knight. Uh, it's the work of blade. The best prey is one that leaves traces. Here, Ding, let's follow the scent. What the? <laughs> Where do you guys pull these Dings from? Hello? <laughs> Where do they even fit on you? The heck? <laughs> Man, these fellows really do appear out of nowhere, don't they? Oh, oh, there she is. There she is. Uh, civilians are still getting attacked. Where are the cloud knights? Hey, don't panic. I'll get you out of there. Good. <laughs> I don't think she needs help, buddy. But, uh, but okay, do you do you. <laughs> a one time enemy. Strike with heart. Swords to set. Yeah, die. <laughs> Let's play. Can you find the answer? Yeah, I, uh, yeah. I'm pretty sure she does not need help at all whatsoever. <laughs> Bam. Okay, uh, you're so alive. Time for a <laughs> ah, damn, I forgot all of you revived still. Is that all? Well, at least you, you keep attacking Jabbar, then it should be fine. Hope you're prepared. <laughs> All right, I got you, Missy. Even though you really, really don't need the help. <laughs> huh? They were on their feet a second ago. Uh. Hmm. Thank you for your assistance, young man. Just doing my job. The port has been sealed off. Why are you here alone? I came with a merchant ship. Yeah. The shadows of old friends have returned to my thoughts of late. I came to reunite with them and relive <laughs> the times. Yep, hello, monarch. <laughs> Who would have imagined the Lofu could become such a dangerous place? You chose a bad time to visit, I'm afraid. There's been an incident. It won't take long for the general to fix it, though. This place isn't safe. We should head to the nearest Cloud Knight garrison. By the way, did you see a man with long hair and black clothes around here? And you're wearing a blindfold. <laughs> you 
You can't see? I, uh, apologies. I, I thought... <sighs> My name is Yun Ching. I'm registered with the Cloud Knights. And your name is... Jing Liu. There she is. Finally, I get to meet her. <laughs> After all the hype that's surrounding her. Nice to meet you. Um, Miss Jing Liu? Allow me to lead the way. We might have to take a bit of a detour, but I promise to get you to the Cloud Knight safely. It. Okay. <laughs> Come with us, lady. Where exactly are we headed, young man? To the docks. Young man. Don't worry. You'll be safe. Uh, where'd she come from? So, are you from one of the other Sienjo ships? The Yaoqiang? The Fanghu? I'm from the Tsangcheng. Oh, I have no idea what that is. The Songcheng? There's a ship called the Songcheng? Why haven't I heard of it? How long has she been away? Miss Jingliu, how long has it been since you last set foot on the Lafu? Are you always this talkative? Uh, <laughs> uh just making conversation. I wanted you to know I was still here. Uh, let's get going. <laughs> let's get going, miss. Careful. Take your time. Okay. <laughs> and man, I was, was kind of hoping we get Jing Liu in the party. Actually, was when Yanqing Quest was out, was Jing Liu playable? Like, at the time? Or was she just still, like... Like, yeah, not playable yet. Hmm. hmm. Where do we go from here? Yep, through that monster. Shh, quiet. We've got trouble to deal with first. Wait here a moment, miss. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> Let's go kill. <laughs> no? No? Oh, fuck. I forgot these guys talk, not gonna lie. <laughs> God, why does everybody make fun of Yanjing's height? <laughs> it's kind of funny, honestly. More enemies. Just a sneak peek, just how Locha was at Dan Hung's side. Ah, okay, so just a precursor before her actual release. Let's play for him. <laughs> Yeah. I see. <laughs> so most likely she's not gonna be playable here. <laughs> Where did these guys come from? Yep. Huh, the general was right. There's a threat lurking on the Sienjo itself. You are quite the sword master, young man. <laughs> uh, you you saw that? I heard it. A sword whistles through the air and rings out upon contacting the enemy. Whilst invisible to the eye, such signals reveal the quality of one's swordplay. As a musician listens to the notes of a song, so a poet listens to its rhyme. <laughs> and in the flow of combat, a skilled swordmaster delivers both with their blade. I'll wager the Cloud Knights capable of wielding six flying swords at a time. Good. Number few, indeed. Good lord. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Chad, her voice is about to make me act up. <laughs> if you told me this was Monarch, like the streamer Monarch, I would have not have believed you, like, at all. They sound so, so different. <laughs> like, good lord. Like, yeah, Monarch has range. Yanjin currently is the worst five star. I'm aware of that. Yeah, shame that he's like my first five star though. I really want to use him some more, but it's really, really hard to. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Miss. However, your zealousness inhibits your ability to hide your line of attack. It. Uh huh. <laughs> Which causes your sword's song. To become somewhat mumbled at the end. <sighs> I guess the connection between music and swordplay is real after all. The general told me something similar. He said my swordplay was too proud and angular. He said it lacked the maturity required to win the title of sword champion. <laughs> sword champion? If I recall correctly. That title is bestowed on one who reaches the pinnacle of swordsmanship in the Cloud Knights. <laughs> but that was a long time ago. Right! 
Ever since the sedition of Imbibitor Lune, yep. the title of Sword Champion has gone unclaimed. But once everything settles down and the combat art ceremony returns, it's a title I'm determined to win. The Cloud Knights have many martial arts traditions. Who was it that instructed you in swordplay, young man? So oh boy, it's Sai, your rival. I see you're no stranger to the art. I won't keep you in suspense. My master is none other than General Jing Yuan. Uh oh. Wafu. That's gonna set her off. General. Uh. I know you haven't visited for a long time, but surely you've heard of General Jing Yuan. He says he has no affinity with the sword, that his skills are getting rusty. Well, if that's true, I never noticed from his training. Uh. All right, the coast is clear. Let's keep moving. That's gonna trigger something in her. Also, what's on you? Orders from the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Yellow Milk Vetch. Uh, the Massive Primus has ordered all Disciples who to head to one specific delve and guide the mystical roots to grow and thrive. However, we were shocked to learn that the Disciple Rose Mallow, who is responsible for the Chensu docks at the Cloudford, had perished under the various the hand of various outworders. Before immense duties, one ought to put aside personal vengeance. You shall now take over Rose Malice's task. Remember, do not disappoint the Master Primus, Golden Porthos. I have no idea what any of those words mean. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay, well. Starskip Voyage Log can be accessed through the Dock Navigator array. Oh. Oh, of course I have to do a puzzle. Um. All right, okay, I can't go on those. All right, you go here. And there we, nope, not what I meant. There we go. Easy. Uh, active star skiff, active star skiff. Uh, there, this one goes past the divination commission and the artisanship commission. Uh, traffic records of uh, Chengshu Crag uh, 22 dock. Aaron Express, uh... Hmm. Sass did not return to coordinate. Did not return to coordinate, did not return to coordinate. Hmm. Well, my work here is finished. Now to make sure you get to a safe destination. Given the present circumstances, the Cloud Knight garrison probably isn't a safe destination. Wouldn't you say? Correct. So we're not going there. I'm taking you to the Shackling Prison. Oh. Safe, well guarded, plenty of food, and a place to sleep. Okay, you can't just tell some somebody you just met that, that you're bringing them to prison. Young man, if you wish to apprehend someone, shouldn't you have a reason? Yo, oh boy. Suspicious behavior and half truths. Those alone are reason enough. You think you can fool me just because I'm a child? Oh shit. <laughs> a sealed off port with a stranded passenger? Unlikely. Not to mention you walking the whole way here without so much as a stumble. You can see as well as I can. The biggest giveaway was your comment about my sword play. Yeah. Correctly guessing the number of swords from the sound alone? <laughs> You'd have to be more than human. You're not blind at all, are you? Uh-oh. I never claimed to be. You came up with that yourself. Uh. <laughs> I mean, true. <laughs> Fear not, young man. I hold no grievance against you, and have never held ill intent towards the Sienjo. The black veil covering my eyes is merely proof of my resolve to never look back. To never fall again into Mara and destruction. Oh boy, again? I came here to catch one person. It's quite fortunate that our paths have crossed. Oh shit. The one you're looking for, is it... Blade? Yeah. He goes by Blade nowadays. A fitting name for someone who dedicated his mind and body to the ways of the sword. Take me to him, young man. Yeah. You are no match for me, and therefore, <laughs> no match for Blade either. Let me accompany you. There is no need to throw your life away. I am the better ice DPS among us. We've not even drawn swords yet, and you declare yourself the winner? Let me offer you a word of advice. 
Don't underestimate me. I wouldn't throw down if I were Yanching. Nope, <laughs> not against this woman. I was hoping to avoid a conflict with the Cloud Knights. How about this? Let's have ourselves a little contest. Oh boy. We can use the abominations that have infested the Lawfu as target practice. Oh, it's a kill as competition. The sword can slay more and slay faster. And if I win, yeah. then I will obediently follow you to the Shackling prison and receive whatever judgment awaits me there. <sighs> Don't worry. I'll keep my end of the bargain. But if I win, you have to share Blade's whereabouts with me. Fair enough? A Cloud Knight never gambles with official business. But in any case, you won't beat me. <laughs> oh boy. I your confidence. But what was it you said earlier? About declaring a winner before swords were drawn? It would seem we've cleared every abomination from the area. Uh... Let's find another location and continue our contest. Okay. Wait. Oh. Oh, because everybody here is dead already. Oh, well. <laughs> Two journey come to stop. Swordmaster win. Uh. Okay. This place is Yeah, she's got, I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose here no matter what. For honing one's skills. Oh shit, there's a lot of them. Surely slaying abominations doesn't count as gambling with official business. How do we tell who's won? We go from here to the end of the path without leaving a speck of abomination behind us. Oh shit, it's a race. <laughs> the first one to the end wins. Deal. Lead the way. What if you're just using this as a chance to escape? <laughs> Jing Yuan trained you, all right. Uh-oh. <laughs> there it goes, all righty. What was that? Yeah, no chance in hell I'm getting. I'm actually gonna win this. Is is Jingyu just gonna come out of nowhere and just kill everybody for me? Hope you're prepared. Practice is over. God, these guys are tanky. Die. Also, don't mind me. I just have uh, brought these fr <laughs> these friends along with me to, to help with this mission. Don't you worry about a thing. Let's play for a feeling spiffy. This ends. Blade and fire. God damn it! These fucking reviving fucks. <laughs> dun dun dun! Perish. Where did she go? Oh, she's like already at the finish line. Oh, yeah, where is she? Oh damn. Okay, well she's up ahead. <laughs> I I didn't even see you overtake me. Too slow, young man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Yanching, we uh we, we ain't gonna win this one, bro. I think we need to throw in the towel here. But how is that possible? <laughs> in lunar flame. <laughs> what kept you this time? <sighs> You'll need to work harder. Otherwise, you won't even catch me in a star skiff. Holy moly. Ebony is <laughs> just fucking dead already. Shift the balance. Shift the balance. Okay, just a hunch. I feel like we're gonna encounter a boss fight here. Uh okay. Yeah, big guy. Uh, uh? A long time has passed since I wielded this sword. The heat of combat nearly cast me into the darkness. Come, young man. I'll let you finish up. Okay. I'll let you make <laughs> Oh wait shit! For all your sword. I actually got the user! Don't you know it's rude? Cool. Waiting. Hesitant. Weak. That shit. What happened to that confidence of yours? <sighs> Oh boy. <laughs> oh damn, fucking eats the kill. <laughs> strike down your adversary in one blow without turning back. Blade in taught you how to slay abominations. But did he ever teach you how to deal with the Mara struck? <laughs> this has like, gotta be like insanely cool to like do this before Jing the actually came out. Difference. The sword pierces the body and severs its life. 
If this sword came for your throat, would you be able to deflect it? <laughs> Did you think this swordplay was just a game of victory uh -oh. and defeat? Future sword champion. Oh god, she's losing it. Hang on, let me one shot this fool. Bam! <laughs> yeah, see, I got one. No. Oh shit! Okay, she almost one shot that one. Blade in flight. Try harder. And over. Your final move was the only one that didn't disappoint. Oh shit! <laughs> I lost? Our contest has not yet come to a conclusion. For I have yet to make my final move. And the field has no opponent. Uh oh. Unsheathing this sword without merit is to blaspheme the divine will of the Rainbow Arbiter and invite calamity. Oh shit, you're gonna duke it out? <laughs> Uh-oh. Even with your strength, if you were to cross paths with Blade, it would mean death for you. I can give you a more dignified end than dying at his hands. Uh oh Oh, no. To die as a swordmaster, having witnessed the perfection of my technique, refined a thousand times over. What say you to that, young man? Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> at this moment, he knew he fucked up. <laughs> I refuse, I refuse, I refuse. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> you have courage. Oh, Rip Yenching, then. Rest in peace. Before even, before even coming to, into the story. <laughs> oh, shit. Cutscene. Oh fuck, that's her ult! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Holy anime power! <laughs> I... I deflected it? Uh. I'll take those records you found. What the fuck? Thank you, young man. If you did like one strike and f holy shit, that's a cool fucking cutscene. Hang on, what's that here? Move was uh. a token of my appreciation. We were fated to meet this day, and in days to come. <sighs> this mysterious woman also wants to find your whereabouts, of Blade. No. No, no matter what she wants to do with the fugitive, she must not be allowed to get to him first. Uh, hey, I don't think you you can say no at this point, Yanching. I don't think you can. I have to pick up the pace. Stop re record checking. Hold on a moment. Okay. And that's the end? Uh. There's nothing else in the operations log? Rider's block, perhaps? Who doesn't like a good cliffhanger? Uh, that Jingliu seems pretty dangerous. <sighs> the Stellaron crisis sure has attracted a lot of strange people to the Law Fu. <laughs> Shouldn't we hand this over to Ching Yuan as soon as possible? <laughs> yeah. Woof. <laughs> the Echoer, J Tracer. Okay. Return to the Divine Seed Foresight and tell him about uh, Yan Ching's situation. Okay. Will do. God damn, that was a pretty fucking cool cutscene. <laughs> you choose repetitive dialogue for three times. <laughs> I didn't know that was even an option. All right. I was probably because I picked the wolf option three times, isn't it? Yeah, it, it was. Man, uh, shit. I said I was going to get Adventurine, but mm, my resolve is waving between Jing Liu and Adventurine, honestly. Would you like me to relay your message? Uh, yeah, go to see the Divine Foresight. Uh, Jingyuan, your son's in danger. Actually, your son's right there. 
Um, uh, <laughs> well, this is a bit awkward. I heard you're not a bad fight. Hey, uh, I heard you got your ass beat by Jing Liu. <laughs> He's right there. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, I'm guessing this is supposed to be the part of the story where he's supposed to be chasing Blade, so let's just pretend he's not there. Jing Yuan's apparition turned to you. You're not sure whether this is some kind of automatic visual, audiovisual answer technique or real time remote materialization from himself. We found something left behind by Yan Cheng. Here you go. Uh, Jing Yuan's hologram waves. The Jade Tracer emits a beam of light that as a, the illusory figure flickers. Without a doubt, this Jade Tracer belongs to Yan Qing. I can't thank you enough. Who is Jing Liu? Is Yan Qing safe about Blade? You already accessed the recordings? Uh huh. Uh, she accidentally pressed a button. Uh. <laughs> no harm done. She was my mentor. And my superior when I was a member of the Cloud Knights. Uh huh. However, oops, I shit. No harm done. She was my mentor and my superior when I was a member of the Cloud Knights. Hmm. However, she left the Sienjo a long time ago. God, I'm still, I still remember that like animated short between like Ye yeah, Jing Yuan versus Jing Liu. That was fucking. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that animation is so cool. If you see. Yep. Her, be sure to keep your distance and notify me immediately. Uh, is Yan Qing safe? Yeah, I mean, he's right there. <laughs> he took on the charge of pursuing a major criminal. It is not my place to impede him for fear of his well-being. That is the nature of the Cloud Knights and their duty. I do have confidence in him, though. About Blade. <sighs> Forgive me, but I cannot disclose this information. Hmm. I don't have any other questions. Thank you again for your help, friends from the Express. The situation remains unpredictable, so take care. I hope to be able to drink and talk freely with you once again, when everything is settled. Hey, and that's the end. Okay, something tells me I was supposed to do that before. Hey, yeah, you can visit the Express now. Nice. Blade Abracadabra. <laughs> Master Monk Swords. Achievement unlocked. Oh, yep. Another. Another. Uh, yep. <laughs> Companionship quest completed. Also, yeah. How do I get this achievement? Witness Lord just hidden side. Hmm. Not sure how to get that one, but hey, hopefully I will be able to in due time. Can I ask Yanqing about <laughs> Jing Liu? I heard you're not a uh, yeah, about the blindfold lady you met. It's not really that lady's Jing Liu, the previous sword champion of the Sanjur La Fu and the general's teacher in martial arts, yeah? Life can be really funny sometimes. I never suffered such a loss in sword fighting before, but lately I've been getting been left and right. It's almost like I'm making up for lost time all at once, haha. <laughs> Of course, I know that being young and inexperienced means taking some losses is inevitable, but I just can't accept it if I don't come out on top. The general told me it was good to feel defeated, as if I could motivate, as it could motivate me to keep holding my skills. I'm sure I'll become a better swordsman the next time we meet. Well, oh, good on you, Yan Cheng. Also, yeah, let me take a look at him on the express as well. Oh, uh, yep, there he is. Hey, hey. Being surrounded by the universe feels <laughs> amazing. The Lafu feels like a small corner of something much, much bigger. Enjoying the view so far? Yeah. All the challenges of everyday life seem to disappear when you gaze out into the universe. You should totally visit Express more often. It's a great place to even have greater fun. <laughs> All right. Then I'll be here to bother you more often in the future. <laughs> I bet there are so many opponents out there in the universe just waiting for me to find them. Oh god, you and Luca will get along spectacularly. <laughs> Thanks to the Jades, I need them for Venturine. Thank you very much. <laughs> but alrighty, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that's, yeah, that was actually a pretty good quest. But mo ma mainly because of Jing Liu. <laughs> I do kind of find it kind of funny that, you know, like, my favorite part of uh, <laughs> Yan Qing's quest was Jing Liu. That's, uh, that's a bit insulting to him, but hey, he is what it is. 
Okay, then I believe that. How many, um, yeah, how many uh, quests do I have left? Okay, so there's Bailu's. Well, Bailu's, like, first one, I believe. Uh, okay, uh, Yukong and Welt, Kafka. Uh, and Biber Lune and Bailu. Marching Fushuan, and then the yeah, the whole cl high cloud quintet, which is like probably the yeah, what, from what people told me, it's like the official ending of the Sienjo arc, which is like which is yeah, something I probably should have gotten when I actually played the Sienjo Trailblaze mission, but hey, better late than never, I suppose. That's all right. Most people feel the same way. I mean, true. Like Yanching really didn't do too much in that in that quest, except you know get his ass beaten. But alrighty, folks. I think that's where I'm gonna leave things off for today, everybody. How many quests did we do today? Okay, we, we did Clara's, Lucasilla's, Lorcha's, and Yanching. So like a good four out of the way, and we have like what, <laughs> uh, six left. Yeah, not sure if I'll be able. Maybe I need like two more streams to get through all of these, but. Yeah, I will be sure to, to do some more of these trailers missions, trailers, companion missions in the next uh, Honkai Star Rail stream, which is probably going to be uh, next next week or something, like next Monday, perhaps. Yeah, that quest felt more like Jingli marketing than actually a Yanching quest, mm -hmm. honestly. Nice. But yeah, I'll probably do the rest of these quests in the next stream, which will probably be on Monday. Because, yeah, tomorrow I'm planning to do uh, a Genshin stream to complete the cat petting event. I'll also do a randomized Spiral Abyss run, so look forward to that. And also, you know, tomorrow to watch um the 4.6 special program that's going to be, yeah, debuting tomorrow. But alrighty, folks, yeah. So if you want to make sure to catch any of... Uh, uh, if you want to catch me playing those quests the next time around, be sure you subscribe today so you don't miss them. And also leave a like on the stream because it really, really helps me out and whatnot. But alrighty, folks, that is where I'm going to leave things off for today, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. And also tune into my uh, Persona 3 Reload stream later tonight uh, on Twitch if you want to catch me playing that game. And yeah, with, with all that said, yeah, once again, thank you all so much for watching. And I hope to see you guys again in the next stream. Uh, yeah, probably I'll be doing another Star Wars stream on Monday. And maybe Tuesday as well. Depends on, uh, yeah, depends on my schedule. But I'll let you guys know in my YouTube community tab. But, yeah. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the stream as much as I did. And hope to see you all again in the next one. Take care. And have a good night. And I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>